doctor or something. Like it wasn't like randomly she had. Let's put this over here. Yeah, we've just gone live, oh, now, Alex. Yeah, that, that was. Oh, okay. <laughs> We go live as we're talking. Well, that's uh, excellent, excellent. Good to, uh, good to. Sorry, I was just putting some stuff up on the shelves, just making it a little bit prettier. Yeah, well, the shelves do look particularly good. Equivalent. Yeah, the top's good. Actually, you can't see it, but I have um, a Lego X-wing there, and I've built. Nice. I've got like a printed a bracket for it, but I've got a load of other ones to make as well. So I'm going to have like. Nice. That's I'll make so is, is, the... is your bracket kind of a kind of a hook type bracket or is it like a Lego type bracket? So it's it's, it's yeah, so it's got kind of like the Lego what are they called? The, the studs. Studs. The studs yeah. uh, <laughs> the uh it's got the kind of studs on the top and then holes for screws. So it's screwed in and then the it clicks straight in. Ah, oh, nice. Yeah. I, so, I bought uh, some of that um the Lego tape. Like well, uh, I yeah. say Lego, it's it's the fake Lego tape. Yeah. Um, yeah Lego don't do it. I have yeah. some in a drawer, one side yeah. of me, one or the other. But I don't know what I, to do you, with it. I, exactly the same thing. <laughs> I bought it because it was it was on offer where yeah. at the, a place I was at, and I saw it and I went, "Ooh!" and have done nothing with it. Yeah, I don't. I tell you what, we've used years. it for. Uh, my youngest has a lot of Lego, uh, yeah, a lot of the Harry Potter kind of stuff, mm -hmm. and a few other kind of things, but particularly Harry Potter. And with birthday money over the years and christmas money she's kind of and, and christmas presents she's i think the only harry potter stuff of the newer because there's the old harry yeah. potter lego but of the newer harry potter lego the only thing she hasn't got is a couple of the new the, the very latest ones and the great hall okay. she'd love the great hall but a it's like yeah, yeah. And let me just remortgage for that yeah, darling yeah. Got all the rest <laughs> got, got all the rest yeah the kind of yeah but apart from a couple of the very newest ones mm -hmm. and of course every time you buy one of those you get a bunch of minifigures so a few quite a few years ago we we put together just with some simple pine yeah. a just a simple frame a bit like you get almost like a spice rack okay yeah mm -hmm. instead of kind of having like a bath to put the spice jars behind we got hold of some of that track uh put it down there so all the minifigures are kind of stood they are so on her wall Same. she's got the sort of frame with all the minifigures on Kind of That's all categorized as well. I mean, I've got like my pegboards on my wall just here. I've got, a, they're kind of about an inch off the wall, so I could have little boop boop boops along the top. I don't know. I do this. Boop boop boops. Yeah, I'm yeah. <laughs> If there's one thing I know, it's nothing. Um, no, I. <laughs> I am. Um, stealing that. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. Um, I, I have a habit of seeing cool things and thinking I will do something with that. That's like, this is the maker thing, right? You see something and yeah. you go, that's cool. I'll make something with it. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah I've all, got, all, all of that. <laughs> I've got under my desk right now, I've got 12 um, reclaimed speaker faces, um, the nice. metal like grills, Ooh. specifically because I was going to make a Squid Games mask. And I was like, oh, I'll make it out of, that's the same stuff. I'll make it out of that. So I bought that How one many of year those ago. masks were you going to make? Oh, I don't. I mean, it was a lot of twelve, and and it was a lot for, no, and it was like uh, it was like four quid off eBay. So like one God. was about three quid, twelve, and I thought I'm going to mess up a considerable amount of these, yeah, trying to yeah. dome yeah. them. Um, yeah. But obviously, I've done nothing with it, and they're just here now, <laughs> getting in the way. Emergency barbecue, if nothing else. <laughs> Emerg yeah, exactly. Someone will be like, oh, you know, I really need some metal speaker grill, and I'll be like, I have twelve. Um, <laughs> Yes, you see, that's, that's why I, I've, you, you can sort of see it here, but these big, you can't, I'm trying to point the camera tubes. when everything's yeah, backwards like is really difficult. Yeah, they, they are tubes that I got from work from our A0 plotter. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, there are many of them. <laughs> and the rolls on that plotter are 175 metres each. So you can imagine how long it's taken to, to harvest that many tubes. Yeah. Because there is a good... 12 there, <laughs> so need a kilometer and a half nearly, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and make... of course, I've done nothing with them, but I will be bringing some with me to make a central for anyone who might need to use them. <laughs> you could do like back garden gladiators and make those like giant uh earbuds that they used to fight with, yeah. Well, it, <laughs> yeah. Again, I'm are... just giving them new names, <laughs> just some giant earbuds. really, really thick, 
they, yeah, they're like four really... mil thick dense cardboard. It's do some damage. I, I was gonna, I was thinking of doing you know ventilation systems with them and all sorts of stuff. You'd give it a but, go, it'd be quite interesting. It'd be like, um, it's all still there <laughs> 3D print like, connectors to make a geodesic dome. Mm -hmm. You could build okay. your own. Yeah. Um, there was this really cool project. Um, this Raspberry Pi project where these, I think they actually did use tubes and they built um, a, a massive scanner, a uh, kind of 3D scanner for people. Um, I think it was a library or some university lab or something. They built it and it was this giant dome made out of cylinders and it just had loads of cameras around it. So there you go. You could make arguably Ooh. a smaller one <laughs> for 3D print, 3D scanning pets <laughs> but um, or just keep collecting them. But yeah. Cool. So, yeah, I mean, I, th I think if I can offload some of these, then yeah. there's room to collect some more. Exactly, exactly. You're doing it for the people. <laughs> That's how it works, right? <laughs> I'm, I'm not saying a thing. I'm not saying a thing. I've, <laughs> yeah, you stay quiet. <laughs> <laughs> I realise I keep um, reaching for this glass, and it's got beer written on it, but I can assure you that it is, in fact, Robinson's squash. Yeah. So it's the... Yeah. I'm, I'm on the orange as well. I'm it looks like you've got Goomba. one of those... That looks like one of those Tango Ice Blast cups, but I don't think it. I have many of them around my house. They do. If you ever go to the cinema, they bring them home. They're great for. Yeah, they, these anything. are from. I, I realise I just. I have to. Um... Oh, so I feel like like, <laughs> Where's the liquid gone? <laughs> He's a wizard. Uh, just tip it out and then. Look at this. <laughs> no, the, the, these are uh, polypropylene. Yeah, okay. polypropylene. Um, from the festival that we go to, we weren't supposed to bring them back, but one mirac well, one three times miraculously uh, appeared. Yeah. Um, again, you know, wizard. But uh, trying to source these, you can buy them because they're from a company called Recup, mm. and they're absolutely amazing. By far the best pint glasses I've ever drank anything from. Yeah. But you can only buy them in like quantities with multiple zeros. You know, so it's like, oh, you can you can buy six hundred of them, not a problem, quite happily. But you can't go and like buy ten of them. So what mm. you do is use this if you don't already have one. This is your excuse for buying a vinyl cutter, and you buy many cups, and then you sell them. You start an Etsy store, and that's yes. how you go. Here's get get your special cup with whatever you want written on it. It would be a good use of the vinyl cutter that I do already have and haven't used okay. for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> I used mine today for the first time in an awfully long time. So I have a cricket I, joy that I desperately bought and then just didn't use until today. That's um, that seems fair. But I did. Because the uh, problem is that if you buy six hundred cups or six hundred pint glasses, you have to have a place to put six hundred pint glasses. This is very true. Well, they stack inside each other. It's yeah. probably not that much space. Put them next to the tubes. Come on, Andy. You... Yeah, that's why I've got to get rid of get some rid of, of the tubes. Get rid of your tubes that make, make essential and now you can have your cups. Um, no, I had... Uh, like I like it. <laughs> you know when you have those... I don't know if you ever do. I had that kind of moment of, I want to own this thing and it doesn't exist, but I need it. So the other day I was sat there and I was like, I really want... I had this idea for a, for a hoodie, a hoodie design. And I was like, yeah, I'm going to make it. So I went and sourced a hoodie and literally an hour ago, I made this hoodie. You can see it's got some letters on it. Um, and the idea is that the letters are kind of, they're in rows, so you don't really know what it says. And then you take the time and once you realise, it says Laura Dern, as in three-time Oscar, uh, Oscar nominee Laura Dern from Jurassic Park. Because I thought it'd just be really funny that someone would be looking at it. It's like black letters, so you can't really see it too well. Yeah. And someone take the time and effort to look at it and then just go, what? Does your hoodie say Laura Dunn? <laughs> 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 so that's, that's the bus I've used my, it's the first time I've ever used um, heat transfer vinyl. Heat transfer, yeah. Like, and uh, again, yeah. I bought some of that, still haven't used it. <laughs> well, you could make your own Laura Dunn. <laughs> 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 I was thinking, yeah, you all... I just like the idea of, of taking the time and effort to design and print something for a t-shirt to then put it as the same color as the t-shirt so no one can really see it. Absolutely, I, yeah. I don't know why. There's some probably something in that, but for me it it's a hitchhiker's thing. Yeah. I've never read, never have I ever read or watched or listened to hitchhikers. Go on, Andy, click the button. We're done. <laughs> uh, this thanks, is folks. The uh, <laughs> 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 
Sorry, sorry, I know, folks, technical I know. difficulties. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm fully aware of how ridiculous that sounds to people. Um, but yeah, I've never, never have I ever hitchhikers. Oh, you're missing yeah, out. That's fair. It, it is good. Yeah, I've actually what? never admitted this to my bosses and I've like everyone at work because I work with nerds. Um, yeah. They all love it. And I just sit there quietly like. <laughs> yes, do, do, you, do you have a bit of a like an IT crowd kind of moment instead of the, you know, the, the, the thing about Arsenal is do you go for yeah. uh, 42? Yeah, yeah. Literally like, <laughs> oh yeah, Mark Freeman was in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <Just run. laughs> it's like, I always figure that if you could learn like how to say I do you speak English in every language? It would make life easier. And you should probably have it for like yeah. all the pop culture things that you don't have the time to watch. Just learn enough. D but that yeah, is yeah. absolutely how I roll. Because there's loads <laughs> of things that, you know, I've, I've not seen Game of Thrones. I've not seen uh, half a dozen Beep. other things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Duncan from Little Hobby Shop uh, every couple of days reminds me that I need to watch The Expanse. Um, I've never watched The Expanse, don't worry. As yeah, if that somehow like... makes it better. I also <laughs> haven't watched The Expanse. <laughs> I was say, Jamie, every, every couple of months, Jamie reminds me I haven't seen any Futurama. Oh, well, that's just, I mean, well, okay. So Futurama was amazing. And you had that final episode that was like heartbreaking with the hollow phone thing. Mm -hmm. And then they just went off on one and they made the movie and then they cut the movie down and made it into episodes. So you thought it was new episodes, but it was the movie that you've already watched. And it's just not the same. So if you're going to watch Futurama, like watch up to the hollow thingy and then just Hold forget on, it yeah. exists that's... Well, I, I would say that the, the the final well the final final episode before the next series starts um, <laughs> wait it's still on so wonderful they're still they're making it... drama no 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 but they're bringing it back because they because oh. they cancelled it and then they brought yeah. it back uh and it, that series was actually pretty good and it ended mm. on a very very beautiful note with time travel and things it was wonderful. okay Love it. um and then they've decided to try and bring it back. I love, because obviously The Simpsons has been around since the arc. Far too long. Yeah. Um, and it was like one of every animal and Homer and Marge, like that's how long it's been around for. And um, and it was great, but it started to drag. Like there is that whole thing where it's like the first like nine seasons is the only attention you pay to The Simpsons. And I remember Futurama yeah. coming out and watching the first episode and there is a bit in it where they're running under New New York and the police get them and Bender shits a literal brick. And that yeah. was the moment where I was like, yep. Yeah. This is, this is the show that I need in my life. Cause it's just very much. Oh, so. It, it was just that moment that sold it to me. So yeah, I do. There's loads of little things like that. And loads, cause it's, it's super, super nerdy. Cause half the, mm. um, it, it's, if I remember rightly, the, the, the writing team, um, collectively have more PhDs than any other writing team of any <laughs> other show ever been written because they're all like math nerds and physics nerds and it's just this hugely academically accomplished selection of writers who are all just very very funny nerds yeah it's just, see it's and you'd thing. think that the the you think the show with the largest collection of phds would be big bang theory but then it very but obviously I, I, isn't <laughs> after the after the first seven jokes it all oh, just God. goes and it I just becomes this that show I've never seen yeah, that show was, either. It was it was great while it was nerdy humour, and then once they'd exhausted all of the nerdy stuff, it just went to kind of low tier, you know, lowest common I, denominator humour. Yeah, I kind of get like I don't know if it's like some self loathing or something, but I'll find a show that I really can't stand and just have to watch it all, <laughs> like Big Bang Theory, <laughs> Two Broke Girls, like all of this awful kind of studio audience canned laughter. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. That's that's my this is why I haven't watched Hitchhikes Guys because I'm too busy watching two broke girls. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, what was there was another there's another thing as well that I haven't watched and people oft, often think that there's things like people think that I like Stranger Things and I mm. can't stand Stranger Things but they think I do. See, that's another I've one seen... that I, I still haven't got around to watching. Yeah, I've no, seen no. that either. It's not that. Yeah. No. I, I watch very little TV. I watched, I watched like a lot a as a kid. One. Yeah. yeah. I watched a lot as a kid. But I was also reading at the same time, generally, and doing homework and kind of just multitasking like mad. Yeah. I don't Which know if I it's think... a sign of the times, but my TV doesn't even have an aerial attached. I just watch no. streaming. Like, the only thing I watch on 
real TV um, is Doctor Who, and then I just watch it on iPlayer as it's playing on normal TV. So nothing else. I was going to say skip the ads, but yeah, no, no ads. No ads. On Doctor no ads. ads. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if either well, of you are Doctor Who fans, but Andy is. But... Yeah, it's a it's a sore subject for me at the minute. <laughs> <laughs> Sunday's episode was awful. Yeah. And they have done Jodie Whittaker. They've done Jodie Whittaker wrong because she is so good. Yeah, totally agree. Yeah, we're. Um, I have, she's somewhere on this shelf. I don't know where she's over there somewhere. Uh, there. Yeah, I don't really like Funko Pops, but I have like quite a few. Yeah, I get them if <laughs> if there's no other means to get merch of a character and it's okay. only Funko yeah. Pop, I'll get the Funko Pop. That's fair. Yeah. Otherwise, no. Yeah, we're my my kids discovered. I mean, I I grew up. I, one of my earliest memories of TV is hiding behind the sofa. With for, I'm pretty sure it was Pertwee, back in the early seventies. Yeah. Um, sort of scared witless about some monsters. It's, it's an awful um, lot of people's first memories of TV is being yeah. scared of Doctor Who. Uh, but my kids discovered it when the season thirteen started, and it was kind of like that. That came that came out, and it was just like, oh, they like this. They like this sort of Doctor Who thing. Yeah. So they then we then binge watched uh, all the the new Doctor Who. So from sort of season nine onwards, or sort of the the new the new new versions yeah. of Doctor Eccleston Who. And, yeah, Eccleston yeah. on. So we we binge watched those. Over the course of a, a few months, and then oh, a couple of years, a few years ago, my youngest for her birthday asked for a subscription to BritBox so that we could watch all of the classic. And so we've been working through that now. We just uh, so every because we home educate, so every lunchtime we watch two episodes of classic Doctor Who in the week. I like so it. I've... We just we finished uh, Tom Baker's finished week before last. No, last week, early last week. Um, so we're on to the first. We've just finished the first uh, four episodes of Davidson. I'm not a huge old Who fan. I do prefer New Who. New Who. Um, <laughs> we didn't watch it in my household, like growing up. So for me, I remember starting university. I think around the time that that. Eccleston came along so it was that it's at that age really where you kind of go off to university where you have more control over what you're watching because you don't have to watch it on the living room television mm. with your parents or whatever and you know my mum's really not into that sort of thing so yeah so I, that was for me was new who and I've gone back and watched some and I have kind of but I've not really I don't know I get kind of the the the, the hardcore Doctor Who fans like <gasps> you're not a real Who fan if you haven't watched people in tinfoil running around a chalk mine in <laughs> <laughs> where it's like no, but I have a really cool poster downstairs. Andy will tell you where that is. <laughs> <laughs> I have a I have a, a, a poster downstairs. This really awesome poster that this guy designed that was on Etsy for a while, um, and basically I got invited to the Christmas episode premiere one year, um, and it was nice. Uh, yeah, and it was Peter Capaldi, and uh, so I worked for Raspberry Pi, and one of and we have. Uh, we acquired um, or partnered with Code Club. Um, and so it was uh, Claire, who was the the founder of Code Club, randomly got an email one day from the BBC going, do you want to come to this premiere? She came over to my desk and went, you like Doctor Who, don't you? And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> And uh, so we went off to this thing and I was like, I'm going to meet Peter Capaldi. I, and he was there and Matt Lucas was there and um, uh, like some of the other cast members and stuff were there. And I was like, oh, I want to get a poster for them to sign. So I got this poster, took it, he signed it, a few other people signed it, and I was like, oh, no, this is a thing now. So every time I go to conventions, I have to meet, like, it's, I, I put a limit on doctors and companions only, because otherwise you're lost. It's, it's like yeah. trying to get a Star Wars poster signed by everyone. Um, but, yeah, so I go to <laughs> conventions and I cool. meet doctors and companions and get them to sign it. It's a lot of fun. It's one of my previous lives. I worked in memorabilia, so ah, I, I enjoy that. That yeah. explains things, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. That's very cool. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we haven't... Yeah, we've... 
Tom Baker lives not far from us. Okay. And a few times, my my youngest, we think we've gone to the sort of next town. We're we're halfway between two towns, so we 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 often go to the, the smaller of the two towns. It's got some mm-hmm. really nice charity shops. It's a little bit posh. It's a posh town. So we've got a posh oh, town one it. way. We've got a posh town one way and a, a, a not posh town the other way. So we charity often shops in town. a posh town. Yeah. And Good. a few years ago, Good. we were we were in the British Heart Foundation charity shop, and she found a Doctor Who book. So she took it to, the, and I was like, right, okay, here's the money. You can you can buy it. So she went to the desk and she was talking to the lady behind the desk, and the lady said, "Oh, Tom Baker was in just yesterday." <laughs> and my brother was like, "I want to come and work here. How do I get to work here?" <laughs> On the off oh, chance that Tom Baker yeah, comes into yes. the charity shop again. I love it. Oh, you have to wait a couple of years before you're old enough to. <laughs> I actually got invited to a thing tonight and I turned them down to be here with you. Um, but yeah, there's Will Young is randomly in Cambridge today doing some talk. And uh, <laughs> I was sat with uh, some people who were working at the event and they're like, oh, do you want to come and see Will Young tonight? I was like, can't, I'm on a podcast. And like teenage Alex was screaming on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> Bill Young. <laughs> so, uh, uh, yeah. Well, we are very grateful. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> I mean, maybe I would have met Will Young, you know, and instead you stuck with us too. <laughs> it's yeah. a pleasure. It's an honor to be here. <laughs> I really appreciate it because it's it's interesting, right? Because the maker. I was thinking earlier um, about the maker movement and mm. like. The, the term maker because it's really interesting because I like you know I'm on here with you talking and previously you've had loads of you know people creating content on YouTube and and everything else and yeah. I have a YouTube channel that has like two videos on it that I pay no attention to um and and which it's the, the idea which the audience are, is linked already in the, the description oh, of this video. Good, good. <laughs> yeah so um so yeah so I kind of I consider myself part of the maker community because I work for a brand that exists within it, but also, you know, I have lots of friends here and I do loads of, I nerd about YouTube thumbnails with people and help people out that way. But it's kind of interesting, like what the term maker means, like Mm. surely everyone's a maker. Like if you bake or if you cross stitch or if you build brick walls for a living. Yeah. You make it sound like, what is a maker? Um, So uh, yeah, I was kind of thinking about that earlier, like, I don't know. Sometimes I feel kind of, I go to these events and stuff and everyone's like, oh, what's your YouTube channel? I'm like, don't, don't worry about it. <laughs> go buy yeah. Roger, buy. <laughs> Work's paid for me to I'm be like, Oh, do you bake? <laughs> <laughs> oh, all the time. <laughs> you work for Roger Pie? What are they? Do they their bakery? No. <laughs> if the thing with Roger Pie is people either exa- know exactly what it is or they've never heard about it. There's no yeah. in between. Yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah, so... Uh, I get a lot. It's, of, and like, it still surprises me that people haven't heard of it. And yeah. I mean, until a few years ago, I was working in schools, and I've, oh, crikey, I'm trying to think how many years ago. It must be ten years ago. Micro bits were given out to all the kind of year sevens, yeah. and you kind of expect that to have had quite an impact. But actually, you talk to people, it's like it didn't have the impact that it probably should have done. There's this really interesting thing that you, you kind of see with all tech, whether it's micro bits or Raspberry Pis or, or whatever, where some people who are genuinely mean, well, and good will go like, oh, I've raised money to buy 20 Raspberry Pis to take to some place. And they yeah. just drop them off and off they go. And mm-hmm. they don't follow up with the, the kind of education of what it is. So things like giving all the kids micro bits is great. But unless you are sitting down with them and showing them how to use it and showing them the, you know, all the amazing things you can make. There's and no then point giving them it. time to yeah. actually have a go at making things. Yeah. Like you go, here you go, kid, mm-hmm. now go do your maths homework. And it's like, yeah. and then it just gets forgotten. And, and, and a lot of the time you find that uh, because parents don't know. And so they'll take something home, but the parents don't know how to use it. So they can't support the kids. So then you end up with this thing that just sits in a drawer. Um, yeah. Yeah, so that's kind of like one thing we we you know work on is the the Raspberry Foundation makes some amazing tutorials that that people can follow, 
um and one of the things I do when I go to events and I you know I'll go to like Maker Fair and there'll be these kids running around that are really excited and their parents who blatantly don't want to be there and um and uh just be like telling them about it and it's kind of going over their head and then you kind of figure out how to talk to them about it and and slowly they get there and you realize oh actually this person's going to go home and read more about this and this kid might actually but you have to start with the parents there's no point mm. giving a kid a micro bit give the parents a micro bit and then yeah and then they'll figure it out I'm getting yeah, oh god you, that was a bit of a rap you, you, <laughs> <laughs> you, you were cutting quite deep there though because I've got a, I haven't yet gone down the micro bit route but I have pretty much all of the raspberry pi products so far mm. in in various like tubs and bins and things that are you know future projects yeah they're all future <laughs> everything's a future project <laughs> but having said that the I, I say, collaborators or whatever they call it pi Maroni. yeah oh babes with the, um, the badger the badger i've got one uh, I don't know where mine is. It's so, oh, here we go. Uh. So far, exactly. I haven't figured out how to change my name. <laughs> well, I'm still so, a badger. <laughs> again, so the because that that has been a fantastic uh, when the um the Pico 2040 was on the magazine. Um, mm -hmm. Got one. A uh, couple of us got them, and you know. Uh, Duncan from Little Hobby Shop and uh, our friend Simon as well. We, uh, the three of us, had you know these grand ideas. We were going to do all of the learning, and those boys did. They got yeah. quite far getting things going and stuff like that. And I just never got around to it. And then with the badger, it's been it, it was it was a project that we had in mind. So there's um, the plan is to kind of load them up with a few bits and bobs for make a central so we can actually have them you know like our own state where we're at you know whether we're whether we're happy for a hug or you know like feeling it. a bit overwhelmed or whatever so that's been the that's been the real kickstart into learning a bit of micro python and actually playing a bit more with it so that's now kind of given me this resurgence of like oh well i need to I need to actually dig out the pi 400 and get that set up properly so i can just turn and use it and then you know start actually doing some projects with them instead of just having a VM with Raspberry Pi desktop on it and using it's, it for other things. Yeah, I mean, it's because I started Raspberry Pi with no coding knowledge whatsoever. Um, I my, my background, I have a theatre degree. <laughs> I, <laughs> I'm a thespian, darling. And so I, you know, that I started working at Raspberry Pi to work on social media. And so I had to get an idea of how things work because people are obviously talking about it. So I have, I know how everything works, but my coding knowledge is really, really limited. Um, mm -hmm. And what I found was if I sat down and went, I'm going to learn coding and followed, you know, uh, tutorials and stuff, I couldn't stick with it. And instead what worked for me was going, this is the thing I want to make. Now I have to figure out how to make yeah, it. Um, and for me, it was drunkenly promising some friends I would make them a photo booth for their wedding. <laughs> uh -huh. And the drunker I got, the more additions the photo booth had. Of course. Um, and I'd only been at Raspberry Pi like four months at that point. I really didn't know what I was doing. And I was like, yeah, we'll do this. We'll do this. And they ended, I did it. And they got married in Cornwall. And they ended up with this giant paper mache Cornish pasty. <laughs> with a touch screen and buttons and Fantastic. and you press the button and it took your picture and it printed it on receipt paper so you could take it away with you you could write a message for the couple and put it in their their box um, and it tweeted it so the people that couldn't attend the wedding could still see the pictures um and, and for me that was okay i need to know how to how to work a receipt printer i need to know how to work the touch screen i need to work out the camera and mm. that was that's how i learn and that's how i always learn is going I need to do this thing so I'll figure it out. So I still don't have a very good coding knowledge unless you want a giant paper mache photo booth. I mean, and who then I can, yeah, <laughs> I roll those fantastic. out there now. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, so it's it does make it fun when I go to events and people work out who I work for and they're like, oh, let me, I've got this problem. Can you help me? And they just say words <laughs> at me and I'm like, 
No, no, I can't. <laughs> uh, I, I will be at Make Essential, but I will have one of my colleagues with me who very much knows everything. So I'll just be able to shove him. <laughs> Go talk to Alistair. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> but yeah, so it's uh, it's been, in, I mean, I've been there like six years now and I still haven't figured out most of it. So, <laughs> Which is fair. Nice. Yeah. I mean, there's there's an infinite number of projects that you could possibly do. So having that kind of existential dread and the yeah. pressure involved in, oh crap, I, you know, I promise this, I need to do it. You know, you just need the right project then, surely. You know, yeah. as it's been with this, you know, the impending doom of, I, I said I'm taking this to make a central with some stuff on it. Yeah. So Duncan and I have been shouting at each other every week, just going, oh, no, we need to do this, and oh, can we make it do this, and. Yeah, it's kind of... the drunken add more stuff, and now it's a it's the pasty. <laughs> Absolutely, it is. It is the pasty hanging around my neck. Yeah. <laughs> I think you definitely need to read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Yeah, you need to be on it. In it. <laughs> I think I. Do you know I I can't sit down and read books, but I can listen. I listen to books, and I kind of always have headphones on, or always have something playing on my phone. Um, Get the radio series. It started, it started as a radio yeah. series anyway. Get, well, they've the done the. Series. The books you can listen to the books read yeah. by Martin Freeman, right? So I, I that, thought I might that's give... well worth doing. Specifically, yeah. uh, given our topics, uh, talking about the maker community as a thing, is the sandwich maker. Okay. It is in one of the later books, mm -hmm. but it is a story arc of him being a sandwich maker. And okay. It is absolutely exquisite kind of encapsulation of the maker community and how it all comes together with all of us leaning on each other yeah. um, for something as simple as a sandwich. So that's, well, that's a year's time. Let's come back here and I'll have read and we'll do a special hitchhikers. Episode. Perfect. Put it in the calendar now, Andy. <laughs> and I'll come Definitely. back and I'll be like, Martin Freeman's in it. And then just run away. <laughs> <'cause I still laughs> <haven't... laughs> 42. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> sandwich maker right i know right just all about the making community <laughs> yeah i will try i'll try i've been listening to a lot of um uh dungeons and dragons like uh playthroughs and stuff so that's kind of where nice I listen to a lot of yeah, or like I've watched all of Grey's Anatomy because again I get addicted to the really crap TV. <laughs> there's 17 seasons, and these are American seasons, so there's like a thousand episodes 20, a season. 22 and or 24 I, episodes per season, I think. In that, oh, I've just watched so much Grey's Anatomy <laughs> that I've just lost all sense of life. <laughs> My friend at work it does exactly the same. She she's watched yeah. all of Grey's Anatomy and then. Uh, there's a handful of other t kind of tangential things yeah, that are similar to it, and then there's station there's something and station nineteen, or... and yeah, yeah, so she's worked her way through all of those as well, and then she's yeah. doing like Chicago Fire and Chicago PD and Chicago something else at the minute. And, it just yeah. it's a it's a weird like I don't know my my therapist said, but no, like <laughs> um, <laughs> it's kind of like self soothing, and like for me, yeah. I always have to have sound and I always have to have something going on. Um, mm, yeah. I don't always have to be doing something, but I always like there being something. Um, so, yeah, I just worked through the really long. Uh, see, although I did just watch the last season of Killing Eve, so I had to watch the first three to remember where I was. And I did that. In the, <laughs> I, I started that on, what are we today? Sunday. I started that on Tuesday and I finished it last night. So I, I thought you were going to say, so I had to then go back and watch the first three just to see what was supposed to happen. Yeah. Uh, just this, this <laughs> mental image that you'd... Not that you'd watched it chronologically, but that you just randomly dipped in <laughs> that one, at the end and, and then one, thought, and this... yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll watch season no. six and then I'll watch season two. and then I'll... <laughs> Yeah, no, it's, uh, yeah, I watched the first three seasons and then very disappointedly watched the most recent one. So <laughs> just, just, I won't even, I won't even. <laughs> I'm angry. I'm still angry and it's been 24 hours. Surprise, surprise. I haven't seen that either. <laughs> The first three seasons are very good and you should watch them. Hmm. But Phoebe Waller-Bridge was only around, I think, for the first three. And this last season is someone else and she's just... She ruined it. Ah, uh, change of character. Is it kind of just a change of actress for the, the no, character? No, it's... Was it? it's uh, she, uh, Phoebe Waller-Bridge was writing it and directing mm. it. So they brought uh, in like right. a new showrunner. She was the showrunner, really, for uh, the first three. 
um, and then this new person's just come along and ruined it for everyone. Um, it seems to be so. a, a certain thing with showrunners. I think it seems yeah. to be a, a kind of a quite a, a common thing where either they'll. I was going to say we'll start head back someone else. Doctor Who in a moment. Yeah, I was like, <laughs> oh, <that's true."> <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's uh, yeah, it's back to it's always comes back to Doctor Who in my life. Um, <laughs> But, but yeah, yes. Um, I was going to say something really profound, but I've forgotten what it was. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, see, I, mean, I must remember that as a line, just for whatever I forget what I'm about to say. <laughs> it's so profound, I need to work on it. We'll come back to this. In the meantime, Martin Freeman. Um, I don't actually like Martin Freeman either, so that's... I mean, it, it, in fairness, the, the movie has got Bill Nye in it, so therefore it's oh, okay. It, that that in itself fixes it. Yeah, Bill Nye, no, not and, and Bill Nye. Not I'm, not, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm, yeah, I'm not a fan Bill of Nye. Movie. Just the same. Just, it's, it's for me. It's the same. Like Jack Reacher. Yeah, being yeah cast as Tom Cruise as cast as Jack Reacher in the films. It's like no, I uh, with his teeth, his weird teeth thing that he has. <laughs> He has a tooth in the middle of his mouth. <laughs> Next time we look at Tom Cruise, we're like, oh, I can't unsee that now. I remember we did, we did that in college when we were doing like image manipulation and stuff. And we all got headshot photos straight on and then split down the center of our heads and then mirrored them. Yeah. Because that is just, it's really unnerving to see yourself uh, symmetrical. Yeah. You know, it, it, so yeah, not, not a mirror, but uh, mirror half your face so that you've got a mm -hmm. symmetrical face and it just it, it it's really like uncanny valley uh like properly messes with your head but when we then found photos of tom cruise and did the same thing and it just like you say you Spooked can't the one too. <laughs> you cannot unsee it <laughs> bless him i think that's been a trend on tiktok recently is like how like mirror your, there's like a filter you can use that mirrors your face and everyone's been looking at like how um, different yeah. i you know i live the social media life so i can tell you about all the tiktok True. trends I, yeah. I only click on the ones that people send me and only some of those i really yeah. actually really champion tiktokers like as, as far as i'm concerned everyone that's making youtube videos and everyone that's on instagram and all that just go over to tiktok like mm. youtube takes so much time and effort and you are completely at the mercy of the algorithm as to whether anyone's yeah, going to watch that so. thing that you've just put a month of your time into that you may as well go on TikTok where you can produce that content at a lower quality have more fun with it be more actively responsive to your audience and for that mm. one YouTube video that you might have got a thousand views for you could break that down into sort of 20 TikTok videos and some of them could end up with millions of views so that's a very good point actually yeah yeah kill de I death to either, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> i really like yeah i mean i uh, you know my my my, my original job at pi was a speed social media manager uh which involved like writing blog posts and being on twitter and facebook and everything all the time um and then it's kind of evolved we got ashley in who now has to do that instead um and my job is more I don't know. I'm digital content manager, and we're still trying to figure out what that means two years later. But um, part of that is just kind of learning more about how the algorithms work and how the platforms work, and mm. and, and figuring out the best things. And I honestly, yeah, I TikTok. We're in the process of trying to set up a work TikTok at the minute, but someone stole our username, and I'm fighting TikTok to get it back, and it's taken me a Ooh. year. <laughs> Slam got it, but um, but yeah, I think TikTok's the it's the way. It's the way to go. Short form content that you can just yeah, I suppose it, it lowers the bar for entry, doesn't it? Then I suppose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I made a video. I threw some random videos on TikTok, and I made one that was about uh, something that I do when I DM in D and D, and it was just like, "Here's a hint of something I do," and it's got like fifteen thousand views, and I'm like, I would wow. never get that on YouTube. Of course, yeah. Like, I'd never ever get fifteen thousand views for a, a thirty second video. So. Yeah, you get it in front of those eyes. People start sharing it. They can duet with it. So then people, I've had people go, oh, this is really cool. They've done their own video, which is half screen of my mm. video and half screen of them going, oh, this is really cool. Like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So TikTok I think I, I got wary when TikTok first came out, there was all that kind of fuss about 
yeah, it's just the Chinese government stealing people's information and you know, they've already got it all into your computer. Yeah. Well, <laughs> that's true. Yeah, certainly for me and Andy. <laughs> yeah. Like at this point, everyone's got everything, right? Like there was yeah. that whole thing controversial, but when everyone was talking about like Bill Gates putting bugs in the COVID jab so they can track you, and, and it's like, <laughs> have you never met a, a mobile phone? Yeah. yeah, like they already know. Tweeted from an Apple iPhone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and in the nicest way possible. Not many of us warrant being tracked. Like, there's nothing special about me for the Chinese government to want to know a thing about me. That is exactly <laughs> the, the conversation I have whenever someone comes to me and says that. You know, and oh, Jamie, what what what's all this stuff about this? And you know, what, what's all this? Thing? It's like, no, I mean this with the the <laughs> most sincere love and affection I can possibly say. You are not interesting enough. Yeah, you, you, you are know. not the target of yes. any of this. Like maybe on like a, a group level, maybe if they want to know like what everyone in Cambridge is thinking. But yeah. me individually at my little house here in this village, no one cares. So exactly. uh, yeah, so I yeah I find like things like TikTok and stuff like that. They're all the same. You can't yeah. be like, I'm not going to be on TikTok because of security reasons and then be on Twitter and Facebook <laughs> and Instagram. And, and Google. And... Yeah. You can't yeah. you can't be on the internet on your home network and have issues with TikTok. Yeah. I mean, there's things to have issues with TikTok about, but they are, you know, nothing to do with being tracked. Yeah, the, the security aspect of it is yeah. just lower down the list <laughs> yeah there's there's a lot worse things happening on tiktok um i was gonna say some of the content everything. is absolute trash oh my god it's so trash it's so it's but of course but... it all then slides across to instagram and to youtube so it's on those yeah. as well anyway yeah exactly i mean tiktok started as musically right it started as yeah. let's dance and mime and some of that is still there but there's a lot more makers on there which is really i, I follow a lot of makers on on TikTok, mm. people creating cool stuff. Lots of 3D printers, and and there's this amazing guy that's building this map of the US, and every state is wood, the the official wood from that state. And oh, each, cool. and as he's making it, he tells you the history of why that is the tree of that mm. state, and it's really and that's it's Didn't really Sarah interesting. Did try to do? She yeah, she did. Working on that, wasn't she? Yeah, I can't remember if she was using um, like the national trees of the state or just a tree that exists in that state. Um, mm. I'm not too sure. But um, yeah, she did kind of a... I don't... Did she do a... I can't remember if she actually did a video about it in the air, but she was obviously talking about it a lot on social media. Yeah, I um, remember her getting kind of... I remember watching one of her videos where she had kind of this box full of bits. Yeah, people sending wood. her wood and... Yeah. Yeah, yeah there's something about uh, this guy. I can't for the life of me remember what his name is, but... Um, yeah, he just does these videos and he's just really interesting. And it's just really interesting when he tells you the history of this thing. I find myself sitting there going, here I am in England, not a wood, well, I dabble in woodwork, but definitely not a woodworker, <laughs> um, listening to this guy tell me about state, official state trees. And it's, yeah, it's, it's really interesting. So I mean, it's, that's a bit of a kind of maker thing anyway, isn't it? It's, you know, it's, it's, it's the, oh, squirrel kind of thing of, yeah. I need to you know, know it's, oh, it's a new about. thing. Yeah, exactly. That, yeah, that's, like, oh, that's another kind of reason why I've kind of not looked at TikTok <laughs> as a, a thing because it's just it's another thing. It's a rabbit well, hole. I, I mean, at every everywhere on the internet, every other social media platform, any post you find anywhere, and is like will be there first. And it's, and it, <laughs> I have noticed the law that. of social media. <laughs> I tell Other you what, than TikTok. We've got a, we've got a name for the uh, the guy, Jade. Oh, Justin. There we go. This is That's the advantage that. of having a a live and very able um, audience. Thank you. Thank you very oh, much. All, uh, yeah, people should maybe capable rather than able. I think is a better term yeah. there. And <laughs> he has a Patreon now as well, so you can support him on Patreon and learn more about trees. I, I tell you what. Also, I'll get off of my. I love TikTok. Um, but TikTok. I think it's after like an hour, they play a video that is telling you to stop being on TikTok. Like it says, like, go the, have a rest. Are you still watching? <laughs> yeah, but it's like, it's after you've, it's, I don't know if it's after you scroll through X amount of videos or if it's after mm. a certain amount of time, but there's this one oh, video yeah. and it's this, this song and it's in my head right now. And she's kind of walking in, looking at her phone, walking through the house. And it basically says like, go take a break. You've been on TikTok too long. 
you don't get that with any other. It's actually Instagram Reels I mean, doesn't have that. Yeah. No, 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 and it, but TikTok does. I mean, I obviously it's like one o'clock in the morning at this point. I'm like, shut up, and I'll carry on going. <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's nice that it has that sort of hi. You don't realise how long you've been doing this, but actually, it's been a considerable amount of time. Do, does it do like a really, really bright white background? Because like, that's that's my kind of <laughs> yeah. You know, like yeah. everything else on your phone's in dark mode, and then all of a sudden you just get this like blaring white it's... thing that turns your retinas out. <laughs> yeah, I, no, it's just this this girl just kind of like walking through her house, but like paying too much attention to her phone um and it has this song which has been in my head all day um and i don't even really know the words which is worse when you have a song in your head but it's just like because yeah. you don't know the words um but yeah so that's another another great thing about i sound like i work for tiktok i don't i actually on the whole don't like social media but if we're gonna be honest <laughs> Ian in the show has just suggested we put that partway through the uh, some of our waffles. Yeah. <laughs> Should have like an intermission, like at the cinema. <laughs> just be like, and now we're going to take a break. A loo break. Yeah, now we're going to have a collective. I did, I did actually contemplate after uh, Jesse's uh, record breaking. Episode, oh, was it Jesse that was ago. the record breaking? Oh, yes. Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. Um, I did actually sort of contemplate in the week after. I thought maybe I should consider releasing the kind of the audio in in parts, so it's not just one five hour lump that people get. It's kind of yeah, it's a number of se separate across yeah, the course button, of a week. Perhaps got a bit at the beginning that just sort of says, "I apologise yeah. if you downloaded this over <laughs> mobile data." <laughs> just think how many fifteen second TikToks that could be. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we did say it during uh, that waffle that we could have put it up to. Um, Oh, Andy's doing the maths. But, um, <laughs> no. <yeah. laughs> You've you set him off now, Alex. <laughs> it's, um, what well, I mean, 1200? I, yeah. Yeah, that's that's perfect. You'll get some views there. I, um, I watch a lot of <laughs> Critical Role, and most of the Critical Role episodes are like four hours or so. Yeah. But they do have a break. So the, maybe. Thank you, though, because that the uh, Critical Role was when you were talking about, um, DD &D before, uh, I was trying to remember the name for that and you know when it's just on the tip of your tongue yeah. and i could see um that the character the, the people um yeah. but yeah i have i don't know if you've watched much of the mighty nine campaign too but i have I haven't actually seen any of it somewhere there uh, is molly mock so i have one of the figures that they've released for yeah i love it critical is right it's it's there's there's a lot of kind of like gatekeeping within D and D, and there's a lot of people that mm. are like, you know, oh, there's all these, oh no, there's more people interested in our hobby, and it's like, <laughs> good, <laughs> like, yeah. bring a bit more diversity into it, bring yeah, a bit more, more, you know, new ideas, and... yeah. more money means more cool campaigns are written. Like, I think there's like yeah. at least one, if not two, books now written by the Critical Role team that are actual Dungeons and Dragons campaign books, and you know, I've, I was playing D, D with some i say D, &D but my my group dm hates dungeons and dragons so we play all the other types of of role play <laughs> um tabletop role play it's like that against it though the first time we all played together was um uh a D, &D campaign um but so i was playing that but during lockdown i dm'd for the first time and it was great and i got the confidence to do it and i've seen loads more people and i've got hopefully going to be dming again soon with some people that have never played it before because they know more That's about awesome. it and it's and it's not even like i don't know what it is i there's this weird kind of nerds overprotective of their thing and they don't want the jocks coming in um <laughs> Which was what YouTube was, right? YouTube used to be this place where all yeah, the nerds course, found yeah. their people and all the jocks came in and ruined it. Um, but... I think, I think going, going back slightly, I think that's what the maker movement almost is as well. Mm. It's, that, mm. it's that place where kind of nerds can go, I make this thing. And it's it's not just kind of nerds that necessarily follow, you know, that go down the, you know, the computer nerds who do the Raspberry Pi, who you know, yeah. were playing with, you know, ZX81, Spectrums, BBC Micros, when everyone else wasn't doing anything with computers. It's it's the nerds who kind of go, yeah, I like to, I like to spend five hours every evening turning something on a wood lathe. Yeah. Or I've I've got yeah, 
several milling machines and whatever because I'm making my own steam engine mm. or yeah you know, any other yeah. make thing and it's just you know, make a community I think is just that amalgam of people and it's I've talked about this several times in the past I I'd love to try and find a way and I think it probably needs to be kind of virtual reality which is way beyond my current sort of skill set to be able to kind of visualize a three-dimensional multi-space Venn diagram of how the different parts of the maker community is. Because there's, there's some people think, make, uh, somebody uh, or last year said, maker community, that's, it, it's mostly woodworkers. And I was like, <laughs> no, it's not. Get out. <laughs> yeah. And that is a portion of the maker community, but there's an awful lot of other people who do an awful lot of other things some of which actually far exceed probably woodworking. Um, although I, I would suggest woodworking is probably quite, is, is common and it, it's fairly accessible. Yeah. Um, it's, it's fairly easy entry and it's also a massive rabbit hole because when you sort of start, it's like, hmm. I mean, cardboard and paper mache tools. That's, that's, yeah. That's an easy, you know, arguably an easier barrier to entry and, oh, and totally. one that, kids generally pick up before they pick up woodworking yeah but then you, you, then you go general. into the art in general then you go down the cosplay mm -hmm. route mm -hmm. yeah i think and the cosplayers are the quintessential makers because they often are doing multiple skill oh, sets i bow down to cosplayers oh my yeah. gosh yeah i think because i often think i get really jealous of kids nowadays who have access to the internet and have access to all these things. Cause I did yeah. my GCSEs in 2000 and I remember I did an art GCSE and I was so limited to what sort of art styles I could do. Cause the only art styles I knew were what I learned from my art teacher and what I learned from books in the library. Mm -hmm. And now you've got kids who I see them on social media and their artwork is sensational and it's because mm. they've got all these free resources on on youtube and they've got all these things they can go on and learn about everything mm -hmm. so i think but what's going back to when you were saying like people think that you know the maker industry is woodwork and stuff like that i think for me when i think about the first time i saw a maker on television it would have been woodwork. It was at my grandma's house and she used to watch like uh, Bob Ross and stuff. And then mm. whatever channel it was that she was watching, there was this American woodworker who was always making things. And I Do can't you think. Workshop? Yeah. Yeah. Everyone, and I, yeah. I can't think of what else I was seeing on television growing up that wasn't woodworking or cooking. Blue Peter, bitter. Yeah. Blue Peter. But I mean, that's just us in the UK. Right. And yeah, even, but... and, that and art attack was still very kind of limited it wasn't mm. you were never gonna like you were building tracy island out of toilet roll but you were never going to build tracy island out of you know real steel and <laughs> welding True. and you know it was there was limitations to what you could make at home so now you've got all these people coming into the maker industry who are younger that have mm. grown up with it and then you've also got people that are finally starting to watch more than just woodworking because they've got the internet yeah, um definitely. so hopefully it's getting broader i'm so like there's some really cool like kids that are out there at the moment on twitter and everything um that i'm just i can't wait to see what they do in like 20 yeah. years absolutely yeah it's just I, though I will say the one thing that i think is an issue with the maker industry is um the the feeling that you're not part of it unless you're making content and yeah, there's lots of people when you go to like make a fair and make a central and you go oh what do you do and they're like oh nothing they're like no what do you do and they're like oh i do that i make dice at home but it doesn't matter yeah. you know it doesn't anyway look over there there's whoever and it's like no what you do is just as important as what that person's doing it's just they happen to make videos about it absolutely like, yeah. this is something i think we, we we massively forget those of us that are kind of content creators yeah you know put things on kind of yeah we make things and we we put them up and you go on instagram and i, and I follow i don't know i think this i've got 1700 accounts that are on my instagram you've got all of them put stuff up you've got um, 1700 accounts <laughs> and not everyone like, on instagram <laughs> no just about uh, and yeah you kind of think there's so there's, so there's 
there's 1700 accounts I follow. So some of them are some of them are business accounts, some of them are, are family and friends. Yeah, you, know, you only post once every six months, if that. Yeah. But yeah, there's there's, there's a whole bunch of people. It's just a variety of people. And I do follow a, a variety of um, different types of making. So I've got photography accounts, art accounts, electronics, 3D printing, wood. There's there's a significant raft of different types of accounts that I follow because I find these things interesting. Mm. But there are this, this, we forget that I think that the the content creators, the people who put stuff on Instagram, are just that tip of the iceberg. Yeah. And there's this whole yeah. stack of people that don't. I mean, I've mentioned before my brother-in-law. He's he's, he's, uh, he's seven years older than I am. He's he left school hardly in qualifications, worked his way up. He's an, he's an engineer, um, now works for all. I mean, he's, he's fairly high up in his industry now, um, but has worked through a number of industries. Um, he started out as a contract electrician and yeah, he's, a, he's, a, he's a natural engineer. He, he, he makes things. And I mean, over the years, I've seen him make you know, a full size sort of you know, eight by four, uh, CNC router, yeah, be in his living room. You go around to visit, and it'd be like this CNC yeah. router lining on the living room floor. These kind of sort of built from scratch. Yeah, and I mean, he, he, he built the 3D printer a few years ago. The thing is, a uh, meter and a half tall, uh, a meter wide, wow, half a I meter like deep. That 3D printer, please. Yeah, I mean, it's got <laughs> it, it's it, the print bed is. Uh, six sort of standard size end there. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've, I've, it's, Jamie's it's seen a photograph size. of it. Jamie's seen a photograph of it. The yeah. photograph has a, a double bed stood up on the wall behind up it. Against the wall, yeah. And you can barely see the double bed because of the size Jeez. of this thing. And he's built that because, I, I mean, he does, does some 3D printing, but mm. he's built it for the joy of building the 3D printer that size. Yeah. You but, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Did, didn't he? He built it in the room and then realized he wouldn't yeah, be able to get it, it out, out of the room. Yeah. <laughs> so now um, he sleeps on it. Yeah. Uh, it, so there's that kind of whole, around. The, the number of things he's built <laughs> and then just sold or got rid of because he just wanted to build it. Yeah. Mm. And it's just just because he liked building things. Yeah, yeah. He does not have a single social media account. Well, other than, other than one, he's got he's he's got a LinkedIn account because he works in an industry where having a LinkedIn account is very important. But this I, is only social media. I find it so interesting because I have found myself meeting people that make stuff and going, "Oh, you should put these online." Mm. And and then now I kind of I I met up with a friend today who I haven't seen in maybe two and a half years because of obviously lockdown and everything. And uh, we are friends from cambridge make space and and she said to me today she was like oh yeah you said to me i should be putting my stuff on youtube and i was like yeah change no no anymore <laughs> but ignore what i said don't do it don't do it um TikTok. she makes really cool TikTok. yeah yeah do you want it i did i think i actually did but um <laughs> TikTok. it's like a it's like a nervous twit tiktok um but i said to her like don't you don't need to but at the time i was like yeah you should do this you should do this because suddenly there was like this this surge of everyone kind of thinking they should make money off their hobbies right oh you're really good yeah. at that thing you need to create content online so you can get adsense which no one makes any money from adsense so then you're on sponsorship deals and then suddenly you're kind of limited to what you make because you have a sponsor and all this and you lose that passion for that thing that you love doing you know she makes physical like game controllers and stuff she made like this bird oh, nice. suit to play flappy bird and you literally do this <laughs> and the bird on the screen goes Fantastic. up and down like and she does all this cool stuff and yeah i'd forgotten that i'd said that to her and i was like no don't do that like i know i told you to do it three years ago but ignore three years ago alex she's she's seen a lot <laughs> 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 she's you weren't there but no um yeah, so I think that's the, the what you end up having is you go to things like Make Essential and there'll be, you know, a handful of creators there, a handful of YouTubers there that people mm. know the names of. But then there's just as many people that are equally talented, if not more so, that are just making stuff okay. at home. Yeah. And but 
some of them don't see it in themselves and some of them are just like, oh no don't worry about what I make and you bully them into it and they're like oh, I made this like armoire yeah. <laughs> like, what the hell you're so talented but yeah so I think it can be I think the 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 title maker can be a bit dangerous because I think that it gets mm. it gets stuck to content creators and and it should really it covers everyone not yeah. all the time but i think that's a Absolutely. that's a worry i really enjoyed i think it, i wasn't aware of the making movement until probably 2011 2012 mm -hmm. and I, i'm i'm yeah for me the term maker is great I and mean, it's a term that kind of describes how i grew up and mm -hmm. you know kind of i've always been making things but i wasn't really aware of the maker movement it's kind of sort of term that i'd kind of sort of seen dashed around a couple of times prior to 2011 yeah but i got I, I got drafted in by my school to teach electronics for a year because the Gosh. electronics teacher was retiring and the gcse class there was still a class to to run through and so i was like okay i, I can do it I've, I've done electronics i've got a physics degree i can i've got a, a sitting guilds in electronics because i did one after i left university because i was bored yeah um so he's kind of like, what should I do? I'll, I'll, I'll do a, a sitting guilds in electronics. I have and a sitting yeah, guilds like... in web design with Dreamweaver, so at least yours is better than mine is. <laughs> I've got that one as well. <laughs> and in front page. Okay. <laughs> Love a good sitting guilds. <laughs> I like I like sitting guilds. They're, they're, they're fantastic. Yeah, I mean, yours is good. Sorry, carry on. I was just like, as you were saying, uh, it'd be good if I actually, I can't remember half the stuff now. It was, it was very much aimed at people working in industry, kind of, yeah, everyone else on the course. It was an evening class at the local college, and everyone else was kind of, yeah, fitter at the local, one of the local factories. I was like, uh, I didn't tell the instructor for probably six or seven months that I had a degree in physics. It was just like, <laughs> well, you seem quite good at this. Yeah. Um, but it's like I, I wasn't really aware of it but then kind of here you know, 2011 i asked to teach this electronics like okay google help uh, yeah because i'm, I'm you know, get the schemes of work and things like that or of the specification and kind of find out what they're supposed to do but it's like oh you know, actually it was electronic products so it wasn't just electronics it was kind of yeah. a product design with electronics so it was like okay right i need some ideas for this and kind of what they need to do and i was like started diving through and discovered make um and sort of make magazine and make fairs and it's like i think it was the september it was like there was a mini maker fair in brighton mm -hmm. which was kind of like well that, that's only a couple of hours drive away so let, let's so i took the kids down to brighton for a, a kind of the day to kind of go around this maker fair. i, I didn't even know what i was expecting to see but it was just like maker fair brighton and it was it was free entry as well so it was just like perfect you know day with the kids and it was just like, it was amazing. It was, to me, it was it was almost like something I always used to find, uh, particularly like when I was teaching, I'd often do visits to universities. And there's something about kind of university departments, particularly like science departments, engineering departments, technology departments. There's there's, there's almost like something in the air. Even if the corridors are empty, there's, it, there's just this feeling I, I personally get in a, a university that kind of just like learning happens here good things happen here yeah. it's the smell and it was of all like, the cog wheels going around. yeah and i was just like <laughs> I, I walked into this kind of make bacon fat and grease and there's just just hundreds of people with kind of well there were i mean there must have been the best part of a thousand people there i would have thought over the sort of the course of the day but there were hundreds of people there with on a, with a little table with everything from little bits of in fact i've still got on uh, probably can't see it but on the edge of yeah but that edge that corner of my um computer monitor there's a little little uh fairy cake muffin type thing which we made out of fimo and we all made we all made this little fimo thing and then brought it home in a little cardboard box so it wouldn't get crushed and baked it in the oven and we've got you know, on windowsill down there we've got some kind of pebbles that we felted okay. and then there were people playing there was there was a um somebody else they, they had this thing where they had a pong it was kind of the original sort of pong but it was this led rope light with foot pedals sort of you know, five meters apart that's cool that's cool and it's just like 
I mean, just so many different things. It was just so exciting seeing it. And, the, you know, there's a Dalek moving around outside somewhere. And there was a, 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 a little corner, which was kind of, yeah, classic computers. And it was just like, well, this is a, this is a throwback to kind of sort of memory. There's like an Auric and a bunch of other ones. It was just like, I, I was just, I mean, I was just so excited to see it. And there was all these people who was just makers. And it was just like, yeah. I've, I've found these people. Mm -hmm. I kind of knew they existed, but. I didn't realize there was actually a community to go with it because I knew yeah. the people that yeah liked making things and yeah had shedfuls of stuff and the like but actually to find out that there were actually kind of people getting together and, and kind of, sort of doing these things it's just like it's been uh, downhill ever since I kind um, of came I came quite late to the maker community really because I have had as many jobs as Homer Simpson so I've kind of worked <laughs> through like I, I worked a lot in like my first job was on a tour bus and then I was a picture framer and then I cool, kind of picky. worked <laughs> I just, just, I, all the, I've worked in retail I've worked in backstage theatre because of the, the theatre degree um, and loads of stuff and I was working in and I worked for my sins in mobile phones and broadband sales for far too long um, quit all that <laughs> said I'd never go back into sales ended up back in sales um, and really, like, I, there were a few YouTubers that I watched. So prior to starting at Raspberry Pi in 2016, like, I hadn't been to any make affairs or anything. They, they weren't even on my radar. Um, and I, I was watching Laura Kampf and Bob, I like to make stuff. Like, we're literally like, the only kind of maker YouTube accounts that I was watching at that time. And it, then I joined Raspberry Pi and was like, Oh, and then work sent me off to to make a fair in in New York, um, nice. and it was all downhill from there. But no, I, you know, I suddenly thrown and I've worked in jobs that have their own communities. Like you know, I I worked in in memor film memorabilia, so I was working going to a lot of conventions and selling autographs and and things like that. That obviously has its own community, but it's a real. It's not the nicest community. The people that go to cons, the people that do cosplay and everything are all great and they're wonderful, but the the, the kind of behind the scenes community isn't always as nice. Um, and so those sorts of things and, you know, the, the mobile so phone sales community, um, aren't, it wasn't that great. And then suddenly I was in this job thrown into this job where I had to talk to these people on a daily basis on Twitter about this thing that I had no idea what I was really doing. Um, and then went off to to make it. I I promise I am very qualified for my job, even though it sounds like I'm, I'm not. Um, but uh, yeah, and I got thrown into. And then I was meeting people at events, and I emailed Bob. Um, I was so excited because he'd done he'd built a Raspberry Pi gaming cabinet. Mm -hmm. yeah, um, remember that bef before I started at Raspberry Pi. So I'd seen it, and then. I said to my boss, I was like, oh, we should cover it in the blog or something. So like, yeah, yeah, I was like, I'll email him to let, I never email anyone to let them know that I've covered them in the blog, but I emailed Bob. I was like, oh, hi, Bob. I've heard it. And he's like, hi. And, uh, and I got to know him. And I mean, to be fair, I, his wife, Ginny, is one of my most favorite people in the world. So Ginny's whenever awesome. I go He's to lovely. events, I hang out with Ginny more than I have. <laughs> um, we try and do this thing where we do like a, uh, we hug and we see how long it can last and make people awkward around us. So we'll just be hugging and we'll be chatting to each other about what we've been up to. Um, and everyone's just like, are they okay? And we've been there for like five minutes. Um, Our buttons have got caught. <laughs> yes. She actually made me, I've got it. I had it in here, but I think it's downstairs now. She made me a mug and it's got hands on it. It's a hug mug so that we can hug when, uh, when we're not together. Oh, but, that's um, lovely. Yeah. So I kind of used that as an excuse to message Bob. So then when I knew I was going to an event, I knew someone there. I could go and see mm. Bob and, and chat to him and then met people through him and met people through everything else. And um, and it's kind of grown from there. And I'm very, very fortunate that I have a lot of really good friends within the community. But nothing exists like this apart from this, where you can be part of a community at all different skill levels. Because yeah. there yeah. are communities out there that are really cool and great, but you have to have a... A, a skill mm. um and yeah the maker maker community you can just go in it as a fan you can go into it yeah you do origami you can you know well that's what i was just about to say i think the 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 
diversity of skills, I think, is something that the maker community has as a huge benefit over any of the others because you'd get that that same sort of thing. You know, some you know a, a welder then suddenly going, "Oh my god, you do origami!" and then the person with origami yep. going, "Oh my god, you you weld you glue bits of steel together." You know, it's, let's it's make completely... an origami welded paper crane, like exactly like you know yeah. oh maybe there's some techniques that you know you use with the origami that i can use to apply to folding steel over and you know it's that kind of there's that cross pollination i think that happens with so many different fragmented areas yeah. of making i think that's and then you learn more because i remember the first maker central i went to and we were kind of worried about because we we took a table we had a, a raspberry pi stand and we very rarely have you know kind of mm. stands at events I used to uh, uh, make a fair, but it was more Raspberry Pi Foundation that was doing it with all the, you know, we've got all these pies set up, come and play with them. Um, I'm like, let's have a table at this. And we looked and it looked very woodworky. And I mean, Make Central is still very woodworky and very, mm. you know, metal work. Um, it was like, well, we'll go anywhere and we see what happened. And people were, we were very fortunate that the, the issue with Make Central is they don't have anywhere for the YouTubers to hide. So they, you'd have like Bob, would end up standing in the exact same space for the entire day because he hasn't been able to move because a queue has formed. But lucky yep. for us, Bob had been talking to me prior to the doors open. So when the queue formed, he was stood next to our table and we had all of these woodwork <laughs> fans queuing around our tables. So we were chatting to them and they were just like, you know, what's Raspberry Pi? I say, oh, it's, no, oh, I don't know electronics. I'm into woodwork. And I'm like, okay, well, let's talk about how you can marry those two together. Yeah. And they'd be like, oh, have you seen the game cabinet that Bob's made? You obviously have because you're here to meet him. And you can have that conversation and suddenly you've got these people going, oh, I can do this and this and I can incorporate electronics into this thing that I've made. Where else do you, do you have that? Where else do you take the skill that you've focused so much on and then talk to people that have a skill that can meld with yours? It's, it's great. It's I mean, you know, the the next up thing on YouTube helps as well when you're watching one and then suddenly a different <laughs> video comes along. But it's like that, but in person. <laughs> um, but yeah, I think a so lot of people, I, I missed the first year and a lot of people said it, it, there was a lot of wood turners. It, it, it was yeah. a lot. It was, it was Turner Central, definitely. And it was... Yeah. Well, I, the first year had this wonderful, wonderful thing where, because at the same time, uh, the same. <laughs> oh, the, the, I know the, what you're going to say. <laughs> there was Carry a on. fantastic game that you could play if you'd wandered out of the of the uh, event hall. You could kind of people watch because the other thing that was going on was <laughs> uh, a vaping conference. <laughs> so what you had is this fantastic opportunity to sit back, take a moment, and just watch people walking towards you know from from the kind of the smoking area outside wandering back in and decide you know trying to work out before vapor they maker, veered off vapor maker <laughs> exactly you know they're going to vapor central or maker central which one is it going to be because yeah. it was oh. they all looked like me they were all white dudes with beards you know so it was a perfect opportunity to go <gasps> which way they're going which way they're going? oh no they're a vapor you know <laughs> I got like I was literally talking about that today to a friend to my friend because we were talking about Make Central. She's like, "Oh, the time I went, there was this vape conference." I was like, "Yeah, the gorillas in the mist that was going on next to us for the entire weekend." <laughs> but I got so sick because I lost my voice. I was talking on this stand to people, and there was all this vape smoke. Because I don't know if this is like I believe this is true, but the the people that run that conference don't get to just pay for when the conference is happening they also have to pay for like four days after because they have to air the thing out oh wow of course so wow. like cause it just it was just everywhere and you just left smelling of like candy floss but um Horrible yeah i lost my smell, voice yeah. completely i was completely gone and there were all these people i wanted to talk to and i was like oh it's really nice to meet you they're introducing the raspberry pie and they're like <laughs> 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 stay away from the weirdo on the raspberry pie stand but yeah that was Oh, that was so funny. That conference just, yeah, it was just smoke. It was just everywhere, just this vape smoke. Just that, that kind of billowing out, drifting down towards yeah. us down the uh, the foyer. That, oh, but then like, the you year know... after the, 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 the 2019 one, it was the Fitness and Power Expo. Yep. So then you had a load of like big, massive gorillas, um, you know, different Without gorillas the in the mist then. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> yeah. But the, the hotel that we were at, of course you then got a load of you know 
hungry, hungover makers uh, sort of trying to trying to get some breakfast in the hotels. But then these like massive dudes hungry, who hungover like, bodybuilders. <laughs> exactly, who are just like, oh yeah, yeah, just just stick all twelve sausages on that, and uh, yeah, another eight eggs on top, you know. <laughs> Any for the anything for the rest of us. <laughs> well, hotels didn't know what the hell they were doing. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was. Um, it's 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 just as interesting, I think, to see what's going on in the rest of the NEC than what we're actually there for. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Oh my gosh. It was fun. It was fun. I was looking earlier. There's there's nothing else on as far as I can see this next week. Yeah. The only ones. Just make it central. Which should oh make breakfast gosh. easier. Yeah, so that, that, that could be quite nice. I used to um go to the NEC and work in the fashion like they used to have this big fashion show for like five days or something and they had all these um tables with people selling all different clothes and materials and stuff. And I somehow ended up working at that for like two years in a row when I was a teenager. <laughs> I was like the most unfashionable, weird looking, non-binary looking kid that you'd ever find. <laughs> it's like, I, I had to like short hair, baggy t-shirts, the kind of weird, like, what are they that the 90s kids had that no one else has in the 90s yep. was when you couldn't work out anyone's gender. Um, and, uh, and yeah, I used to go work at the fashion show, the clothes show. That was it was called the clothes show. Um, so it's really weird, like going back to the NEC, having spent all that time there with models, um, to then go and it's just a load of bearded guys. <laughs> so, so the models just, are all uh, just made out of wood and plastic now, instead. Yeah, there's a different type of model at the, at the yeah. NEC this time. Oh. But I will be there. It was definitely about 2019. I, I was, it, it was good to see the variety of because I was expecting. Baseball. The kind of oh, I was just going to be a bunch of wood turners, but I'm going to meet a bunch of people that I know. But it was good to see they were kind of representatives of maker spaces and, and and kind of yeah, random, not random makers, but the kind of more the more makery makers. The kind of no, I don't. Yeah, I can't really define what I do. I just make. Yeah, there's, I just yeah, there's wood, there's metal, there's electronics, there's yeah. I've repaired. There was a, uh, one stand that I spent a bit of time talking to a guy i can't remember the name of him now um he did he didn't i i think he did have youtube but he mostly blogged and it was him and another guy and they had a a, a vern search machine okay. i was just like fantastic and that looks really nice i've got i've, I've got a, a Vim's film search machine that needs refurbishing it mm -hmm. does not work at all i was just like do you want to explain that for those of us who don't know what the hell you're on about a verbal test machine, uh, electrostatic generator, uh, works on two contra-rotating glass discs with a series of metal pads, um, and then you have sort of pickup brushes. And normally they're connected to Leyden jars, which are kind of the the early capacitors, mm -hmm. um, as opposed to the kind of Van de Graaff generator, which most people remember from school, which is kind of a, a rubber band with some different rollers yeah, the and big, big the big belt dome on top, which kind of gives good sparks off. You're assuming that I remember anything from school. <laughs> <laughs> Do you remember uh, one yeah. moment where there was a kid with all the hair standing up when they were touching a big shiny thing? <laughs> yep, there we are. <laughs> yeah, that's the matter of generator. I yeah. mean, I, I had a, uh, we had a um, chemistry teacher who had a nervous breakdown and left. And then she came back a year later as a substitute teacher um, and was subbing in our history lesson. And she came over to myself and my friend Abby because um, she'd remembered us as being the nice kids in her chemistry lesson. And she started telling us what we could put, that what was currently in the chemistry lab that we could get our hands on, that we could put in our chemistry teacher's tea that would kill her and no one would know. And we were like, wow. I'm pretty sure you should be back yet. <laughs> She's like, yeah, if you go in, you'd find this and it looks like this. And when you put it in tea, like it disappears, it doesn't color it and no one would know. I was like, oh... I don't think you should be here. That's the sort of stuff I remember wow. from school. Nothing of, of any, <laughs> like nothing I learned in lessons. Um, <laughs> I think she came over to talk to us because I was doodling in a history book. So, <laughs> but um, yeah, that was a that's one of those memories that just stays in your head of like, oh. Now, when you say you remember her? that, do you, do you you remember the situation I, or you remember the list of chemicals she told you to use? I remember the situation. <laughs> I do not remember the list of chemicals, unfortunately or fortunately. Um, but <laughs> I say, I a remember... lot of people would say fortunately. 
Yeah, I just remember it so vividly because we were doodling. There was there was this TV show that we were obsessed with at the time, and we were going through the history book and putting quotes from it under the pictures. Um, it was like these people that were on a train, and then they all passed out, and when they woke up again, it was like thirty years later. And the last train. Yeah, that was we were Brilliant literally theory. quoting the last train in our history books, and she came. Over. Yeah, That's that awesome was. Place. Uh, so few people remember that TV show, but that was really good. Yeah, I, I struggle with exactly the same the same problem of every now and then it just comes back into my head of oh my god, it's such a good series, and then there's no one else who's watched it. Yeah, I go onto my you know on Facebook you have Facebook memories and it tells you like what you said on that day in the past years, and I like to go through that and just see how much of an idiot I was and delete appropriately. Um, yeah. But there was one like literally about a week and a half ago of me going, does anyone remember this TV show where they're on a train? <laughs> <laughs> like a few people going, yeah, yeah, it was called the last train, <laughs> and I'd forgotten the name again until you said it, so I can't maintain any sort of useful information. <laughs> I mean, See, yeah, I find, you know, I find that, and some, some of the stuff is kind of it's not well, it's before the internet in terms of kind of you know, the internet being an active thing. Mm -hmm. But I, yeah, I, I can remember there was a TV program I remember seeing as a kid. I'd love to watch again. It's probably rubbish. I'm pretty sure it was about some guy who was kind of framed for murdering somebody in the royal family or somebody in the royal family was did a murder and i can only remember little tiny snippets of his tv series but i remember kind of knowing that i liked watching it well this is kind the time that we find thriller. out and but also things like books drink. there's this i can remember the, a series of books that i remember as a kid well before the internet um they were great little project books little blue project books and for years, I've tried to find them again. It's sort of thing, they're probably in little second-hand bookshops somewhere, if they yeah. exist. But they were great little books on, yeah, kind of how to build your own transistor radio. And they were just, they were, I'm pretty sure it was like a series of like 50 or 60 of these. And they would, on the back of each one, they'd list all the, the other sort of ones that are available. They've probably removed them all because they're probably like, now strip this wire with your teeth. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> or, or insulate this bit with some asbestos. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, there's a reason melt, some of the books you read as kids aren't around anymore. <laughs> now yeah. fill fill this rocket with your own homemade black powder. Yeah. It's it's crazy though, because like we were talking the other day about do you remember those um how your body works books where every like month you'd get a book and a body part and you build yeah. like a model. Yeah. But nowadays like Kids don't care about that because give me an hour and I'll have one printing on my 3D printer and I'll find all that information on the internet. Yep. Like, yeah. books aren't dead, but I think one of the things that's like keeping books alive is how pretty they are. Yeah. Not so much the fact that they're books, it's the fact that they're very pretty books. Um, I personally hate PDFs, so I do prefer physical books anyway, but like. <laughs> Yeah, I can't read on a screen. I, I think, yeah, I mean, for me, there is something about having a book in my hand. Mm. I'd much prefer reading a book than reading. So, for example, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, I'm reading, I, I, I think I put it in the chat. I'm currently reading the sixth book in the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy trilogy. Oh, okay. Um, which I only discovered. It's not an official, it's not for Adams. It's, yeah, it's. It's, uh, it's a whole thing. Ewan Colfer uh, wrote it. And it's the kind of finish off because Douglas Adams hadn't finished before he died. Is he an ice cream and... maker in this one? <laughs> I don't know, not yet. Just kind of, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't get anything away, but there's 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 death rays at the moment. Um, oh. Yeah, lots of them. Hmm. So, and, and no cups of tea yet. So, I, I I've kind of got it. Clearly got not it from the library. Book. Yeah, I got it from the library on the Libby app. Which is a fantastic mm -hmm. app, but it's not the same as if it was a, if it was a paperback. I would have probably finished it by now. I just I buy books, but I don't read physical. I've like literally been. I set myself the most stupid challenge in the world that I'll never do, where I was going to consume all the Star Wars, like every book and every comic and every audio drama. Oh, and wow, but in a, the that's in a, the in the extended there's universe. like a whole timeline. And I was like, yeah. So I bought the first one, and no. And I'm just like, why did I buy it? I should have just got the audio book because I'm never going to read it. Like, I like books. I have books everywhere. I have the next door in the room of requirement. I've got shelves of books, but <laughs> I have 
I don't read them, I listen to them because I can't sit down, but I still find myself buying them. So that is absolutely pretty. this house as well. Um, yeah. My wife's very much, she loves her books and she does read them, but just she'll dip in and read chunks of many different books. So we've oh, got yeah, loads got, of like, books that have go. got. Oh, yeah, yeah. She, I think she's in double figures for <laughs> things she can just pick up and start reading. Yeah. Um, and and, and so I've, I've absolutely loads and loads of books. I, I got, um, when I was a, a youngish kid, again, total absolute nerd, we'd gone on a holiday up to Kirby Lonsdale sort of like district kind of way and i got the um the oxford dictionary of chemistry because why the hell not yeah. absolutely loved it just it was a wonderful thing and then a few years ago i started trying to collect the rest of the books in that series so it is stuff like uh idioms geography computing ecology biology agriculture um <laughs> physics. physics have you got the physics one accounting of course i've got the physics uh, <laughs> yeah. and the and the science in general um and the only one i've actually opened and read through is the chemistry one <laughs> but it's the collection well i have a right? selection of like there's probably 20 of them up there like i all want there, all, all these star animals. wars books even if yeah. i listen to them i want them i physically want the books to, to kind of prove that I've done it, even though I'll never have done it. But the list is so like, oh my gosh, it's so long. There's like a a, a, a JPEG image. You need list. some of the early 2000 AD as well, because they had oh. Star Wars. Don't say that. Stories in. Yeah. <laughs> They've got, but I think it's going, I think, I think the list that I'm going by is canon. And I don't think they they have okay. To... So yeah, no, if you're not going extended universe as well, then I think that's going to yeah. cut it down to to at least manageable in one single lifetime. Yeah, possibly. Maybe. I mean, I've already got three lifetimes on. You should watch this on Netflix. So who knows? Yeah. What... I mean, would you would you also factor in ET as well? You know, if you if you're going. I can't. I'm scared of ET, so I can't watch ET. <laughs> Well, no, I, I don't mind the movie. I'm, I have a very weird fear of physical E.T. merchandise that Ooh, I just can't. That I hate it. My nana had this E.T. money box at the top of the stairs in her house. Um, oh, and wow. to turn the light on upstairs, the light switch was upstairs. Um, so you'd be, as a kid, you're at the bottom of the stairs and it's dark upstairs, apart from the downstairs light shining a little bit off the E.T. money box that's at the top of the stairs. <laughs> and you'd have to, like, leg it up the stairs as quick as you could to turn the light on so E.T. didn't kill you. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I can't I can't be dealing it. I've, it's been many years of my... I just, I just don't want to be around it. And I hate irrational fears. I think they're silly, but I have one. And it's ET. <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't sound irrational to me. You know. No, it's. I mean, it's trauma. Is what it is. Yeah, it's I was going to say it's trauma. deeply ingrained from the sounds of it. Yeah. The childhood trauma of ET at the top of the stairs. They also had this big cuddly ET that they used to keep in in the spare room, um, where the grandkids slept. And um, I was so scared of this ET that even when they took it out of the room, I wouldn't sleep in that room. So I was the only grandkid that was allowed to sleep in the guest bedroom uh which was full of porcelain dolls i was fine with that <laughs> i was fine with porcelain dolls but no not et just about every other human adult on the planet has an irrational fear of porcelain dolls though. porcelain dolls let's throw some clowns and some spiders in there i'm fine just don't put me near like that cute little alien that brings joy and love to the world <laughs> yep definitely an irrational fear oh. <laughs> so bad but um, yes, this is what's going to happen now. I'm going to go to make essential, and suddenly just someone's just going to turn up as ET. Or just go early. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> if you see me crying in the corner at Make Essential, you know it's because someone's heard me say this and they've come after me. <laughs> oh man, no. Make Essential's going to be. Yeah, I'm. It's so weird, right? Because it's been years since we've all been able to hang out. Oh, yeah. see people and i mean it's still there's you know still people that aren't traveling over because of covid and and everything yeah. but i'm gonna see people in the flesh that i haven't seen for ages real is... humans <gasps> it's gonna be good Actual... yeah we need some we need make a fair back though we need more than just make a central i um, I, I, I was i was very 
It's quite disappointing. <laughs> Sorry, to say I just saw Jesse's message in the comments. <laughs> 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 oh, dear. Oh, I'll push that, I'll just put that up in the yeah. shit house. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely glorious. <laughs> yeah. For the people, this is. For people, I'm never giving Jesse yeah, my for address. For people listening, <laughs> Jesse found a, a box of ET collectibles in quotation marks at her grandma's, and generally thought it was a box full of poo. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, yeah, I don't think Jesse has my address yet, and Jesse will never be getting my address. <laughs> I'm just no, but it might turn up at Pi Tower. <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay. Alex, we've got a box for you. Oh, Jesse's on my side and anti ET, yeah. so we're fine. Should never send me ET. See. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a fan of ET either. No. But oh, that's right. Slightly different reasons. I'll tell you about later. It's, it's um, ET is forty years old this nuts. year, isn't it? Is it really? I am. Um, hmm. I think it's the 40th anniversary of VT this year. Yeah, more than that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Significantly. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, I'm, I was disappointed with make a, the Make a Whole Fair. I mean, like I said, I discovered Make a, make a Movement, Make a Fair, Make a make mm -hmm. Magazine, etc. in 2011. And the kind of the, that, that, oh, great, there's a mini Make a Fair in, in Brighton. And I went to that. And I know it happened, it happened the following year. Uh, but we couldn't go for some reason. And then I was like, well, I'll go the following year again because it's the only one that's local. And yeah. they stopped doing it because it's quite a heavy load on the volunteer. It's an awful and lot. Great. And then there was the only other one was kind of you know, Newcastle, which was the kind of you know, the proper, not mini maker fair. It's just yeah. like, but I know in the, if it was in the States, yeah, that'd be like, yeah, we'll just, we'll just drive up. But it's like yeah. from the, pretty much on the South Coast. You, ah, yeah. I'm, I'm 10 miles as the crow flies from the Euro tunnel. So it's like, yeah, to get to Newcastle, that, that's a major trek. Mm. Yeah, it'd be quicker for you to get to Paris. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I can, <laughs> yeah. If you've got the ticket right, Paris I, can, I, can be, I can be in Paris in less than an hour if, yeah, if you've got the ticket right and you jump on. Yeah. So I think they've I've, stopped. Yeah. Yeah. I've never done a UK make affair, um, but I used to go to San Francisco and New York for work. Wow. Um, that's why I need make affairs back in the US so I can get some free trips at work. <laughs> but um <laughs> uh, and I did Rome. I did Rome one year. Um and that was literally we, we had a stand there and someone I think sprained their ankle or something. So they rang me at seven o'clock that evening asking if I could be on a plane seven o'clock next morning to Rome. Um but but I all I saw was this, you know, this hall with people in. I didn't really see much of Rome. Um <laughs> But uh, yeah, I, I really liked the American ones. I think it was nice. It was nice to see everyone. I think that the maker, the maker industry is kind of America more than it's anywhere else. It's not that there aren't as many makers in other countries, but like lots of the the content creators are in the US yeah. and Canada. Um, so it's nice to have the American ones to go out and just see everyone in the flesh and and. Uh, yeah, and, and meet people. I met actually, I met Jesse at um, uh, Workbench Con just before oh, lockdown. Of course. So that's where that's where our love bloomed. <laughs> that's where I found my soulmate. <laughs> I like I like the idea of Workbench Con. Yeah, but it was. I didn't like the kind of price tag. Oh yeah, I mean the it, price it tag was. It. Yeah, it it was interesting. I mean, I went um, I went on behalf of work and also kind of on behalf of Hackspace magazine. Um, we didn't really know what it was about. And I kind of went, I don't know. I don't know what I took from it, apart from the friends I made along the way. Like, I, I, because I obviously went there as also as a, a maker and um they had some talks and stuff and kind of sat down and watched people do stuff and it was great but the biggest part of workbench con was chatting to people mm -hmm. and i think that a lot of there were some people that were talking about this year's workbench con and they were saying i'm not coming to the event but i'm going to come and stay in the hotel and i'll meet you all in the bar afterwards <laughs> you know it's, it's kind of well, that there's, 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 there's an element of that happening with maker central yeah, I the know number some of people, people I've that... spoken to basically said, "I am going. I've got a ticket. I'm going to cut, pop it, but I'm probably going to pop in, just have a little wander around, and then go off and do something else. Yeah. But I'm going to. I want to meet up with my friends. 
Yeah, it's it's. I know. Yeah, I know a few people that that were saying like they're not going to come to the event, but they'll come and hang out afterwards. Um, so I think, but then you can't really organize. Like you need an event in order yeah. to, unless you kind of said to everyone, "Hey, we're going to meet in Hyde Park at eleven o'clock on this date," <laughs> yeah. or or we're in a carnation. You know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're all gonna or a be random creation. We're all off to Paris. Um, but yeah, this kind of the events bring people in, but not everyone's going mm. to the event. It's kind of weird. I don't know how you fix but that. I, th I think the, I think it's, there's there's, a, there's like the make movement has these sort of different tiers of of people that kind of form these kind of layers. Whether it's the kind of you, you've got the kind of high high tier content creators with the big numbers who are the big names on the front of the kind of the, the placards and the posters and the, the websites and you've got got you then you've got kind of the perhaps the other content creators the people who kind of do have their youtube channels but maybe you only have a few hundred or a few thousand followers and they aren't making any money off it it's just something they like to do because they like to share and it's a medium to share and then you've you've got probably then another yeah you know, there'll be a few thousand people who turn up next weekend who yeah they might post a few things on their private Instagram but they they they're not interested in making content but they consume content and they make stuff mm -hmm. and they're going and they're gonna gonna meet some people and they're gonna meet the people the famous people they'll queue up for an hour and a half to talk to Bob. Um, and yeah, they'll be part of that. Kind of, and on the way, they'll they'll chat to you or whoever else, or they'll yeah, you know, they might kind of jump onto a, the makers make for makers stand with Jamie and have a go at making some leather bracelets and kind of go, oh, quite like doing this leather stuff. And yeah, there'll be people then who kind of you know, end up going, oh, this is going to cost us a lot of money because now I, I, a good example, a, a friend of mine, Chris Murray, he. Uh, the last make essential Jamie Page uh, and a few others kind of got their daughter uh, Chris and Emma Murray they kind of go oh I really like wood turning and they ended up buying an awful lot of wood turning stuff including lathes and also obviously you know, when you buy wood turning you, you can't just buy a lathe you've got to buy the chisels and then you've got to buy the stuff to sharpen the chisel and then there's all the wood and you've got to have somewhere to put yeah. the lathe and it, so it's Dangerous. kind of this cascading yeah <laughs> yeah I ended up, yeah, it's just like, how much has this cost me? But then he's also, they also say, but I've also made a whole bunch of friends. And I've got this community yeah. of people that I can talk to and, and kind of get to know as people, not just as makers. The crippling and financial that... ruin is the friends we made along the way. Yeah. <laughs> and the really, really interesting projects that they just kind of, yeah, you know, in like a WhatsApp group, they might just go, oh, yeah, I found this and just drop a YouTube link to something oh, yeah. that you'd like seen pop up in your feed and actively avoided clicking on because you knew it was another rabbit hole you were about to fall down yeah i mean leather talking about leather work that's definitely one of my prior hyper fixations that i've had um there's one of these boxes i don't know which one it is is all leather stuff um yeah i got slightly addicted to leather making and made wallets and bits and pieces um in fact my first my, one of my two youtube videos is making a leather case for the raspberry 400 um and i was sneaky awesome. with that one because i obviously knew when the raspberry 400 was coming out so i released it on launch day um <laughs> <laughs> to get all, get all the clicks. rightly so yeah yeah but um yeah Why not? Quite like yeah yeah i was uh it was interesting because i used to be vegan um i was vegetarian and then i was vegan and so when i started making stuff with leather even though i wasn't vegan anymore i had lots of people saying like how could you have been vegan and you're making stuff with leather so like, well, i'm the same I'm, I'm vegetarian but i do leather yeah. work but like i'd much rather that we're using all of the cow that is yeah. going to end up on the on the yeah, shelves totally. whether i yeah. eat meat or not then stuff go to waste um but I, that that is an interesting thought experiment that i've run through of because obviously at, at the minute leather is a byproduct of the meat industry mm -hmm. with the trajectory that uh the reduction in meat consumption is kind of going if it gets to that point where meat is then a byproduct of the leather industry is is that something that you know i, I think that would be a point i would pull out i'd be that. shocked if that ever happened oh it would be almost 
yeah, yeah. It, it no be... one's ever i don't think that we're ever going to re- no, no, reach no, a point where more people are making with leather than they are eating meat but i think that hopefully we'll get to a point where there's more synthetic um yeah you know, pine text is something that i i'm really yeah. looking forward to playing with at some point yeah so um but yeah we'll see but yeah no, Fish skin leather hard. chicken skin leather yeah i tell you one thing do not laser cut leather it does not smell nice <laughs> no it does not <laughs> The little makerspace at Raspberry Pi Foundation office did not smell good for a good 24 hours. <laughs> but I made a really nice wallet. Um, but yeah, you need was... a lot of ventilation if you're planning on laser and leather. Yeah, that stank. That was not good at all. Um, but yeah, I got some like really nice like blue leather and put it in the laser cutter. And yeah, a lot of Regretted people were angry. It. Yeah, well, especially because um, I work at the Raspberry Pi like trading side of the company so i don't actually work in the foundation office so when i turned up one day <laughs> stunk it out with the burning smell of flesh and then like, <laughs> <dick it. laughs> alex isn't allowed back here um but yeah that was a fun that was a fun hobby to have until my adhd moved me on to something else <laughs> yep <laughs> yep i think it was minis after that i think it was D D minis which i've got sort of up there <laughs> buying them not painting them obviously they're two different hobbies yeah absolutely <laughs> that, that's one to get into in a, at another point yeah. at some point in the future <laughs> yeah 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 i actually um uh, there's this amazing website called hero forge i don't know if either of you have had to play with hero forge we can design your own miniatures um and get them printed and send them to you or you can buy the stl files and print your own so i have a mini up there which is me in lockdown uh, where I just designed myself <laughs> as a as a mini. I made one of my friend and painted it gold and gave him a Brian Award. <laughs> and we've decided he has to be like a nominee for the Brian Award every year, but there won't be anyone else. But he starts to go for the process. <laughs> just getting him voted for the Brian Award. It's great. 3D printers. They're my favorite thing, I think. Definitely. Yeah. Got two next to me right now, but in this mess of a room. Here. An Ender and a Prusa resin printer. I've, I've not dipped my toe in resin yet. I mean, don't do that. Obviously, yeah. don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> don't dip your I've, toe in resin. <laughs> I've not used or bought a resin printer yet. It's There's this misconception that it's messy, and it doesn't have to be messy. Um, no, no, absolutely. And they Prusa and a few others as well do really nice kind of um, wash and cure boxes. So you kind of take it out of the resin printer, you put it in the washing cure and it does everything for you and it's very contained. Um, so it's actually quite, I tend to, re- like I would, if I was going to print something, I'd more likely print it on the resin printer now, unless it's like I've mm. been working, I've been building these kind of, I have a vegetable garden out the front of my house and the neighbor's cats have been using it as a litter tray. So I've been <laughs> building sort of a netted thing to keep it out and the to connect all the garden canes, I've 3D printed some bits to do it. So obviously you, you'd use an FDM for that because it's, you know, the yeah. build plate on the resin printer is quite small, so it's, it's not going to take a lot of time. But if you wanted to build, a, you know, an army of 20 Alexes, then you'd probably use the resin printer. <laughs> it's going to take a lot Unless less you time. really big ones. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like a really big. The one of me, I can't, hold on, I'm going to see. You're going to have to, if you see me, I'm wearing shorts. I'm doing that thing where you're like business in the top <laughs> and pie in. Hold on. There was it the the mullet outfit i'll see if i can get myself (laughs) so this is uh i don't know if you see it this well but this is me reading my mobile phone with my cup of coffee that is very cool yeah it's different colored on the top because i had some paint left in my uh airbrush and i didn't know what to do with it so i just went (laughs) but um (laughs) Yes, it's really cool that you can do that. And like, is that from Hero Forge? That's from Hero Forge. Yeah. So I used to have an undercut. So just got a little undercut going on. Um, nice. Yeah, and I'm in my sweats and my hoodie because that's all I wear. Um, uh, lockdown essentials. Yeah, lockdown essentials. Yeah. So um, it's really cool that you can do stuff. And like, Ooh. where was this ability five years ago? Like, it's not. Yeah. Uh, it's not a kind of like. So, so does that? So you kind of have to sort of. Is it one of these sort of things where you just get a 
uh, I'm trying to what's there's a, there's a word for it. Wait, just you just start with a base character and then you kind of yeah. go right, just so taller or shorter. Or do you put a, like a three D scan of yourself in? Or... No, no. So you just go in and you go. You pick your race. So they've got you know elves and humans and all okay. manner of things. And, and then you can pick. Too. Yeah, and you can pick your clothing and you can pick you know accessories and stuff like that. So this was just basically one of their humans, and they have a hoodie that you can pick as clothing, and they have trousers and and barefoot because I hate wearing shoes. And um, and yeah, you just design it, and this kind of works. And the one of my friend Brian worked because he's a bald man with a beard. So I mean, that's like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wait. You're not Brian. I thought I've been on this call with Brian. Um, we all look the same. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, and like this is so cool that you can do that. Like if you forgot someone's birthday, you know, give it sort of an afternoon, and you could make a model of them and get which is. Like that's so that's cool. Awesome, yeah. Yeah. I need to be paid by Hero Forge. This is uh <laughs> tell, tell so many people about this website. But it's a lot of fun and you know, when I'm like DMing and stuff, it's fun to obviously let people go in and design their own models and design oh, their own characters. Course, yeah. yeah. So we're gonna be doing one soon and I was like, Yeah, design your character and then I'll print it and send it to you. So you can have even though we'll be doing it on Zoom, you can still have your little model of yourself and and it actually will look like what you want it to look like instead of being like the standard D and D rogue. Like yeah. maybe your yeah. rogue has an electric guitar. <laughs> so, Surely uh, a bard. Well, maybe the bard wants to wear a hood. We don't know these yeah. things. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, yes, yeah, so this is this is stuff. And yeah, that's just resin printed. And I think it took I think it took like an hour and twenty minutes to resin print. Nice. Which is nothing. Yeah. yeah. I've got a, like a, ooh, this is a Pikachu. This is the small. <laughs> I love that model. <laughs> um, but this is like, uh, this resin printed, I think in, in an hour and 50 minutes. And the comparison on an FDM was uh, 15 hours. Yeah. So everyone, everyone should get, um, everyone should get resin printers. Well, so this is the problem. It is my my office to to my right is four FDM printers mm. and a server and some other crap. And then to my left is my newly I shifted my laser out the way, giving that away to a friend at Maker Central and one of my other three D printers and some another friend cardboard tubes and some cardboard <laughs> tubes. Hopefully, we can make it soap. I think. Um, <laughs> But this whole area now is is my new sort of electronics Raspberry Pi type station because nice. I haven't like previously I've basically kind of gone oh, uh, um, there's no way to do anything I'll put it back in the shelf I'll do yeah. a different project so the, the plan the regu is to have regular watches will notice that there isn't a screen behind your uh, yes right shoulder. exactly for well, for several months there was it. there was a screen here mm. from when I was fixing someone's machine. Um, and that now is sat there ready for the Pi 400 to go on to. I love um, the 400 so much. Oh my it's god, it's such a fabulous thing! <laughs> it's just, I've spent the last however many years with like a Raspberry Pi, and then it's something else, and there's another wire and whatever. And the 400 is just under, yeah, just pull it out and it's there. And it's, yeah, it's such a cool device. I think I always say that the Raspberry Pi can. can be quite intimidating to to the uninitiated yeah. who don't really know what it is um and so when we kind of show like when we make uh banners on like a twitter banner or something else it's like make sure you put the 400 on there because it's the only thing that looks like a computer <laughs> well the, 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 that is absolutely <laughs> it. i'm glad you brought that up because the the 400 and the badger are i i, I know the, the badger is pimeroni it's not you guys specifically mm. but those two things have been the, the the biggest driving force for me actually doing things with the Raspberry yeah. Pis, other than just buying them and then getting my more techy nerdy friends to do stuff for them, yeah. me with them. Words they're tricky, um, but like the, the Pi four hundred um, with the dual video outs and everything, yeah. I, I've got a plan to try and get that set up for work so that we can get it running for um remote access with yeah. you know booting up with vpn boot in using a, a dual screen rdp client perfect perfect use case for uh hybrid work environments yeah it's it's, it's amazing like it's it's just 
I can't really, we kind of talk about, um, I'll be in the office and I'm like, I know they're all our children, but 400 and, yeah. and Eben will be like 400. <laughs> we just go like, yes, it's, it's 400. Like there's something really special about it. Like zero is awesome. You know, the iterations of all the, the, the main course, boards yeah. kind of are great, but 400 has that, it has that nostalgic feel. Um, it has that major kind of accessibility feel that the others didn't have as much. Um, Absolutely. Uh, you know, it's, it was like, it's, I mean, this year's the 40th anniversary of the Spectrum. Yeah, it was the other. I think was it was that Spectrum. Sat- was it? So it, 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 I mean, it's almost like it's the it's the it's the Spectrum of today. Yeah, definitely. And it, it's a good tagline. The Spectrum of today. <laughs> um, yeah, it's just such a. In fact, uh, if you enter the raffle at Maker Central, you can win a 400. Um, because I sent one over to Nick to put in the raffle. Um, but yeah, I just, I love it. I love it. And that's from me who like, you know, I don't code a lot, mm. but when I'm doing but things that's like, the thing, you can plug it in, you can just yeah. use it. Just pl- you just it's... plug it in and it's, it's, it's there. And I know, I know that it's no different really from having a keyboard and a Raspberry Pi. Like I know that I know how it's, a 400 works. Yeah. I know what's in it. I know it's just a Raspberry Pi, but it's even tricky my brain into thinking oh this is you know just grab it and go and i make i've made some videos on our youtube channel recently of like when we've updated the os and stuff and that's all done on the 400 and it's just yeah it's just it's just it's It's just magic magic of plug and play isn't it yeah exactly It, it you know i'm i'm a huge console nerd i didn't really grow up i have a gaming pc that i built in a fever dream when I had COVID <laughs> and I have no memory of building this gaming PC, but I came out of COVID and had a gaming PC. Um, but I hardly ever play it because I'm a, I'm a console kid, you know, I'm mm. snares and N64 and everything. And even just the 400 being in a keyboard, it calls to that more than, Oh, Oh dear. It's going to produce a snares. Oh no. Oh, that's so cute. With Yep. With the sweet in baby there. inside. Yeah. Oh man. I have a my Raspberry case is up on the shelf, but it's the TARDIS. <laughs> cool. Well, that's it's a uh, come back towards the mic. It's a um my friend. It's set up uh, as an emulator for him. Yeah. You know, for playing all the old retro games. I see it looks yeah, so good in that case to be a retro computer. Exactly. It had to be done. I really wanted to um, make, I started making it, but, you know, I never finished these projects, but I started making uh, the kind of green pipe from Mario. Yeah. And I designed it all. And the plan was, is that it would have a, a Raspberry Pi in it and a screen in it. And when you turned it on, the screen would come out of the pipe um, and it only has Mario games on it. I have this really, <laughs> I really want to make speaker like, to have the, uh, the the theme tune play when yeah. the screen comes up. Yeah, yeah. So how? But like, I have this real thing where I'd love to make like game specific retro pie builds. Ooh, so like yes. a treasure chest, and it when you play it, it's just Monkey Island. Yeah, like things like that. I think would be really cool. And yeah, I've wanted to to make the Mario one for a while. That's the problem. I started working there and suddenly had a thousand ideas of things I wanted to make, and I ended up making the pasty. <laughs> I, again, I, I, I mean, I, I, so we've touched on already. I think in pre-chat, isn't it? Ideas, I think, are, are easy. I am an sometimes. ideas guy. Yeah, I was like, I'd, I'd love to build. You think about some of the kind of the, the sci-fi from before your time. Yeah, Blake Seven. Mm. Yeah, had this lovely computer, Oric, if I remember correctly. Yeah, and it's just like I'd love to build that and stick something like a Raspberry Pi in it, and so yeah. it will actually kind mm-hmm. of do it. It's good. So you've got the flashing lights, which you know is easy enough to do, but it will also behave like me. Yeah, you know, a, a canine. Yeah, you know, one of the projects on my list there's is to an, build a working canine. But there's have someone who got who got one of the actual canines from the TV show and put a Raspberry Pi in it. Nice. Some kid who found it in a cupboard at Fantastic. his university and was like. Why is this in a cupboard? They were like, oh, we don't know how we ended up with it. And then he retrofitted it with a Raspberry Pi. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> Just found K9 in the cupboard. Um, I, I should yeah. do. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, I mean, I have a, 
somewhere on the shelf is a pit boy um from fallout that i keep meaning to put a raspberry pi in um i saw someone the other day made kit with a raspberry pi and it had like the moving leds and stuff oh yeah. nice last scanner yeah. yeah there's just so much stuff that you can do and i think that that then goes back to when i meet people at events and mm. they're like you know prop makers and stuff and it's like that prop's really cool but what if it did the thing it does in the show yeah 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 it's uh... I, I i grew up kind of you know, you get toys and you know to so get like let me class would be like you get a pair of binoculars so you're like eight years old and you get given this pair of binoculars because it's you know yeah like an, an action man kit but it's it's kind of yeah it's the full size thing you know? so it's not like kind of yeah, the action man figure with the binoculars it's for you to use because they're the action man binoculars mm. you kind of look through them and there'd be like no there's not even at best it'd be a plastic yeah. lens, but there'd be no magnification just you've got these yeah. things to hold into place it's like, which is great for kind of building your imagination, but I kind of, as a kid, I kind of hated that. I wanted, to, why don't they magnify? I, mm -hmm. Throw yeah, it away. That... And, uh, same with tools. Yeah, you, know, you kind of get kid, kids' tools. I know there's a certain age where you, you don't want to give a a, yeah, a working circular saw to a, a two year old to kind of do it, especially the battery driven ones. Yeah, you, it, <laughs> probably not a good idea. But well, clearly, a tractor was a better option. Well, exactly. Yeah, I think it's festival. You know, ideally, follow my two kit. Yeah, <laughs> but it's, it's kind of like you got into tools. It's just like yeah, you know, when my my youngest was eight, because very much into making, yeah. much more than older sibling. It was a case of like, okay, let's get some tools, mm. and it was a case of right like, going around kind of finding tools that will work but are actually then kind of small enough for an eight-year-old to actually use yeah and now you know, she's got a toolbox that will last her forever with tools that will maybe uh, not like last forever but you think, but it's not just like a plastic yeah. thing yeah she's got proper yeah. screwdrivers it's like i mean it's actually kept kind of in the house where most of my tools apart from a few like bits and bobs i keep so in my on my desk mm. but yeah if i like oh i need an adjustable spanner ah right that's the nearest toolbox i just grab your adjustable spanner because you've got a good adjustable spanner and yeah. it's just so much quicker or i just i would just put in a, a pin back into the wall because it came out and it's like so we've got the mm -hmm. pins i don't need to go hunting for a a, a new set of picture hooks I and mean, just literally just right the old one's got to go in you know we a bit of painting or just need to move a picture or something right grab the hammer out of that box because it's a perfectly good hammer yeah i bought my nephew the other day um it was a he just turned four it was his fourth uh birthday like a month ago and for easter i don't buy my niece and nephews eggs i buy i give them cash or i buy them a book or i buy them a toy like of the same sort of value like a fiver and i bought this thing for him that i meant to give him for christmas and then i didn't i meant to give it for his birthday and i didn't and i gave it to him for easter and it was this wooden bus and it had um, different types of screws and the tools to screw them in. So there was oh, like, nice. yeah, like a Phillips head. There was a Allen key. There was a spanner, but it was actual tools. Um, and he was sitting there and he was over the moon, like kind of screwing everything in. My my brother-in-law is a carpenter, so he's, he sees those tools. Yeah. But he has the plastic versions. And I remember like the la last Christmas, but I think the Christmas before he got this plastic ride on digger um as his main present and it needed putting together and my stepdad's like oh i need a i need a screwdriver has anyone got one and he went and got his plastic one out of his plastic toolbox and like brought it to us. that's so sweet so like, oh but now he's got an actual screwdriver and obviously my sister will keep it you know keep hold of it and stuff but when you were going back to those binoculars it reminds i got in home alone 2 uh kevin has the talk boy which he does, does the funny he talks into and it does the yeah. voices and that's all i wanted and i got one my birthday is in january so i end up with a lot of like christmas birthday presents mm. and i got it for one christmas birthday and i was devastated that it didn't have the speed up and slow down function it just recorded and played back and i was like eh, this isn't <laughs> the thing out there. why have you made this and not giving it the functions it's not like this thing existed yeah, cause they, prior they made, to home alone exactly yeah because they made yeah. they they made it for the yeah. film and then made it as a product afterwards didn't they so yeah. you think surely the perfect opportunity to put Why the right not? features in so then we we were talking about this conversation came up like a couple of years ago and we were like well let's get because i don't know where mine's gone now i was like but why don't we get one 
and retrofit it with a Raspberry Pi and give it that functionality. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah. And we couldn't actually find one that someone was willing to give up for us to pull apart. So we we're kind of looking for 3D models and stuff. But it's the idea of like, yeah, you get the thing. And mm -hmm. there's a, there's an age, like, you know, when I was three and I thought I was She-Ra, I was running around with her sword and that was fine. Yeah. Um, but if I'd got that sword at like eight and it didn't turn me into She-Ra, then I probably would have been like, oh, this is a bit. Um, but yeah, the, the talk, boy, talk Boy was the big one. And I talk to people now who had them and they had that same disappointment. Mm -hmm. um, and I think what's even more, more disappointing is I think that they released a Talk Boy in the US that did do it. Ah, uh, yeah. But we didn't. <sighs> I'm still bitter now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it's like 30 years later, and I'm still angry about it. But yeah, but it's nice. It's nice to see. I think I'm so privileged in my in my role is that I get to see all the cool stuff people make, um, without having to necessarily sit on the internet for hours looking for it because people send it to us and they tag us so I can kind of go and see all these cool things that people are making with Raspberry Pis and see s phenomenal things that people are making and and not just kind of props but like for education and and everything else like my favorite my favorite Raspberry Pi project ever there's like two that I really love and one of them is they put cameras on the back of green sea turtles um, and sent them off and so wow. they were seeing what the turtles were seeing because they'd seen changes in their patterns like migration patterns and everything else and they wanted to see what the turtles were seeing and what was the obstacles that the turtles were coming across that were stopping them from going back and mm. forth and so there's these amazing videos just riding on the back of a sea turtle and they're fantastic Dude. This, yeah. yeah, exactly. They're so cool. <laughs> I'm glad you got that reference. Yeah, I do, I do. Um, and yeah, it's just like a Raspberry Zero and a camera on the back of a turtle. Um, and that I just was fan fantastic. And then there's another one which legitimately made me cry the first time I saw it. And it's um, it's called Museum in a Box, and it's basically NFT, not NFT, NFC, <laughs> NFT. Um, but <laughs> the good one, not the bad one. Don't talk about the, uh, but it's essentially um, the people that started it. Uh, one of the things they were doing was uh, scan the world, which I don't know if you've come across, but is basically this movement where they're 3D scanning um, uh, museum objects and things like that. So you yes. can okay. go in and get like a, a, you can print your own Ho Hak and Naya from like the, you know, and everything else. And what they were doing was they had this box with a Raspberry Pi in it and a reader in it. So you'd have this 3D printed, uh, you know, like they did like a 3D printed bust of Virginia Woolf. Um, and when you put it on the box, Virginia Woolf started talking from there's like one recording of her that exists. And you get like a card with it that tells you information. And then she would start talking or like you'd put Hohak and Anaya on it and he would start telling you about his journey um, like when they found him and, and brought him over and all the interesting information. And they built it because back in the day, you would have museum boxes that would be rented out, sent out to schools. Yeah. You know, people awesome. go to schools with these museum boxes and you don't really get that anymore. But museums aren't accessible to everyone. You know, if you're living mm. in some small village on an island off of Scotland, you're not going to get to a museum. And so they made these boxes so that, and like you'd have like, the 3D print of Hohak and Naya, but then you would they would go like this is the the material that he's made out of. So you could like feel it and then you could listen to him tell the stories and and they did one one of the ones they did was called the planets and it was just this box and when you opened it up was these little wooden balls. Um and when you put it onto the machine it played like the symphony orchestra playing all of the different planets. And it just blew me away and I literally started oh, crying. Man. I couldn't stop it. I'd, I'd seen it on the internet and I messaged George. Um, uh, she's one of the people that was that kind of founded it. I messaged her and said, can I come and see you? Can I come and meet you? Um, and I went to London and she was like, do you want to see the planet? So I was like, I don't know if I'm prepared for this. And I just put it on and was like, ah! um, <laughs> it was the most bizarre experience in the world. And it was fascinating. And just seeing that, and they use the pie because it's cheap and accessible. So yeah. they can make mm -hmm. these kits and schools can buy them and, and they can record as well. So they did one where like, 
you could send it to some kids in a in a primary school in Cambridge and they can take photos and they can record their own messages and then that box can be sent to some kids in a school somewhere else and wow. then they can learn about the things and, and it's just it's just so fascinating and I absolutely love it and um and yeah I get to see stuff like that and that's just it blows my mind that I get paid to see the cool things that people are making and mm. kind of experience them and, and write about them and, and everything else it's really cool so it's very cool indeed it is really yeah. cool and like yeah so i may not know how to code a raspberry pi but i can tell you about them but we we need that we need that we we need uh, we need it all we we need you know the raspberry pi foundation to make these cheap machines that allow education to allow innovation to allow research to yeah, uh, I mean, you know, to enable these things to happen but perhaps couldn't happen years ago because yeah. it suddenly you know, it's bringing you know a, a computer on a board that you can hold in the palm of your hand that can do some really advanced stuff cheaply well, it's, and easily it's, it's like um this the Astro Pi mm. that's on the International Space Station. I mean, they've yeah. just put new ones up there now. But in my first, oh my gosh, I don't think I'd even been at Raspberry Pi for a year at that point. Um, and they were doing something and they needed some, uh, some blue filters laser cut. And I was like, well, I've never used a laser cut before, but we'll figure it out. And I went to Cambridge Makespace and, and spoke to one of the people there and we cut some some filters and then they sent them to the international space station oh, wow. <laughs> it's like what and they kind of fit on the back here that's where the camera was and stuff and it's all like it's just it's that maker it's the maker community again yeah. right it's like yeah. it's not just people coding raspberry pis it's people putting it's, it's solving printing. problems isn't it I yeah think that's, that's the crux of it because we could have paid a company to cut that and that would have cost who knows how much or you go down your local make space and you find someone who knows how to use laser cutters and you promise them a cup of tea <laughs> <laughs> and yeah and the next thing your thing's on the iss which is really cool that is super cool yeah like my first, when i started we went and sent off some hab balloons like we went and sent them up into near space like rise pies up mm. into near space um I think that was maybe my fourth month there or something. Like, do you want to go and set off? It was like, yes. I saw this on Boopy <laughs> <Peter> once. <laughs> um, and then it landed in a rifle range and we got locked in and the Ministry of Defence had to come and save us. But that's not the point. <laughs> um, <laughs> that's like a story for another day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we got like proper locked in because it landed in some trees in, a, in an RF rifle range or something. <laughs> <laughs> and then when we got to leave our car had been locked in and we had to like call some special number like call this number but please forget this number once you've called it <laughs> and, uh, and yeah that was a lot of fun yeah all that stuff it's so interesting and it's just so accessible you know mm. I mean people shouldn't go and set have you know balloons off in their garden without the proper permissions but they can do it more than they could 10 years ago which is awesome yeah, I mean, that, that progression of technology is just ridiculous. I mean, I remember getting into the IT industry 20 years ago now um, and just seeing that progression, you know, it's all the Moore's Law and all the other kind of surrounding tangential stuff to it. But just that, that rate of progression from just a, a physical technology point mm -hmm. is ridiculous in itself. But then the rate of innovation splaying off from that is just astounding. You yes. know, the fact that you've got, I mean, even just taking the, the first gen pie versus the four. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, time frame between when they, you know, were available on, on the shelves. Mm -hmm. Or, I mean, I, I remember we were trying to pre-order the original Pi uh, between RS and um, Farnell. 
Farnell, Farnell yeah. thank you. Yeah, it's just CPC, but it's not that it's Farnell. Isn't it? <laughs> but um, yeah, trying to you know jumping in the queues, trying to see which one we could yeah. actually get a pre-order in, and you know, like I remember that that kind of initial buzz of like, oh my god, this is it's it's got HDMI output and it's got uh, composite video out. I, I was like, really, really cool on a thing that's the size of a credit card. And now it's like, oh yeah, it's it's got uh, you know twenty four K video outputs. Yeah, I mean, I Sorry, I. <laughs> Being in Cambridge, it's kind of our baby. And so when they kind of when they launched it, I remember seeing it on the on the news, on the local news, in the local newspaper and stuff like this cool thing is being launched and it's it's made in Cambridge. And I at that point was working in a phone shop. I didn't really know anything about it, but I remember seeing it and being like, that sounds really cool. Um, yeah. I have no idea what it does, but they're saying it's cool and I believe them. Um, and then, yeah, and then over the years, I kind of, you'd see more about it in the paper and you'd hear more about it, it's doing really well. And I was like, I'd really like to work for them, but I can't because I'm not an engineer. That's mm. what I tell myself. Like, I can't, I'm not an engineer. I can't do it. Um, and then I was working a part, uh, I was working a job as a temp, um, building the website for a local car dealership. And um, there was another temp there with me and she went off to work for the temp agency and she goes, uh, oh, there's this job going at Raspberry Pi. I think you should apply for it. It's for a social media person. Um, and I was like, OK, like I'll, I'll apply. I'll send them my CV. And the a couple of days before I'd made this joke CV um, and put it on my Facebook. And it was a real kind of stupid one page. Um, it had like Alex facts. Uh, I didn't really write about every individual job instead it was like between this year and this year i mainly sold mobile phones and i'll never do that again and it was kind of there was a recipe for a cocktail a gin cocktail there was an anecdote about the time i met paul rudd like it was stupid and and i said to to lizzie i was like oh, i'll send them my cv and she went no i'll send them the thing you put on facebook and i was like really and she was like yeah i'm send them that and her boss was like, oh, you really have to send an actual CV. So she went, fine, we'll send both. So she sent this mm. stupid thing I've made. Um, and I got the interview. And that's what got their attention. They didn't care about the other CV. They cared about this yeah. stupid thing I'd made because yeah. they'd been so busy looking for like a, a marketing graduate or some a communications graduate that they forgot about the theatre graduate. <laughs> and uh, And yeah, and I kind of just, they offered me the job on the spot like on the day they were like do you want to work for us and i was like yes please um (laughs) and yeah i just made this my stupid stupid cv um i think at one point like it looked really pretty because i'd learned how to do stuff with text in illustrator and i even put like alex fact number five like i love youtube it's how i learned how to make this stupid yeah yeah it was so great it was so great and that's kind of the idea that sounds like it's conveyed more personality than yeah anything else it's like that job where they say like dress what is it they told me dress for the I job you want job I want and now I'm in yeah. the HR department dressed as Batman. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but like and it goes back to the idea of like you can't be what you can't see because I was mm. so convinced that the only people that would work for Raspberry Pi were engineers that I forgot that they need other people. Yeah. <laughs> like you yeah. can't just have a room full of engineers and hope that anything's going to happen because nothing is going to happen. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> um, so, yeah, so that was really like that kind of, because I always said to people, like, they'd be like, oh, I really want this job. I haven't got the skills. Like, well, you've probably got the skill set. It's transferable. Like, if you've worked yeah. in an office, you you know, if you've done money handling, then you're responsible. So you can be responsible for keys and you can be responsible for, you know, yeah. talking to clients and stuff. Um yeah, so I was, but yeah, it was that whole, like, I just didn't think. And I grew up with my dad as an engineer. And I, like, I grew up not thinking I could be an engineer because my dad was one and it was only men in his office. Mm. Like, my dad but made. Do, do you cool think, stuff. do you think if you maybe had, as a, as a young person in school, if you'd had some role models that, for example, you know, she's, if she's I had Ruth, chat now, but if you had yeah. Ruth as, yeah. a, as a direct yeah. role model when mm-hmm. you were 13, 14 years old, yeah. possibly even younger, do you think maybe you might have gone into engineering? Is that a career that you might have wanted Definitely. to take? 
like my dad he you know ran a business and they made cool things if you've ever seen terminator when he knocks on the door and he's like are you sarah connor and like does the like red laser on her head like my dad mm-hmm. made that laser and sent it to them like they were working oh, wow. in this really they would make cool. really cool stuff and um and i would go to his office and it would just be all the men and the only woman would be on reception answering the phones yeah. And I was very privileged at a young age. I went to Montessori. I went to private school till I was um, nine. Um, You know, I had a very good education, a class of like eight kids. So we got, you know, we did really well. Uh, And I was smart. I was so clever. And I say that now because it's it's stopped when I changed schools. Um, But at that point, at like seven years old, I look back at you always wrote like diaries on like a Monday of what you did over the weekend and stuff and what you wanted to be. And I look back at that now and for some reason I wanted to be a vet and I don't know why I wanted to be a vet because animals are great, but it wasn't like that was my passion. Mm. But I think back on it now and I'm think the only person I knew who was a vet at the time was a woman. And it was so, the most attainable kind of profession. Yeah. It's like that's to, someone in a grown up yeah. job. And they're a woman. But and I look back at it now and I, I kind of think, yeah, if there'd been someone, mm. if there had been a female engineer that I could have looked up to, who I could have had a conversation with, it's not even enough really sometimes to see them on TV, to have an actual conversation with someone, um, it would have changed everything. Like I yeah, I would have focused more um I changed schools and they put me in the wrong year by accident and I did everything twice and it was rubbish. So like I just stopped paying attention at school from like the age of like 11, mm. um, which is why I have a drama degree. But um, <laughs> did you not pay attention in school? You should try theatre. Um, but yeah, if I'd had, if I'd had some, oh my God, I would have at least tried. And I kind of think of like where my life would be now had I had those role models. Um, and yeah, and it's so easy to, The whole, I remember, like you just said, when you were watching Doctor Who and you've just gone on to like Peter Davison and I have an issue with him. And my issue with him was that when they said that Jodie Whittaker was going to be the new Doctor, he was upset because boys were losing a role model. And I got so angry because where is the equivalent of Doctor Who already as a, a female actor? Like Absolutely. boys have all the role models already. And yeah. as girls, a lot of the time we've had to find role models in men because oh. we haven't had women to be our role models or we've just not followed the thing. Like I remember this video of this girl crying. She was so happy because the doctor was a girl. She was weeping. And my sister is a primary school teacher and she went and watched Wonder Woman and she cried at Wonder Woman because there was this female superhero that girls could look up to yeah and and yeah representation matters doesn't it oh it matters so much and i always say i did like a twitter thread recently when i was kind of talking about representation and the importance of representation um and i'll kind of say like if you don't think representation matters it's because you're already represented absolutely and and you'll find majority of the time when you're talking about representation the people that are arguing about it are white men Mm-hmm. Because they're massively they overrepresented. Have the representation, yeah. and they then have the nerve to get angry when Doctor Who is a woman. Yeah, because well, I mean, they'll, I... they'll, they'll, in one argument, they'll say gender doesn't matter. Role models can be men or women, and then when you make one of them a woman, they say, "But now the boys don't have a role model." Yeah, well, <laughs> like, it, we're so women? not used to like as you know as white dudes with beards. You know, we, we are hugely overrepresented. And we're not used to that, like particularly in the maker community, being... particularly in the engi- world of engineering yeah. and yeah. science. There's, we, we're um... not used to that, like and not being represented. So when yeah. when there is something like that, you know, it, it is that you know we, we we act like spoiled children because we don't know how to not be represented. So there's... when oh sorry, okay. yeah, no, yeah, no, 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 there was there's there's a thing where there's um, and I feel bad when I say like white dudes because it's not every white (laughs) but like there's this there's 
there, there's this um this this common thing where it's the assumption that um everything that's made is for the white dude which yeah. is why you then go on rotten tomatoes and you read the reviews of uh disney's turning red that came out a few months ago which is basically teenage girls in the 2000s and it's kind of a metaphor for getting a period and it's about loving boy bands and first crushes and you could if you like I watch it and I relate to all of it and I got very excited because it brought back my Backstreet Boy loving years and and it's great and my mum can watch it and she can relate to it both on the as a as having those experiences but also having a daughter that had those experiences yeah and you read the comments and it's men going, oh, I just don't understand it. And it's like, yeah. no, you don't because you, but if you had enough it's empathy, you. you would still enjoy it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like, yeah. what are you lacking that you can, like, firstly, what do you, why do you assume that this Disney movie for kids is for you? Mm-hmm. And secondly, why can't you still enjoy it even if it isn't for you? Because it's still an enjoyable movie. It's still fun. Yeah. Um. And it's really interesting. And that's like, yeah, with the maker industry, like that we can blame the algorithm because it's easy to blame the algorithm. We can say like, well, you know, and they're wonderful guys, but like Bob and Colin Furs and all these people, you know, mm-hmm. their videos, the algorithm loves their videos. But then you have to look at why does the algorithm love their videos? Well, they get loads of views. Well, yep. why, who are they getting loads of views from? And and it's just really interesting because then you've got amazing female makers that are doing really yeah. cool stuff that just aren't getting the views and and they're not getting the views because people aren't watching it yeah and you can look at like i've got i have a friend who is a youtuber and she makes sex ed com- content mm-hmm. but her main viewers are men like 20 something to 40 something and it's like you are watching this for all the wrong reasons and we know they are you're not after the education bit no no you're yeah. not after that yeah and like um yeah you get you know i have friends who make content that are specifically aimed at girls and still their their top views are men and it's just oh it's just so much and then yeah so you just end up with all these cool makers that just don't have the representation they're not getting Absolutely, the algorithms yeah. not pushing them Mm-hmm. So what we need people who the algorithm does push is to push these people. Absolutely. Lift them up. Yeah. We need someone, you know, you need like the, you need Bob and you need Colin Furs and you need everyone else to kind of go, here's some really cool makers that you should watch. Yeah. I, I think that's one of those, specifically Colin Furs has been um, the, obviously the relationship that Colin has with kids in bed stuff. Yeah, you know um, Ruth and Sean, who are, have both been on the show, both absolutely wonderful people and wonderful makers, and the fact that they've got that sort of relationship with Colin, where you know I, I, I have seen him shout them out, mm. and the fact that Colin is doing that, hopefully, hopefully, it gets enough. Uh, enough of a kind of nudge to people at his kind of level of viewership and level of you know subscriber numbers and things like that to to sort of see him as a as a as a gateway to oh maybe i can shine a light on yeah. on these other makers that are not just white dudes with beards yeah i think that you do have one problem in that what we sometimes see is that if a a and it is a female content creator. If their if their content is pushed by someone who has a lot of followers, they'll get the views, they'll get the subscribers, and then the numbers will drop very quickly because you have to really uh, make sure that the people if if you want if you push people to content that's the same as yours but being made by a woman, then they're they're probably going to stay. So, but if they're not, then they're kind of going to go, and then they it, yeah. it kind of messes it around. Um, I suppose I can probably do more harm than good, I suppose. In that yeah, sense. sometimes because then the algorithm will go, oh, why have all these people stopped following, stopped watching? They must be rubbish. Mm. We won't show it to anyone. That's so, where you see kind of high subscriber counts, but low engagement. Yeah, low views. I mean, 
the the maths that you need to look at and it gets more prominent the more subscribers people get is 20 percent. so if you have uh, a million subscribers um your video views are going to be about 20 percent of that um okay. which is really interesting like i th mm. i hate it when brands uh judge whether or not they should do work with someone based on how many subscribers they have um mm. is that subscriber numbers mean very little it's the views that you want to pay attention to and it's not just the course, views yeah. but it's the comments that you want to pay attention to like if someone has a hundred views and 200 comments of a community that love them and they're chatting back and forth you're probably more likely to sell a product to those 100 people absolutely 200 people than you are um yeah. but the, i'm getting on my i'm stuck in my algorithm <laughs> rants oh god i'm doing my <laughs> job bring it um, bring it <laughs> yeah but i think it's i think it's um it's i've just seen someone mention mention making fun um and things like that i mean my just to touch on it very briefly <laughs> very briefly um i my issues with making fun have nothing to do with kids event stuff and i think that's a i think that's a common thing that people are bringing up kids event stuff too quickly but my issue with that is not anything to do with kids event stuff um it's to do with the representation and i think that it's a platform and there should be more and i think that if they have another series, I hope that they will consider that. I think that, you know, it'd be nice if, if they have at least a woman in the lineup and not just women helping, but actually, hey, one yeah. of the presenters is a woman. Yeah. I think that I think that we're in a position now that because people will then go, oh, well, it's woke because you've put a woman. I hate that word. Oh, yeah. we had <laughs> or it'll someone... be the, the, the token woman that they put in there as a... Yeah. It's like we had someone comment on the Raspberry Pi blog the other day because we wrote a project about this. Um, it was a project that used a gerbil. Um, and we don't know the gender of the gerbil. So when we refer to the gerbil, we use they them pronouns. And mm -hmm. someone got angry in the comments that we were woke because we were using pronouns for it. And it was like, but we don't know. I was going to say, have you ever tried to? gender <laughs> gerbil it's not like, easy <laughs> and it's like we used to use they them and it wasn't a problem yeah we used it all the time they them yeah. is a thing that we've always used like oh did you yeah. ask whether or not they enjoyed the movie like yeah. it's yeah. but then it becomes a thing in the media and now suddenly they them is a problem yeah and i think that's the issue we're having now when we have the representation conversation is mm. that it's always been there it's always been an issue now we're talking about it people are like oh no oh why do you have to put women in this and it's like well why can't we like they're we 50 cents of the global population <laughs> yeah we're literally Roughly. half of the world <laughs> yeah in fact there's more of us than there is of you yeah um but yeah so but representation it's just so important and going back yeah i would have been an engineer if i had an engine if i had a roof if i had roof to talk to when i was eight years old <laughs> um it's all ruth's fault <laughs> <laughs> um yeah we need we just need to see more we need to see you know if people are doing collaborations don't go do collaborations with another person that's the same you know same bearded white guys you go do a collaboration yeah. with a cool like female maker or a, a queer maker non-binary maker go absolutely mix it up a little that, bit yeah have that thought process and i maybe we can argue that we don't talk about that enough so people aren't thinking about it you know maybe genuinely that co that wasn't thought about when they were casting making fun maybe it's just like i get my mates and it just so happens that my mates are all bearded white guys like yeah. and and it needed someone on that set to be like have you let's have this representation conversation so that you can understand why it's important so like for me that's something that I, I will talk about at every given opportunity i'll talk about representation because it needs the conversation needs to happen so people can go oh actually yeah i didn't think about it because i'm already represented so i don't think about it i yeah. i think that that's nail on the head there i think that mm. it's that it's not necessarily uh malicious it's no. just complete obliviousness we we, yeah. we don't realize as as white dudes with beards we don't realize just how represented we are how, how over represented we are and we don't yeah. realize that it's a problem 
no and i think yeah. like i've had conversations with some people i'll be like oh what female makers do you watch on youtube and they go oh, i don't i watched this one female maker i didn't really like what she was doing like i like my my bob and my colin and everyone else and my jimmy yeah. and it's like well there are more than one <laughs> and it's and sometimes actually you find that the conversation suddenly like it's like there's some people that believe the only female maker on youtube is laura camp and yeah because she does you know she's done work with and she goes on these panels and stuff like that so people know laura and yeah. and they and before laura the only other one was april yeah there's laura in april <laughs> and that's it yeah. that's it you're not meeting any others and there's so many and there's so many young makers young female makers that are kind of coming into the scene now that hopefully Absolutely. again will change that but i think the big thing that i would just love to see and I, like i said i'll have that conversation more is like have a think if you're a uh, if you're a content creator and you've got 2 million subscribers, is there any harm at the end of your video saying, these are some cool content creators that I've been watching this week that I think you should watch? Mm. Like, it's nothing. Uh, oh, what's that? The biggest problem is that we still collectively say maker and female maker. Absolutely. Yeah. Well There's said. an amazing series of t-shirts yeah. right? it's like guitarist and male guitarist, which I the, love. And they're like you drama. seen the, the, the Twitter... Uh, the Twitter account man who has it all. No, it is absolutely uh, yeah. amazing. It is a glorious parody account where it is. It is just all of that, and it's you know it's things like um, uh, oh you know I, I um, like asking for help, but all everything's reversed. So it's it's things like the usual you know stereotypical post you would see of like. Uh, oh, we're looking for uh, a doctor and a female doctor. Yeah. So it's entirely flipped. So it's it's like oh, um, we're trying to do an interview. We need a doctor and uh, and a male doctor, or we need um, a firefighter and a male firefighter. Yeah. Uh, and it's it, the entire thing. It's just absolutely challenging that gender stereotype, and it's yeah. it's a the, glorious account. That's the thing. If you put a job interview and you said, you know, or like a, we need, we're doing interviewing these people. We need a doctor and a female doctor. People won't question it. You yeah. put out, we need a, a doctor and a male doctor, and they're like, oh, why are you being so woke? <laughs> well, <laughs> like, if, you put, if you put a nurse and a male nurse, again, that seems normal. It's like mm -hmm. not all nurses are women. Not yeah. all, you know, yeah. not all cats are women uh, or female, and not all dogs are male. You know, although that is the the, the kind of the ingrained um, how we you know how we are taught as kids, you know, well, it's they, the same thing that they do that experiment with kids in classrooms, don't they? Where they say like, draw a firefighter, draw a doctor. Draw... They yeah, they yeah. did. There was a specific one where they said like, draw a doctor, draw a firefighter, draw a uh, whatever else, and then they brought those people in, and they were all women, and yeah, they looked pilot. at Mom's how many mums and RAF pilots, if I remember yeah. correctly. Yeah, yeah yeah and then they looked at how many kids are drawn men yeah. um yeah. you know and i think i think part of it as well i had a a conversation with a friend we were talking about the term firefighter um and she she said um oh i say fireman but you know what i mean yeah and i was like you can just say the firefighters call themselves firefighters. It's not the fireman trust. It's the firefighter <laughs> yeah. trust. Like they yeah, themselves exactly. are calling them this. What do they need to do to get you to start saying firefighter instead of fireman? But yeah. it was the very nonchalant sort of like, well, you know what I mean? And yeah. it's like, yeah, but kids don't. Absolutely. You know, they parrot kids... what they hear. Yeah. yeah. Like, and and that's, have... it, these things take, will take generations to, to, to change because it takes people of you know, our kind of age to be kind of raising this as an issue and then other people to kind of listen and go, ah, oh, yeah, maybe I should use yeah. the term firefighter rather than that. I'll try and do that for my children. But you've still got children who are hearing firemen. You've still got people yeah. saying firemen. Yeah. You have to and, sit down and, and have so those And so it just carries on. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, yeah. like you have like, a, maybe you have somebody who's like, yeah, we're going to say firefighter and then Nana and Grandad still say firemen. Yeah. Um, you know, and yeah, it's it's not so it's not even enough to change your your behavior. We have to talk about why that behavior exists and talk about why we're changing it. Um, but then we're constantly hit with this sort of you're being woke, you're a snowflake, mm. you're whatever else. Oh, um, it's so yeah. hard. It's so hard. Yeah. And like, you know, it's if I started a YouTube channel tomorrow, like talking to other kind of 
talking to other women, talking to, you know, queer makers and everything else, the majority of the comments I get would be hate. And yeah. mm. it's unnecessary. Like we're not doing any harm having those conversations, but you get, you get hate. It's, mm. I witness a lot of hate through my job. I see a lot of negativity online because that's where it lives. Um, and it's really hard. It's really hard to, to do it. So it's, it's up to everyone to have these conversations and, and not be afraid to stop people mid conversation when they say something that's like, if you haven't talked to someone, they say, oh yeah. And then, then the fireman turned up and you go, I'm going to stop you. Yeah. <laughs> just to say and hope that people aren't insulted when you do it um i think to, to sort of build on that i think as well the it's a it's a good opportunity to reevaluate the people in your life as well mm. you know if if someone is you know it it is a case of oh firemen oh you know what i mean and you say, yeah. no they they fight fires you know it's, they are firefighters they don't, for the love of god they don't <laughs> They don't mend fires. <laughs> yeah. They yeah. fight fires. It is a more correct term. It is yeah. not, you know, not only from a representation point of view, not only from a, you know, allowing non-men into the space to be able to do the job. Recognizing what they do. Recognizing yeah. what they do gender. for a living. Yeah. yeah. You it's, know, it's, it's, it, you know it's, it's the thespes thing, isn't it? It's the, you know, actors and actresses. Well, they're all yeah. actors. The actors just so i always say actor. actors yeah exactly you know and it's yeah. it's that it doesn't need gender and it's a, it's a job a thing gets done yeah i think there was like so, um, I, was thinking, I find that one, I, I actually I, I i'd make that slip i mean I, I i try to use terms in the way that i particularly if i'm talking to my children that i want them to hear mm-hmm. but i know that that particular one actor and actresses I, I, I often slip with that one. But and then you I catch yourself and explain I catch why myself. You, yeah. And it's it, yes. it's from, from, it's I'm old. It's it's a phrase that yeah, I, I brought up in the seventies and the eighties and you know seventies yeah. and eighties. It's it's a long time ago, but it's not that long ago. But we were pretty awful about things like representation and yeah, you know, how we addressed people and how we talked about things then. But it it was of the time, and I think sometimes, and this is the difficulty. I think sometimes that maybe particularly older people than me sort of struggle with because it's that kind of like, well, it used to be okay, and it's kind of like you have to say to them, well, yeah, you know what, yeah, it was okay, but it was also okay to not drive with your seatbelt on, yeah, and it was okay to drive. Well, it was it was not okay, but it was okay-ish to drive after having a few pints. Yeah, mm. and it was okay to 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 throw queer people in jail and it was okay yeah. to like, there's lots of things that and smoking was do. smoking was recognized yeah. as a, a healthy thing to do and, yeah mm, like asbestos it's... was wonder material yeah. <laughs> snort some asbestos while smoking pregnant like that's the <laughs> exactly. that's the 70s dream um yeah. but yeah it's, it's it's really interesting to kind of like so the actor actress thing is interesting because there are some actresses who have actively said actually i do enjoy being referred to as an actress so yeah that's, that's fine but when they're talking about like uh, award ceremonies, one mm-hmm. of the recent award ceremonies, I can't remember which one it was, it was a theatre one, but it was actor in a male presenting role, actor in a female presenting role. I love that so that's much. That's it. That's it. Because that, it's, yeah, that you just do that. And then it's like, you still have your actressness. You're still being recognised for the gender that you, that you mm-hmm. are. Um, but yeah. it opens up to, to to so much more, and it's um... and not to mention that, like the, you know, if you go to the theatre, mm. you know, towards the end of the year, you go and see something like a pantomime. Oh and gosh, you pantomime! Would, <laughs> but, you know, you would generally have a, a, a female character with a male presenting actor. Yeah, that is yeah. just standard, you know, you and. It, it, a lot of the, you know, the, the kind of the, the woke snowflake stuff is all like, oh, it's only modern stuff. It's only, oh, you know, aut- autism's only relatively new. Now everyone's got it. Oh, ADHD yeah. is only, you know, relatively new. Now everyone's got it. Oh, this whole thing of, you know, gender equality and, all, oh, it's all new. And it's like, no, all this stuff has yeah. been going on and it's been a thing for hundreds of years. It's just now we've got research into it because people are actually being paid to, to look into these problems that people have had for hundreds of years that you've ignored 
and it's been yeah. recognised. Then it's it's the. I mean, for for myself, so yeah, I spent twenty odd years as a, a physics teacher, and I wasn't aware even after my degree. I mean, I I did my degree at Surrey, and at the time I was at Surrey, the of the first three years that I was at Surrey, the head of department was Professor Daphne Jackson, who was the instigator of WISE, Women in Science and Enge Engineering. Amazing woman. Unfortunately, she passed away in, in my third year. But she did amazing work in terms of kind of sort of raising the profile of women and providing that organisation that would provide them with the support and help them to gain kind of the, the recognition that they that rightfully deserved. But even after sort of attending that university, and, and I'm trying to think how many, uh, there were about 30 of us doing my degree in my year, and there were probably half a dozen women, mm. which unfortunately in physics is, is still roughly the, the, the kind of proportions if you look at kind of A-level physics and the like. Yeah, but as I, I said, I'm, I, I love physics as a thing. I, I, I teach it. I, start, I read about physics, and I'm teaching more about physics. And one of the things I try to do with my students was not just give them the stuff that's in the specification, the schemes of work, but actually sort of talk about some of the history of the physics. And if I had, actually, I don't know if I would now, but certainly for, for the significant, probably the last fifteen years of my teaching career. I can't also, if I had the opportunity and the time and the money to do a master's, I would love to do a master's. I, I still would, but there's other things I'd also like to do yeah. in the history of physics and relate that to sort of science communication. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I, I kind of classify myself almost as a science communicator and I'd, I'd love to do more. I'd love to do a master's in science communication. But there's other things that, yeah, I'd love to get more into sort of making and stuff like that as well. But the more I study the kind of history of physics, the more I'm teaching about it, because I want to know more about it, to be able to share with the students and get it right, the more you sort of discover, particularly, for example, in astronomy, mm -hmm. how many women were just making the discoveries and you know, really doing all the work and getting zero credit, not allowed to mm -hmm. get degrees. They'd literally but they'd, you know, yeah. they'd be studying, you know, standard candles yeah and be looking at things and doing the research that would get them yeah nowadays would they be getting a phd or even potentially a nobel prize and they got nothing no recognition it's 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 why you've got good things like um i think the hidden figures movie was really good in the way that it kind of told the story of the you know the previously people didn't really know that story and they're like oh yeah you watch hidden figures and you're like oh that's really interesting look at those you know women of color that were that were so you yeah. know important to the space race yeah but i know people that thought that was a, a fake movie like that was a fake story they're like oh it's just fiction and it's like no <laughs> oh no no they're actually based on real people <laughs> and like and we need more of that and we need more and it's, I think what's sad is that we tend to find, and I see it a lot, like it's always Ada Lovelace. Mm. It's always Alan Turing. And it's like, let's find some other people that we can also talk about. Because so far it looks like there's one gay man and one woman that were responsible for everything. Um, uh, don't, don't forget, yeah, Marie. Can't oh, forget yeah, Marie yeah, Curie. Yeah, yeah, yeah Marie Curie. Everyone just knows Marie Curie. Them, just the three of them. The, um, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we need yeah. to talk more about them, and we need to um, to to celebrate. And you know, we we I see people like when when stuff gets shared, and they're like, "Oh, why are we talking about her?" Like, you know, whatever this. It's like, well, did you did you know about her before you started getting angry about her being on your timeline all the time? Probably not. <laughs> like, you're angry because you're oh, seeing so much about her. <laughs> <laughs> like, did you even know that Ada Lovelace existed? Um, you know, and. Yeah, it's just, it's it's so hard really to even know what to do. Like mm. change needs to happen. We need to make change. Um, and I, what's the best way to go around it? Like what's the best way without constantly being called snowflakes and being told that we're woke and you have to fight through it, but yeah. it can get hard. And then it almost feels like we're putting people up for sacrifice 
to for mm -hmm. the greater good of like, well, you keep doing that. And I know you're getting death threats and I know that the trolls are coming after you, the comments, but you're doing good. So keep at it. And it's just like, yeah. uh, <laughs> how much it's, more it can I do? Wrong, it? Yeah, it's it's you know, it's it's an awful lot. Like um, I posted something on Reddit the other day and I ended up with three death threats. And I was just explaining a bit of information that already existed. I was like, oh, no, actually, that's, that's not that's... uncharacteristic for Reddit, to be fair. Yeah. You know, I was just like, um, hey, like that thing that you're talking about, actually, that's incorrect. This is the, the you know, mm. the correct information. So I get death threats. I'm like, what? I... It's, just... it's, it's infuriating, uh... isn't it? Because you, you, you think, have we really reached a point where people are so afraid to be wrong, so afraid to not be as informed as they thought they were or so afraid to have made a mistake yeah. you know i mean like like you said before andy you know catching yourself when you say actor and actress you know or getting someone's pronouns wrong or things like that where it's something that you can catch yourself in the moment you can self-correct you can apologize and you can move on with the conversation. Mm -hmm. The moment you become an absolute dick about it, you know, it's like, oh, I'm not calling them that. I, I've known them for this. And, and there's me saying them, <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like, I don't oh, have I, pronouns. I'm sorry, you have no pronouns. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you obviously don't know what a pronoun is for you to stand there and say you don't have pronouns. So why are we having exactly. this conversation? Yeah. But you, you get those people who are just so adamant that they can't possibly be wrong. And you think, how have we, as as a society, in 2022, with infinite access in our in the palm of our hands to all of human knowledge, interaction, history, everything? Yeah. You know, Kevin Bacon's been all over the telly with the whole six degrees of separation and everything. <laughs> there is there is a you know nearly eight billion people on the planet. How have we reached a point? Where the vast majority, the, the the vocal majority of loud, angry, noisy, irritating voices, just happen to be the most overrepresented. Just happen to be the the people who could do hugely beneficial, positive change in the world by like simple little acknowledgements would go such a long way. You know, to go, oh, sorry, you know. Oh, now, yeah, I feel like I'm not allowed to hold a door open for for a woman walking towards the door. But maybe just do it as a matter hold of course. Hold the door open anyway. for anyone. Yeah, yeah. For anyone. Yeah. It's, I had this, I was having a conversation with my therapist about, like, the things I'm passionate about and getting, like, angry and wanting change. And she's like, well, you know, because I was like, I recover all the groups. Like, I'm a woman, I'm queer, and I have a disability. She's like, you can go and talk about all these things. I was like, no, don't make me do it. I want other people <laughs> that are not... I want the straight people to, like, back me up. I want people that don't have a disability. Like, why do I have to put myself up, like, for slaughter because I have these things? Yeah, it's, it's, it shouldn't it's, fall just... No. to those people it should be something you know collective effort of yeah but i think what's interesting so when you look at science fiction and you know there's this whole thing with science fiction where in the future everyone's bisexual or pansexual and everyone's looking yeah. back on like 2022 going like why were they such bigots but if you notice there's nothing in between there's no science fiction that's created that is tackling those issues right there's nothing showing yeah. how we get to that point and there's this video game called the outer worlds i don't know if either of you played it it's a really amazing video game it's mm. set in the future set in space and everyone's just a bit gay and i had a colleague say to me like isn't that great that like they're having conversations about like uh you know fancying like this female character is talking about how they fancy the other female character and there's no argument about the fact that it's gay and there's this and the other and I said no it's it's rubbish because they we are struggling and it's lovely to see in this fictional future that that's not a problem anymore and you see it in Doctor Who mm. and you see it in in uh, Firefly and you see it in everything right this kind of idea that in the future we don't care about gender and we don't care about sexuality but what how do we get how, there? How do we get there? Yeah. How does that happen that this beautiful future where everything's okay? Like I write, I, I'm, you know, I write stuff and I've been working and writing the same 
goddamn book for about six years. Um, and there's a queer character in that, but even though it's set in the future, I put homophobe in because yeah. what what happens to stop that? And we, I see people like say to me like, oh, you know, it's it's it's. I kind of talk about. I remember when Brexit was happening, and I was kind of saying to to family members that were going to vote in favour of Brexit. I was saying, you do you understand the rights you're taking away from me as a queer woman? What do you mean? And I said, well, there are EU laws in place to protect me as a queer woman. And the moment that we leave the EU, those laws can be stopped. They can be, they can no, no longer yeah. follow those laws. I said, do you, and they're like, oh, but it's fine for you for, for, for gay people now. Like, it's not like it used to be. I'm like, give yeah, me two seconds. things like that. <laughs> yeah, but I was yeah. like, give me two seconds. I will pull up the news and I will find you the the the, the queer people being beaten up in the street, the queer yeah, people being spat happening. on the bus. Like, it's happening. Um, it, it's still there. So it's, I just, yeah, I find it just really interesting. Like, I really hate it when people are okay with gay <laughs> No, it sounds so silly. I hate it when people are okay with gay people um, in the future, <laughs> in the fictional future. I just want one show or one something set in the future where they they just there's i don't know what it is i don't know what it is that i want but i just get really frustrated when everyone's okay with it in the future yeah. but and, and it, interestingly the, the two things spring to mind um that are sort of loosely tackling that almost so not properly but um star trek next generation and demolition man you know two yeah. kind of uh you know a, a utopia and a dystopia um but they they've they've both kind of uh explained progression from you know from where john spartan was in the the like 90s or whatever it was um and tackling you know oh well there was this epidemic and then there was this thing and then there was this war and then there's this and that's how we got to here now because yeah. of these things and then the same thing with next gen with um one of the episodes of q uh you know explaining that like oh well in this year we had this totalitarian regime that was uh completely oppressive and destroyed this and that and the other and then this is how we got past this thing you know it's, it's that kind of like i think you're absolutely right we we need more of that from where we are now to how we yeah. get further forward because we can we can look back at you know where we are now mm -hmm. and how we got to where we are from 50 yeah. years ago yeah or from 100 years ago and how we've tackled other issues like starting to tackle race or starting to tackle slavery you know and i'm using those words there, saying starting to tackle because there's still things that are still a massive issue today yeah and it's still going to be going on for a while but it's things that we've we've made progress with over the last 50 years or 100 years i i would i would say that maybe one of the biggest um uh, things that's helped that progression has been technology like the the Absolutely, ever growing yeah. like accessibility to the internet and everything else but where has technology got left to go like where else do we go with technology where we're at the yeah. point where we're literally selling jpegs for tens of thousands of hundreds of thousands of pounds like where it's does not technology that, web link <laughs> to a jpeg it's not even the yeah, jpeg itself is exactly it? you know, it's... like where where does technology i don't think can help us anymore in fact i think because the internet's still in its infancy compared to so much technology yeah. in the world so much information like the internet is a baby mm -hmm. and we still don't understand how to use it no one understands how to use it because no we haven't been raised to have this level of accessibility to information and we haven't been raised to have this much contact with other people like yeah. we were not raised to have this contact and we have kids that are now growing up, but they're not being taught. Like they're starting to teach more in schools about the internet and stuff, but it's probably going to be like another 40, 50 it's, years. It's, when been we have... taught, it's been taught by people that grew up without yeah, the... <laughs> the internet yeah, or people that grew up with the internet, but it's really early days. Yeah. It's like another we 50, were taught 50 by years. people who grew up without the internet. Yeah. Absolutely. So it kind of like, we're kind of imploding because we have too much access and too much information and we don't know what to do with it. Mm. Um, and so that's really interesting to kind of like, to, to look at that and, and kind of think like, where, where are we going? 
where is technology going to take us? Because now we're getting to the point that we're just doing it for the hell of it. Yeah. And because NFTs, are, I'm sorry, but like. <laughs> totally with you. <laughs> yeah, it's it's just there are better things to spend your money on than a monkey JPEG. And <laughs> it's 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 money. It's another way to basically commit any sort of financial fraud and money laundering and stuff is is mm. NFTs. Um, but we've got to the point now where we've done, we've progressed with technology so much that we're now pissing around with it because <laughs> we yeah. don't know where else to take it. We don't know what else to do yeah. with it. Like we've Elon Musk is making us some robots. Okay. We've got robots <laughs> now, I guess. Like why did, you know, this is, this is like, we're hitting like George Jetson was born last year. Right. So we've got like 40 years until we're in the Jetsons. Um, <laughs> don't know how that's going to take us, but it's just really interesting that, that we, we had no internet and then we had some internet and good things happened. Mm. And now we have too much internet and bad things are starting to happen more because, you know, we're up to there. The... There are bad actors in the world who yeah. know that they can use technology to manipulate information. Yeah. You have people who have agendas, whether that's to try and gain power or money who will go, yeah, let's 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 put a word out there like woke and snowflake to kind of try and you know, yeah. deprecate people who you know, are trying to stand up for you know, equality and representation and you know, that's something they want to stand against, whether they're trying to be kind of you know, the conservative of you know trying to maintain family values, whatever that's supposed to mean, or whether they're trying to push an agenda that's xenophobic or racist but they don't really want to use those phrases i think such some of the stuff that gets pushed is not even getting pushed by people that really care about it it's just pushed to to redirect oh, you know, totally. we see yeah. we see the the current like um laws regarding trans and you kind of think well I, that poor person that's like pushing that law probably actually doesn't really care but they're doing something else so they need to make sure that people have got all their focus on this other thing um one well, could argue that the whole point of brexit was to try and kind of hide the fact that certain members of the financial elite were trying to avoid getting caught for tax evasion yeah on a scale that people don't even understand yeah it's it's so but and then you get to the point where you're like is that really what happened or have I been on the internet too long? <laughs> like, yeah. What is real and what isn't like, what, what am I? It's, it's, it's tough. It's really hard. Like the internet is, oh, the internet. It's, it's, it, it's, it's the pace of progression with it is ridiculous. And I think that that's part of the problem, isn't it? Is the, yeah. like we said before about the, you know, that, that kind of rate of rate of progression from a technology point of view, but then that rate of progression outwards from, that kind of innovation and and what you can do with it you know and, and yeah. as as nerds we are ripe for the picking when someone with another agenda says oh we've got this really cool project would you like some you know sort of opportunities to have your bills paid and get to work on something really fun we're not yeah. quite going to tell you what it's for but if you just write this bit of this or if you just have a play with this oh we'll buy you some toys and you know then you've got groups of nerds playing with technology that are absolutely loving it and then all of a sudden they bad built. things happen yeah it's uh it's weird like look how much time it took us to get from the wheel to the airplane and mm. and then the airplane to the internet just, <laughs> I, I, yeah absolutely <laughs> it's it's uh yeah it's i mean i i think that's why like i i often say like i don't like social media but i i I'm really interested by it. So I don't really do a lot on social media myself. Um, mm. If you look on my Instagram, like I don't actually have that many pictures on there. And I think the last one was probably from about a year ago. Um, and Twitter, I'll post random stuff and have conversations, but it's not constant. And I kind of flit mm. in and out of Twitter. Um, but I find social media fascinating. And um, I was talking to Andy uh, the other day. I used to have a podcast, a very short-lived podcast. Um, and it was kind of a podcast and a Twitter account and everything. And and I just wanted to talk to people about the internet. I wanted to talk to, to content creators about how they use the internet and how they build communities and how 
they kind of manage the spaces they exist in online. I think that's maybe how we go about it is that when you've got people that have built their own communities, um, when you've got content creators that have a community of people that follow them, mm. stop focusing on the bigger picture, focus on those 10,000, 1 million people that pay attention to you and do good. And then that, that good will then spread. Um, yeah, yes. so I think that's, yeah. Otherwise you just get so lost. You get lost in everything. You end up in an argument with someone about Reddit on Reddit about this thing you're not even interested in because you just so happen to know that information or you spent two seconds on Google because <laughs> it was annoying you that you knew they were wrong. And suddenly yeah. you're getting death threats about this thing that you weren't even interested in. So like, <laughs> so I just kind of like stay, I'm going to stay over here in my part of the internet. Um, so there's yeah. a relevant XKCD there. Yeah. Yeah, there is, there is, there's always. It is that kind of, it's the, the big, one of the, you could argue one of the biggest problems with the internet is the anonymity that it provides where people can, it's if, it's you know, if you, if you corrected somebody in the street, you know, if you were in a pub and you corrected someone in a conversation, they're not likely to turn around and give a death threat. Yeah. Not impossible, but it's unlikely. Yeah. yeah, particularly if you kind of, yeah, you can see their face, you can see who they are, you can kind of give a description to the police sort of, yeah. But when there's, there's that, yeah, they're hidden behind the anonymity of a keyboard and a, a random username. Yeah. And it's just like, I think it brings out the worst in some people. It's also the, um, the, the, um, everything's so fast paced on the internet. So you don't yeah. give yourself time to think. So you'll see something and you reply to it instantly. They say that like a, a tweet on average has a life of 12 seconds. So a tweet, someone you follow on Twitter um, is going to move so quickly through your timeline that it has a life of 12 seconds. And mm. so you kind of think like we were working at that speed on social media. You know, we're working at someone's said something. I have to be the first to reply or I have to give my opinion yeah. and I have to do it quick enough. Otherwise, there's going to be too many comments and the person that tweeted is not going to see my tweet because they've been inundated mm -hmm. with notifications. So everything's just so quick. So it isn't just the fact that everyone's anonymous on the Internet, but it's also the fact that um, everyone's just so fast paced and you don't give mm -hmm. yourself time to think. And there's been times where I've kind of gone, oh, I'm really angry and I'm going to write a tweet and I'll write it and I'll put my phone down and I'll move away from it. And then I'll come back to it 10 minutes later. I'm like, it's not worth the time or actually I don't actually feel that way. Yeah. Um, but we don't get enough of that on the internet. Well, I, I think that's absolutely it. That, that, that time to process, I think, you know, too many people are quick to come out with a, a comeback to something mm. without sitting and contemplating the, the, the consequences of that. You know, yeah. I saw a, a thing earlier today with, you know, a quote from Mike Tyson, I think it was saying about, you know, that the problem with today's generation is that the the um far too eager to say things online that you wouldn't say in a pub without getting a punch in the face yeah you know, paraphrasing i can't remember the exact wording but it was it was exactly that of like you know people now will say stuff to people online that if they said in person would get them a smack in the chops yeah it's the equivalent of being in a room and saying something and having 30 people shout the answer back at you straight away like you wouldn't do that if you were in a if you're at a dinner party and someone said something and you had a valid that you wanted to say something back to them but someone else is talking you wait your turn but mm. there is no waiting yeah. your turn on the internet so everything's just and in that time while you're waiting your turn you might go actually what was i about no actually that thing i was going to say is stupid yeah. and you'll you'll stop yourself but that doesn't happen on the internet everyone just goes word vomit as quick as they can onto twitter and mm -hmm. uh yeah and it's it's a lot it's an awful lot and that's what i found when i was talking to people for the podcast was the way that people talk about how they how they interact with their communities and online and and kind of the abuse they get or the comments they get and well you'll find like and it again it goes back to a lot of it goes back to the gender issue right because we'll see let's say um you know uh i'll use jimmy as an example just because like he has a lot of followers but let's say yeah. Jimmy was uh, making something uh, and he was using a, a I don't know, a, a power tool of some sorts mm -hmm. and he made it and it was fine. And people are like, Jimmy, that's amazing. Now, if Jesse did that, she would probably get 80% of her comments of people telling her she's using the tool wrong or she could have done it this way. Um, yeah. 
and you don't see that as much you might have some people saying to jimmy like have you tried it this way but they'll mm -hmm. say it far more respectfully um yeah. because they'll feel like they're talking to someone on the same level as them um and but with jesse they'll say it like a you know like an asshole right and it's yeah. it even comes to the idea of um the they cut you kind of say like when you're when you're talking when you're trying to when you're looking at someone to see if they are an expert in their field, a man needs a GCSE and a woman needs a PhD for them to be seen as yeah. intellectually equal. Um, mm. It's rubbish, but it is, it is yeah. unfortunately a lot of how it is. So, yeah. so even like talking to people about that as well, like talking to people and saying like, yeah, how do you deal with negativity? I, there was a lot more episodes that I, that I kind of, um, recorded but didn't put out um but i got how do you deal with that negativity was a different answer from men than it was from women i can um, well imagine yeah yeah because a lot of the men brushed it off they were just like oh yeah well you know that's the internet whereas the women were like you know what i've actually asked my friends to start moderating my comments for me because i just you know i've spent a month working on this project and i'm so proud of it and i've put it out in the open and someone's come along and trashed it I'd um, imagine a, a sort of a certain aspect of that is attrition as well. You know, it, it's like when we've had discussions and and I before with like other content creator friends of ours, and it, it does seem to be a case of like, you know, uh, male content creator friends of ours who've like, oh yeah, I get the odd comment, yeah, you brush them off, but then yeah. the the non men, it's 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 very much a uh, yeah, it's relentless or, you know, it's, yeah, it's, it's the, like you say, the, the, the tone and the, yeah. you know, it might be that um, someone male gets put up on a pedestal as, uh, well, they're either, you know, a, a peer or an expert. Someone to, yeah, exactly. So it's either, oh, 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 sir, I have, I have an idea. Maybe, maybe you might want to consider doing this this way. Or, yeah. oh, dude, you know, if you tried this, because, you know, when I did that, whereas it, it's almost like anyone who's who's not a peer or an expert is, you know, by default, uh, you yeah, know, yeah. Uh, yeah, exactly that. You know, it's yeah. that like, oh, well, you know, never mind. If you'd have done this or yeah. you should have done this or, or have you tried? So and it's, it's, it's also just that, yeah, it is, and it's like the nature of comments as well, like, uh, a colleague of mine, uh, she went, and I can't for the life of me remember, it's a series, uh, hopefully someone watching will know, it's uh, Hank, the Green Brothers started this YouTube series mm -hmm. and it's educational stuff. And I can't remember. Uh, uh, crash course. Crash course. So she went and did a that, crash that course. Works. She <laughs> Take my <laughs> words and put them in the right order. She uh, presented one of the crash courses and they said to her, don't read the comments. And because yeah. when you look at the crash course that was presented by men, it was lots of, and you've got to remember as well, these videos are aimed at school kids. So that's why they make them. They're part of the curriculum. They follow the curriculum. Um, mm. But the comments on the male presenters were like, oh yeah, I learned about that in school. That's really interesting. Like, oh, did you also know about this thing? It was very like adding to the conversation. Mm. The comments on the, 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 the female presented uh, crash courses were, oh my God, why is she wearing that dress? And, oh, she looks really fat in that. And, oh, why are they using her? Why are they, you know, and it's, it was comments based on nothing to do with the content. And mm. you don't see that as much with, like, Colin Furs. You won't see as many comments that are commenting on the way he looks. The way he looks has nothing to do with what he's building. In fact, he probably shouldn't be wearing a tie if he's <laughs> welding, right? Yeah. When it comes to who or on is a lathe better, and a polyester shirt. Yeah. yeah. Who yeah. is better dressed for the job they're doing is Jesse, not Colin. But for yeah. some reason, <laughs> the fact that Colin's wearing a tie and using, you know, and welding doesn't like no one's commenting on that. Yeah. But you know, you'll you'll see comments on on these female makers that are just about their appearance. Their appearance has nothing nothing to do with what they're present what they're creating um and arguably they, they they often put much more effort in mm -hmm. to do things right or you know the correct way because yeah. they, 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 that, that kind of preemptive dodge in the barrage of 
crap that's going to come their way. Yeah, you know, getting the body position right to lift something instead of just slinging the back out or holding I, the tool correctly. Or I realized the other day that whenever I look for a video or how to use video, I look for mm. women, and I didn't realize I was doing it. But if I like, I bought a new, I bought a router. And I was like, oh, I have no idea. I bought this, but I have no idea how to use it. I'll look for a video. And I found myself scrolling, scrolling, scrolling until I found a female presenter. And I didn't realize I was doing it. But then when I had this realization literally the other day, because there was a conversation on the internet about um, tool safety responsibility with creators, right? Mm -hmm. And and I was like, I know f without, and it's very kind of you know broad assumption, but more than likely, if I look at a how-to video, and not even a how-to video, but just a video of a woman using this tool, they are going to be using it correctly. Mm. But I can't say the same for all the men that are using the tools. Agreed. And it's and part of it is that self-preservation. It's like I have to do everything correctly to mm. lessen the impact of the trolls. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, it's really interesting. And I didn't even realize I was doing it until the other day when I was there was another tool I was using, and I was like, oh, I don't know how to use this. So I'll look it up. Why am I looking like? 30, 40, 50 thumbnails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, for the love of God, where is the women? Um, yeah, it's it's really interesting. They also don't tend to waffle on as much. It's not like a five minute intro. <laughs> it's like, come on, hey, like, you, you can't be three hours, 10 minutes into Maker's Waffle and then start saying about not waffling on. <laughs> yeah, so, sorry. Yeah. If I was looking for a video of how to make waffles. Um, <laughs> But yeah, it's, it's, it's really interesting. And it's actually interesting as well, because I know that the people in your comments, the people that are watching this are open to discussion. So I'm going to assume that the people that are commenting on these videos are not going to start commenting hate at me for what I'm saying. But it is, I find myself nervous saying this stuff because mm. what I'm saying is now out on the internet and I'm waiting yeah. for the hate that I'm going to get back again. Yeah. Um, it's It's, yeah, the internet is scary dark and full of terrors you won't yeah. get that because you haven't watched game of thrones but <laughs> <laughs> right. it's a quote <laughs> no, <you're right>. yeah. <laughs> but yeah you kind of and you you find yourself like watching everything you say preparing mm -hmm. yourself for the worst and you kind of feel like is it worth my time to say these things or should i just step back and not deal with it yeah. or i have to go one extreme to the other i have to do that or i have to you know, stand on a crate in the middle of the square and, and scream to the masses until I get arrested or spat on, um, mm. you know, it's, it's one extreme to the other. Um, and it's the same for any underrepresented group, but we're, I, women aren't an underrepresented group, but I end up referring <laughs> no. to us as an underrepresented group. We're not underrepresented. We're more of the population than men. <laughs> you are the opposite, <laughs> but no, um, yeah, it's, it's really interesting. It's really interesting discussion that's becoming that's happening more and more um yeah i, I think yeah sorry to sort of cut you off there but no that's the... all right i'm used to it <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> i was gonna say low blow but that that is absolutely men the audacity <laughs> of men <laughs> um i forgot i was gonna go with that <laughs> um it sucks to be a woman basically was there's more women than men uh gatekeeping the... that gatekeeping, was what i was gonna say go. yeah but that that whole thing of like the the uh the nerds being phenomenal gatekeepers whether or not we realize we're doing it it's something we are very very well practiced at very well seasoned at yeah. because in you know in the nerds versus jocks thing you know that the jocks are big grizzly brutes that steal the lunch money and beat us up yeah. the only edge we've got is having knowledge that they don't have so you know computers and internet and engineering and science and all these things that are you know high level intellect stuff that the 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 gorilla jocks can't learn because it's above the level of understanding you know that it is that like it, it's it's ripe for being gate kept mm -hmm. gate kept is that words gate kept yeah, okay. but it, yeah. It, it's <laughs> it, it is that perfect opportunity for us to be complete idiots and do that. Whereas mm -hmm. what we should be doing is making things much more accessible for everyone else. 
You know, not, like I know we touched on Star Trek before, or, or I brought it up, but all the the again the you know the the stereotypical white dudes who moan about women who like Star Trek. Mm. It's like it was specifically pitched to women. Yeah, it's Lucia Bo- Lucia Ball's fault. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's literally all her you fault. You are the interlopers as the dudes. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's taking. not for you, but you've t- you've taken it from yeah. the target audience and made it something that you think is now yours. You know, my favorite example of like that sort of thing is Bronies, the guys that are into My Little Pony. Right, My Little Pony was not made for men. No, it was not made for men. But not only have they taken it, they then get really gatekeepy about it. It's like, but it was never for you. Like, why have you? It's it's yeah. yeah it's, it's really... I, I that has become my my phrase in recent time of, of that it's not for you. It's you know, not for talking, you. It, yeah. You mentioned before about the, um, Wonder Woman. Um, when I watched uh, Marvel one, uh, Captain Marvel. Captain, there we go. I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the film, and a friend of mine who we often chat about these kind of movies and they were very like they, they didn't enjoy it and they didn't enjoy it because they didn't appreciate that it isn't for them mm. and I, I was like well I, you know I, I saw it myself as as a dude before I saw it with my wife and daughter and I saw it and I enjoyed it for what it was. And then I watched it with my wife and daughter and I watched their faces, seeing that representation, seeing that powerful superhero on screen with things that they could relate to. Mm. That I, I couldn't. I, I couldn't relate to those. I could only see the bits in it that I could relate to, the things that I could have empathy for the bits that you didn't relate to. Absolutely. And that was the thing. It was, it was recognition of this bit isn't for me, but I can't wait to see my wife say that. Yeah. And that was uh, for me. Someone else is going to love this. Exactly that. And it was, I get to the end of the movie and I was like, what did you think? And they both went, I really enjoyed that. And that made it even more powerful for me as a film as a as a thing that it was it was providing that 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 point of reference that point to to look at and go that was made for me yeah. that isn't made my for eldest had captain marvel as a wallpaper on her laptop for quite a bit of time after that the only problem with captain marvel was that it was gay and they wouldn't let it be gay it's so gay oh yeah and my friend Rowan uh, Ellis did a brilliant video that went very viral on the internet, and it's basically unhinged lesbian rants about Captain Marvel. Um, but it's just like one shot of her just having seen it and then ranting about it. What's so interesting with Captain Marvel is you look at you know the uh, the guy I can't remember the the name are they the the guy that's like in disguise and then they go off and find his family on the spaceship thing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah, the, the scrolls. Yeah. The yeah. scrolls, yeah. The the way that he interacts with his wife, his obviously his wife, there's obviously a child, like the way they interact is the exact same way that Danvers interacts with what's her name and her kid. Yep. It's the same, but they just didn't let her be gay, and it really annoys me so much. <laughs> like I I do really enjoy that movie, like I enjoy it, but my the 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 fact that like you instantly he walks into that room and he sees that partner before him and you know you know that they're that's his wife you know it nothing tells you at no point are you told that that is his partner at no point are you told that is his child Mm -hmm. but we see it and we go oh yeah and then you see it with Carol Tappas and her girlfriend and their child that they raised together and we're not allowed to have that I wonder if there was uh, an aspect of that self-preservation that it is yeah you know Marvel it, can only that... do one certain thing at a time yeah and i think yeah. that you know that that kind of thing of like the the people who will see that and the people who will know they'll know 
Yeah, it's like well, everyone else. It will go over their heads. It's like basically they already knew they were going to upset the the comic book guys by having <laughs> a woman, even though she's been around for so long. They're oh, yeah. already going to upset them. So let's not also make her gay, even though she's so blatantly gay and also very gay. Like she's just a gay character. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So it's just really interesting to kind of see them go like we are, we we're going to already upset people annoyingly we're all going to upset people because we have a woman as the main character so heaven forbid we also make her gay mm -hmm. it's like um i really enjoy the ghostbusters movie with the female ghostbusters i really enjoy that movie and i'm sick and tired of people saying it's it's not that they're women it's just bad writing and i'm like there's lots of things that are bad writing i'm gonna say it the first Ghostbusters and the second book. <laughs> the worst thing to happen to the Ghostbusters franchise is Ghostbusters 2. And <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not for women, it's Ghostbusters, it's Ghostbusters 2. Like, you watch Ghostbusters now and it is, it's sexist, it's racist. Mm -hmm. it's it definitely not, hasn't aged well. It's not aged well. And I've got people saying to me, oh, it's, just, it's not that they're women, it's just the writing's bad. It's like, compared to what? Like it's yeah. still enjoyable. I've I've I know somebody says it's the worst movie ever made. <laughs> not the worst movie any way. It's like there are oh, some it's, no it's not great script. And what's really annoying is you had four very talented SNL actors who could mm -hmm. have probably improvised a much better movie than the movie that was written. <laughs> It's true. But it's still not a bad movie. It's still enjoy as entertainment is enjoyable. And um, I think that that's exactly it, isn't it? Because it, it's, I mean, not only was it not written for us, <laughs> us collectively, as in me and Andy here, um, but it was it, it it's got that kind of flipped on its head parody aspect to it. You know, having. Chris Hemsworth is the is the the ditzy the blonde receptionist. Yeah. yeah, it's that it's that kind of like it is that exact you know mirror of uh, you know mirror in this day and age of what Ghostbusters was then. So my question for you is why you think that that Ghostbusters was not written for you as a man? Because of the nostalgia that we've got for the originals it's 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 written to challenge us so it's not it's it's written for us that we need to see it mm. well i don't think it's written for us as entertainment for us for that reason I, it's written to challenge perception because i obviously grew up with ghostbusters as well and mm. i was like real ghostbusters and everything else and i had the toys and obviously i but I was a kid in the 80s that had, there weren't many female, like we had like She-Ra um, yeah. and, a, and a few others. But like, so we watched Ghostbusters and we just took it as the entertainment that it was. And we played at Ghostbusters and we played the characters and we were just them and it didn't really matter. So when female, I call it female Ghostbusters, because um, <laughs> they went and released another one. So I can't even say it's the newest Ghostbusters. Um, <laughs> but like, I think what's interesting with that, and I'm not like saying you're wrong or anything, but I find it really interesting because like it's it doesn't matter that they're women doing it, and the only reason it matters no, that they're sure. women doing it is because of this ridiculous nostalgia for the first movie. But like it was made for you as a man, as much as it was made for me as a woman who grew up at a similar time. Like it's not like it was written for for women it was written as entertainment for everyone so and it's just interesting like you see like when we go back to like the doctor who thing and peter davidson saying like the boys don't have a role model and stuff and it's like well you were okay with girls having the every, doctor's role models every every TV time program, pretty much yeah is contains role models yeah for, for boys yeah everything mm -hmm. everything and but what i'd like what is interesting is like there are male role models i do have role models who are male you know um and i would hope that there are boys that have like jody whitaker as a role model and lady ghostbusters as a role model and stuff like that like 
it would be nice to get to the point like that, that there's enough equality that we can have male and female role models regardless of our gender. But um, yeah, well, it goes back to that asking, yeah, primary age children. Yeah, what does a what does a pilot look like? Mm. What does an engineer look like? What is what does a we don't want them to all draw women. We want them to draw men and women. Yeah. Like that's the interesting thing, right? Is there's this this um this incorrect narrative that when we talk about representation, we're trying to get rid of men. Mm. When I say to people like we need more women makers, I'm not saying that for every female maker that comes along, a male maker has to leave. There's enough space for everyone. It's not a zero sum <laughs> game. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 It's not like the room only has fifty people in and we have to throw Bob out if we want Laura. <laughs> Like, I'm sorry, Bob, you have to go. Laura's here now. Like, yeah. But it's really interesting that we're still in that phase where... Can we keep Bob? I can think of some others to get rid of. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, I'm not going to say anything. Yeah. No, don't say... Oh, my gosh. The audacity. Um, but no, uh, <laughs> I'm really loving the word audacity recently. It's my new favourite word. It's great um, this program, too. Yeah, it's good. <laughs> I was talking to a Stephanie, we were going to start a podcast, and I said, can it just be about me screwing about the audacity of people? <laughs> the audacity Are you going to do the... Oh. <laughs> My argument being that if women have the audacity, it's usually in retaliation to the audacity of a man. Yeah, but We then don't you, have our own know. audacity. <laughs> we, have, we have retaliation audacity. You're called bossy rather than assertive. You yeah. know, or it's, it's that yeah. like why change <laughs> we, the phrase? It's exactly the same thing. <laughs> why can't we have our own audacity? Um, but yeah, I think, no, I, really... I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say now people need to go and check out the How Does Social podcast for which there are three episodes. The first of which is you talking with Stephanie, yes, me. and I, I because you only told me about me about them the other night, and I've, I've listened to all three, I think it was by mid. Day, the following day I've listened to all three episodes yes. and they're really good listening I'd, I'd love to hear more and I think they're particularly your conversation with you had uh, Stephanie Evan and Caitlin and, and then, uh, Rachel, Rachel from The Tiny Chef yeah. um, who wasn't somebody I was familiar with so that was, that was an interesting one because it was somebody new yeah. I, was, I was familiar with the other three and it, it was it was it was nice to hear. It, it, it was a slightly different take on kind of sort of the maker podcast conversations, which are nearly always about, you know, oh, aren't you doing kind of, you know, wonderful things, blah, blah, blah. And there are some great podcasts out there that kind of talk to people about their work. Um, yeah, I, I, I particularly like at the moment, I quite like. I was looking uh, for the. Um... Oh, yeah, there yeah, I am. Social. <laughs> you can listen to me on Spotify. Or SoundCloud, or wherever you get your podcasts. <laughs> Podcast addict, yeah, that's where I got it from. Um, but yeah, you get some people. If they're um, make our way, they they do conversations with makers, and they they specifically try and talk about projects and approaches to projects, which yeah. I think is nice. But it's, it, I think it's, I think you had a. There's there's a chemistry with how you were talking with Stephanie. I'd, I'd like to hear another podcast. With you yeah, talking, be good. she was she was you very hungover. I was very jet lagged. <laughs> <laughs> um, I actually it was really interesting actually because that was um, we were at Maker Fair, and I'd kind of been I'd been at an event. Um, I'd been at this uh, creative writing event called Ruckus Retreat uh, that was organized by my friends Krish and Rowan, the unhinged lesbian I was just talking about. Um, and uh, and I'd been, it was like a creative writing retreat. And so you go there and you work with other people and you work in like work on your own stuff. And they had like talks and stuff. It was absolutely wonderful. Um, and there was a few people there that were content creators. And what I found was that I, wasn't creating content as myself, but I had a lot of knowledge in the psychology behind a thumbnail and how SEO works and how all these different things work and how to do like clickbait that doesn't annoy people and how to, as my boss says, one of my jobs is shit posting. I'm quite good at shit posting. So I was kind of like <laughs> talking about that to people and and people were really interested by it. And they were kind of messaging me afterwards saying like, oh, can you help me with this thumbnail? Can you help me? Can you give me advice on this and this and this and this? Mm -hmm. And I found myself giving so much of my time to people. I um, I cannot put a price on my time. I am 
unable to so like I help people and they're like how much can I pay you for my help and I'm like no <laughs> oh my god my imposter <laughs> syndrome won't let me give you a price so I found myself like creating um instead of like if someone was asking me a question instead of responding to them I would tweet it so more people got the answer it wasn't just this one mm. conversation going back and forth um this eventually evolved into the discord that you're in andy was this idea of like i keep sharing this information it should be shared on a larger platform with people that will that will use it and can share their own information back so i started doing that and then i thought it'd be maybe nice to have a podcast to go alongside this where i talk to people about how they use the internet how they navigate online how they create their own social spaces which is why I then sat down with Stephanie and we kind of, and that was like, that's back when she was still a Stephanie explains it all. Like she's had a whole rebrand since then, but it was very, um, you know, this was like 2018, 2000. Yeah. 2018, I think. And, uh, and it was just really interesting to have that conversation. And the last thing we spoke about was projects. Projects didn't matter. And mm. same with like talking to Evan and Caitlin, we didn't really talk about the stuff they were making. And when I, talk to Rachel about Tiny Chef and I don't know if anyone here has seen the Tiny Chef show but it's arguably one of the best Instagram accounts in the world um, and Rachel has a wealth of knowledge because she's worked on you know Isle of Dogs and all these other movies she's a fantastic animator um, but yeah just having those conversations with their Stephanie it was definitely the easiest because she was my friend and I knew Evan and Caitlin as well she was my friend they were my friends so I it was and with Rachel, bless her, it was like five o'clock in the morning in Australia and New Zealand at the time. And we'd spoken <laughs> once via a DM. So we didn't know each other, but it still kind of worked well anyway. Yeah, that's but, true. It doesn't come across. No, it, it doesn't come across. Cool. We've never. I have since found out because I still kind of help the tiny chef. I help them with like Discord and stuff like that. And I found out that she doesn't do interviews. And my my podcast <laughs> interview was like the, their social person had no idea it existed. And I was like, oh, yeah, I did a. How do you, she's like, how do you know Rachel? Oh, she was on my podcast. She's like, she was on your what? <laughs> I'm like the one, the one podcast that she's ever been on. But um, the exceptions to the rule. Yeah. So I really like, I just, yeah, I think with the Stephanie, we're definitely trying to figure out if there is something we can do. I think the problem with podcasts is like, there's so many of them. And I. It, it's the thing from 2020. You know, people yeah. kind yeah. of started making sourdough bread and podcasts. Yeah. And Twitch. A load of people on Twitch. Um, so because I've been like I think I mentioned to you that I was talking to Stephanie that I was going to do a Twitch series where I take her on tours of my favourite open world RPGs because I've been playing a lot of Cyberpunk um, 277 nice. recently and I was like oh I should show you Cyberpunk I can introduce you to all my lovers because <laughs> I was telling her about my oh yeah I've just got a new girlfriend in Cyberpunk I've just got a new boyfriend in Cyberpunk and I was like I'll, I'll introduce you if you want so we're kind of talking about like sitting on Twitch and I was just going to take her on a tour of like Fallout and, and uh, yeah, and all those things. And go, yeah, let me introduce you to my imaginary NPC girlfriend. Um, but yeah, so we do want to do something. And I did really enjoy doing that podcast. It just, it wasn't something that I could maintain at the time. Um, mm. It's very hard to do a podcast by yourself. And especially because I prefer yeah. doing it in person. So as Stephanie was in person and... Evan and Caitlin were in person and there is another episode. I can only have so much on SoundCloud. I can only have three episodes up. So there's one out there with my boss, uh, Liz, because she basically built, you know, when Raspberry Pi started, she built the community. Mm. You know, she started with the blog and the Twitter account and everything. So I kind of talked to her about that and how she navigated the internet as like a, a startup, essentially. Um, so that was really interesting. Um, but yeah, I would like to do something. I just need to figure out what it is. I think for me to be able to continue it and do it week after week, I need a something. I need the theme. I need you need a hook. Be. Yeah, I need a hook. Yeah, yeah. and having and somebody, just... having somebody else along the side. I mean, I've, this is yeah. not my first podcast. Makes what for? Um, <laughs> but maintaining his last <laughs> <laughs> having. Um, I have a podcast called Thoughts from the Tinkerage because mm -hmm. my, my YouTube channel is Tales from the Tinkerage. Yeah. Oh, one of my YouTube channels is Tales from the Tinkerage. But I then had Thoughts from the Tinkerage, which is kind of more kind of audio based and it's just, just random thoughts. But actually kind of maintaining momentum on that when life gets in the way is yeah. stupidly difficult. 
Yeah, you need yeah. someone else there to help to go like, I'll do it yeah. this week if you can't and I'll get a guest on or and and that, that's for us, I me mean, for, for Makers Waffle, because we've mm -hmm. been able to talk to people that are yeah, you know, our friends and or people that we want to be friends with. It's like having a conversation in a pub. It's it's not about promotion. It's not about kind of yeah, you know, just oh oh yeah you, when you listen to um often I've cut down a few but I've I've listened to I listen to a lot of podcasts yeah. of all sorts art makers photography uh, and things like you know personal development and business type podcasts and more often than not the number of times you've kind of gone oh this person's promoting their book and oh now they're on the next mm -hmm. podcast with a different person promoting yeah. the same book and it's just like I don't want to hear about this book again, not for the third or fourth time. I could go on a podcast and talk about that book. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. We, yeah. We've had conversations like that before, you know, with various people who've been on and run podcasts and stuff and you hear the same story so many times. Yeah. You know, I mean, the best the best we do is, you know, we promote some random attentions that we've had. And it's usually think, a lot of them. Yeah. I mean, I think the, the thing with – so I, I – um, obviously there, there's times when it doesn't happen but usually Stephanie and I talk once a week and we'll sit on a video call and suddenly it's four hours later and we don't know where time's gone and that's why we were like we should do something with this because that conversation mm -hmm. usually we're talking about things that we've discovered that we find really interesting like I might spend an hour ranting at her about D&D &D, or she might spend you know that time telling me about tarot or something like so we were kind of like this is the stuff we're talking about is interesting to us, but we think that some of the stuff we're talking about would be interesting to other people as well. Um, mm. And we are in a position where we have, you know, amazing friends in creators that we can kind of have to come on and, and, and talk and everything. So yeah, it's just, but like, I don't know if either of you have ever listened to my favorite murder, that podcast, no. but they, it basically is two friends and they each talk about their favorite murder. <laughs> and they've been going for like seven years now or something. But the first sort of 15, of 20 minutes of the podcast is them talking about what they've been to. I've been up to that week. And like recently, George has been watching all of Game of Thrones and they've been talking about that or they went to a show and they talk about it or they're reminded of something. Um, and sometimes that's the most interesting part of the podcast is them <laughs> talking about the stuff they've been up to. And it's really funny and you can relate. And there's another one called um, This Might Get Weird with um memory heart and grace helbig which they're two youtubers there was this time i don't know if you ever saw my drunk kitchen which was this girl hannah hart who would get drunk and cook she's Ring drunk spell. cookery show yeah and there was like there was three of them that were best friends and and two of them are doing this podcast and again they just talk about what they've been up to in the week and the the things they found interesting and i think because i'm one of those people that won't just find something interesting but i'll spend the next three hours on the internet learning more about it but i think that's what that's where it comes from right it's not just me going yeah like i went and saw that movie and it was great i'll be like i went and saw that movie now let me tell you about this <laughs> like go yeah, off th then and, browse the internet for a few hours yeah, and... <laughs> let me tell you about that time when this person did this and oh i got really interested in this new hobby and let me tell you about it and and everything else i'm i'm one of those people that has random pointless facts in my brain mm -hmm. all the time um a friend of mine used to say to me at any point like tell me what you're thinking and i'd be like roller coasters lemon bubble tea uh that <laughs> book i've got on my shelf about agatha christie's interest in chemicals like <laughs> it's just con there's constant stuff there and i just find everything really interesting so i don't know it'd be interesting to to maybe do a couple of episodes and just see if anyone mm. else finds it interesting or if it's just i I, I i would suggest literally kind of you know, record your next conversation yeah cut out any Le bits that you out. Think. <laughs> bleep out or just just cut out the sections you know when you started talking about something that maybe it's too personal oh, or, or yeah. yeah just something yeah. you don't think it's probably best to put out to the world yeah um to see yeah and then just yeah leave all the rest of the you know the, however random however rambling just leave it and put it out yeah, and don't worry yeah. about time limits or anything like that yeah go to uh, yes what over from soundcloud go to anchor there's no time yeah. limits nothing like that it's totally free well i mean i could host my own from a raspberry pi in my office <laughs> <laughs> i mean 
I just put it out. I think I'm speaking for Andy here as well, but you know, I'm I'm thinking me and Andy can might get a week off. Yeah. Take, yeah, you can do make more and Stephanie. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I, I've, I've cut back on a few podcasts. I could do a couple more good podcasts to listen to because yeah. I've cut, cut a few out lately. So, I've cut a few yeah. out. One long one. Yeah, so. My favourite podcast ever is The Secret History of Hollywood. Um, and mm. it's fantastic. And it's like long form, sort of seven or eight episodes talking about a person from Hollywood like golden age Hollywood and the story mm. like it'd be like James Cagney or Alfred Hitchcock there's an incredible one about Audrey Hepburn which is about before she was famous so like before she was actress Audrey Hepburn it's about her time uh, during World War II and it's really interesting um, absolutely fascinating podcast that everyone should listen to um, the secret history of Hollywood it's oh my gosh oh I love it and his voice is just Oh, everything about it. It's so good. It's so good. This is what I do is I rant about things. I, I'll spend another 20 minutes talking about the Secret History of Hollywood podcast. Um, it's just fantastic. It's such a good podcast. Um, and everyone should listen to I, it. I don't think it's that one. I, thought, I did. There was a podcast I listened to a couple of years ago that kind of looked at some of the aspects of Hollywood. This is called storytelling. This is, yeah. Well, this was this this had things like there was, um, there was one about somebody who was involved in Hollywood who basically ran a a brothel out of a a, a petrol station. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, but it was kind of yeah they they they'd make arrangements for whoever, male or female. They yeah. they kind of had arrangements for for anyone and it didn't get closed down for so long because the person who ran it was basically just had the insight on everybody and so it was kind of mm -hmm. and there were so many high level people involved it was kind of like they were just protected it talked about like hedy lamar and yeah. you know the fact that you know she was a, an amazing engineer um and her store and how her how she escaped from europe as well and talked about things like that it, it was it was quite fascinating i have to look out but i can't uh, remember what it was called jesse said there's uh, another good one called you must remember this about the first century of i've heard of that one but i haven't listened to it um yeah see keep adding podcasts more stuff to listen to instead of watching gray's anatomy <laughs> <laughs> i'll tell you what i am on season 17 of gray's there are 18 seasons I am on season 17. It's the last season they have on Disney Plus because the other one's just aired. And in season 17, it's COVID. And they're obviously in a hospital and they, 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 they're they covering COVID being a thing. And I cannot watch it because we've lived through it. I don't yeah. need to watch it. And it's not even that there's anything happy. Like the thing with Grey's Anatomy is they'll have like a really sad storyline, but there's other fun stuff happening to balance it out. But this season yeah. is just covid and nothing but covid and then i found i was complaining about it to a friend and she said that in season 18 they just do away with covid and they put almost like a placard and stuff that's like gray's anatomy is set in a fictional world where covid doesn't exist anymore <laughs> 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 that's, they've just gone oh our viewing figures dropped because unsurprisingly people yeah. in lockdown didn't want to watch a show about covid and uh yeah and so it's so, set in a fictional uh, world not the uk but they just switch it off. <laughs> yeah. We're in the fictional world. Um, yeah, I'm quite impressed. Like I had it back in 2020. I haven't managed to catch it again. So I think some, or maybe I still got it. Maybe it's two years later and I've still got it. That's why I'm caught it yet. <laughs> Explain how I feel. Um, oh my gosh, so tired all the time. Um, but yeah, so mm -hmm. secret history of Hollywood. Going back to that, everyone should listen to it. <laughs> <laughs> so good so good um i can't think of anything else yeah just just record record your ramblings with with stephanie yeah. and just stick it, them out there and we'll listen yeah it'd be us talking about her cats and <laughs> avocado um best way to make whack yeah, yeah. that's uh actually that's our um our friendship is based a lot on avocado um and Stephanie's a really good one, actually. I, I was working at Raspberry Pi and she'd released a project and it was kind of one of the first 
she her first original videos were explainer videos um yeah. on like coding and then she started releasing build videos and it's one of her first ones and i wrote a blog post about it and messaged her same way i messaged bob to make him be my friend but i messaged <laughs> stephanie and just said hey um we've written a blog post and it was only because her email address was there like mm. we've written a blog post and she messaged me back, she said, oh my god that's amazing that's amazing and we kind of emailed a few times and then she emailed me at one point and said hey i'm gonna be in the uk can i come visit you at raspberry pi and i was like yeah sure not a problem so she came to raspberry pi for the day and i took her around cambridge and our friendship was formed for me to later find out that when she said she was going to be in, in england could she come and visit she was actually in europe for work and as soon as i said yeah she bought a ticket <laughs> like she wasn't in england at all she was literally in another country but had been like oh yeah i'll be in england can i come in um yeah and then we've just I've been... never seen the video she made of that yeah 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 when she visited Pi Towers and we've just been like yeah kind of best friends ever since really and it's we go to events together and we keep each other we hold each other accountable quite a lot which is quite good with making That's and good. stuff like that and like I'm usually bullying her about her YouTube thumbnails and making new ones for her and she's kind of bounces ideas I love making I love making YouTube thumbnails um and here's a fat, here's a tip for anyone that's making YouTube videos. Um, you should make three thumbnails and you should have three titles and you should put your first thumbnail and your first title should be aimed at your followers. Um, mm -hmm. So it can be more inside jokey because um, they're the ones that are going to get the notifications. So you can be like, hey, like a follow on joke that everyone's been talking about in the comments so you do that and then after 24 to 48 hours you put out more of a clickbaity title a clickbaity uh thumbnail because at that point the algorithm has seen that people are watching your video mm -hmm. so then you put something out that's going to grab the larger crowd um and then after about two or three weeks you change your thumbnail and your your title again to be more as if you're archiving it you want it to be the most seo friendly it can be yeah, so green, like, evergreen content sort of thing. Yeah, so if I keep using Jessie because I know she's in the comments, but like if Jessie made like a something for the Garys, like in the, like I made the Garys, I know she did one where they had like, they made the poop house for the Garys. But like mm -hmm. with that video, you would know, well, her current subscribers know about the poop house already and they know about yeah. the Garys already. So you would be like, I made a poop house for the Garys. And then the next one would be like, can I build a house for a for a ground squirrel, squirrel type what, thing? Yeah, ground squirrel, yeah. And then the third one would be how to build a house for a, a ground. You know, you 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 make it the last one so SEO friendly, so it kind of lives in the internet forever. When people are searching on Google, they're going to find your video. That's um, a really really awesome tip. That there you go. That's my uh. And also, if you're making your thumbnails, like there is a direction you have to put them in because we as Western uh, readers, we read from left to right. Yeah. So you want to put the most eye-catching thing in the top left-hand corner, which is usually a reaction. If you're using reaction faces, have that reaction face. Uh, if you have to put a brand logo for any reason, you put that in the bottom right-hand corner because no one wants to see that because then you don't look like you can be yeah. unbiased. Um, so if you're having to make, a, if you're making a video for Coca-Cola and you have their logo in it, like you put that in there. If you're making it for Shell. <laughs> If you're making a video about like the, the health of the ocean and you were sponsored by Shell, you would put that logo in the bottom right-hand corner. Um, but, but, but yeah, so you kind of work in the direction that people would view your, unless you have a more Eastern audience that read from right to left and then you would do it the other way. Um, well, so I remember, given that we both did the, the same... Uh, you know, web design with Dreamweaver. But, but yeah, uh, our, our incredible the, Dreamweaver. The whole, yeah. the whole F pattern for, uh, you know, site design and, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. that, that whole psychology of, like you say, exactly that, you know, kind of the, the direction of information. So yeah. I, I didn't even consider that as a, you know, thing for, for thumbnails. But you got to think how really quickly, how quickly um, people scroll through. Like scroll through new videos from like the twenty seconds, the yeah, twelve it's second it's passing, tweet. So you need to yeah. have the information. So if you're going to have text on your thumbnail, you only want two words, one or two words, and you want them big and bold, and you want mm. your text to be accessible. So you have mm. to. People will make a thumbnail on their computer and they'll go, "That's lovely," and they never once shrink it down small enough to see it yeah. on their phone to see what it looks yeah. like. Um, 
And like when you look at the thumbnail on the phone, well, the the timestamp is in the bottom corner, so you got to make sure that's not covered, and and everything yeah. else. Um, but yeah, so that's that's ran. That was just a random. While I'm talking about this, let me tell you about thumbnails. <laughs> but I find all that stuff so interesting. I find it. I know it's really nerdy to find interesting, but I find it really interesting. Like, uh, I mean, you're in the perfect place for it right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's nerd, like nerd city. Yeah. So Jesse's got to redo all that. Uh, I'll help you. <laughs> Just a Gary on every single one, to be honest. Like, people will click for a Gary. But didn't um, you say clickbait only for the uh, first sort of 24 to 48 hours? You know? The first 24 to 48 <laughs> hours, you... Yeah, sorry, yeah. So, yeah, click... <laughs> I put Gary on the third one, so Gary's there yeah. forever. Um, Just Just getting bigger and bigger for each of the yeah. thumbnails. <laughs> The first one would be like the poop house, but it's actual poop with a door in the front. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and a Gary going. And, and a, a Gary approaching it from the. <laughs> <laughs> Poking head yeah. out of the door. Yeah. But it's, I think it's, it's just really interesting. And I think that um, sometimes. Yeah. One from Jesse. So the first one is fan service. The second one is clickbait. The third one is archive. Yeah. It's sorted. And don't be afraid to change your thumbnails load. Like, no one, yeah. it's not really going to. I think some people worry it's going to upset people that, like, but no, just change them, change them. If someone clicks on it and they think they haven't watched it and they realize they've watched it because you changed the thumbnail, they're not going to get angry. They, you've just got another view. <laughs> 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 Thank you very much. I'll have that. Um, yeah. I, th I find that I, I use one tab to keep, keep track rather than using the watch later. I use a Chrome extension called one tab. Okay. So I'll kind of every kind of now and then during the day I'll kind of put my subscription list up, and I'll just kind of open the the various ones I want to look at, and then I'll just save that lot as a, a one tap to go back to when I have a bit more time. And it's, it's interesting sometimes when I go back to my kind of one tap, which might be the same day, it might be a couple of days later, mm. and there'll be a kind of video, and you go, I don't remember, I don't remember that one. Yeah. Um, Oh, it's like Veritasium does that a lot. He kind of sort of changes his titles and his things really quite quickly. Yeah, I think so, it's... Then, then you get other ones. You kind of, you've, you've saved it. You've got it there and you kind of open it up and the, the video's disappeared. It's gone private or just unlisted. And then it's like... They said something video no one meant to say. <laughs> they upset thinking, the what sponsor. was it? What, what, did I, what did I want? What was it I was going to watch? Yeah. Yeah, it's... um. You, you do see a lot, you, especially... You often see it a lot with like edutainers like Veritasium and, and others um, where they do change it up. And I think sometimes, because another really good tool for that as well is to look at your audience retention. So mm. go through and look at your audience retention. All the bumps are people interacting with your video. They might be rewinding, they might be fast forwarding. Um, and if you see a bump and you look at what was on the screen at the time of that bump, that will show what people have gone to look back at. And sometimes you'll see it, if there's a lot of text on the screen, you'll see a bump because someone's gone, oh, I missed all that text, I'll go back and pause. Um, for us at work, a lot of the bumps are product photos. So if we've got a video about a new product, um, we might have it on the screen, we might have the information and you'll see a bump then because someone's uh, rewind. Or if it's just a really nice picture of the product, you'll see a bump because people are going, oh, that was nice. Let me go back and look at it again. Um, so if you go through there and you see what people are looking at, you might go, oh, I've noticed a lot of people are really focusing in on this particular part of my video. So why don't I put that in my thumbnail? And so mm. that's why, again, you might see lots of people change up their thumbnails because they're looking at how people are interacting with their content. Um, yeah. So I think sometimes we spend so much time making uh thumbnails like aesthetically pleasing that we forget that that won't do the job yeah like it's nice for a picture and it might be nice for that final archival picture um but it might it's not the picture that's going to get all the attention um so yeah it's kind of really thinking and honestly the best way is to think how you interact with youtube like how do you, you i scroll i scroll i scroll you know well, i think uh, it, as, as human beings we're, we're... We don't necessarily do introspection particularly well. You know, it's, it's, it's an scary. uncomfortable thing to do. Yeah, mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's, it's not too surprising yeah. that we we sort of forget about that kind of thing. Exactly, but yeah, it's, it's you know, it's it's I that's why I find this stuff really interesting because I think it does. It's it's 
not just a picture that you're making for the internet. There's so much behind it. And mm. SEO is really interesting. It's really interesting how people interact with the internet. Like, think what you would type in as a question to YouTube. Like, there's yeah. no point if you've made like this really fantastic thing and you're too specific in your title, no one's going to find it because they're searching yeah. for the more broader term for it. Um, I think there's there's a certain aspect of that where like, I, I know from how I Google things with with my knowledge of search and that kind of function, I, I know that I tend to Google things very differently to mm -hmm. my parents or my wife or my daughter, you know, so I, I quite often find I'll ask them to search for something to find yeah. out how people are searching because you know they, they will put in how do you do this and yeah. they'll type that in and like i know that those words are irrelevant for a search term and i'll, I'll often find something like quicker than them by kind of you know shortcutting what words are like actor to batman be. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah what was the name of the actor that played batman in the it's like no it's actor batman will get you all you want absolutely you know <laughs> yeah. I, I think it I mean, it's a, it's self awareness, isn't it? You know, mm. knowing your privilege, knowing what you, knowing that you know, I've got twenty years in IT, so I've got a shortcut to know how I would find something, but it's not necessarily how someone else would find it. Yeah, you see it a lot as well. Like I've been writing some tutorials recently for for work on our website. We've got like a new section of the website. We've got some tutorials we put out, and I'm writing more. And I wrote this tutorial, and then gave it to my colleague who has minimal knowledge of raspberry pis and how they work and has never mm. really done a project aside from retro pi and she went read that do you understand it and she went through and google and went i don't know what this means i don't know what this word means i had to google what this word means i'm mm. confused how have i got to this point and for me i wrote it and i'm like oh yeah you do this and this and this and like i wrote like the word peripheral and she was like i know what that word means but i don't think everyone would know what that means maybe you just need to put keyboard and mouse yeah and and things like that and i think that like when I try and talk about things online, I try to write it as if I'm telling my mum about it. Like Some try to really, explain really it to my mum. Yeah. yeah. How would you explain it to your mum is like the, the best way for when you write tutorials? Because no it, one's going to... Rubber ducking, isn't it? It's, that's the, the, the phrase that coders use. You know, if you, can you explain it to a rubber duck? Yeah. You know, no one's going to of... complain that your tutorial's too easy. Like if they're smart... They yeah. either already know how to do it, so they're not interested in your tutorial about setting up a NAS, right? Mm. Or they're going to be able to skip through. Yeah. But someone who's brand new to it needs that step by step. And no one's going to complain, oh, this had too many steps. No one's going to make that complaint. No. They're just going to uh, use it. Uh, having a clear that... progression of, of mm. or evolution of, of knowledge and understanding is so key. And it, it's something I used to find in teaching one of the the biggest issues often in a classroom is that students boys more so than girls don't want to put their hand up and go what does mm. that word mean that you just said yeah. and kind of having that kind of understanding as a, as a teacher to be able to kind of go i'm going to use a word that some of you may not know therefore mm. i need to make sure that i make sure that everyone understands that word so I'll yeah. Yeah, if there's a, a word that they need to know, I'll introduce that to the point prior to the needing to use it. Or if I'm using it for the first time in a context that is maybe different, then again, I'll make sure that they understand exactly what that word means. Or maybe exp use the word, then define the word or define the word, mm. then kind of give. And we can summarize that in one word and we use that word is. Yeah. Because it can be sometimes just as simple as one word could mean that a student will sit for 55 minutes out of a lesson, not knowing what to do, thinking yeah. that they, they can't cope with something, even though actually they can. They just I've have definitely been that blockage. student. Yeah, Same. I'm just like, I have no idea what's happening in this lesson and I've beyond the point where I can ask anymore. Um, yeah, it's, it's interesting because I think definitely like in, in, um, in written tutorials, you want all of those steps. I wouldn't say it's the same for video, but then with video, mm. you can show as much as you can tell. You can do like two things at once. Sometimes I find that tutorial videos just take forever and I'm like, oh, 
like you, yeah you skip you skip through the video yeah, you like, see something that looks vaguely recognizable yeah like speed this bit up i don't need to see you sawing this entire piece of wood you've started sawing it i know you're going to saw it show me the end where you saw it um yeah. then there's that difference in types of videos isn't it you've got you 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 so if we think about the maker mm. movement we've got those videos that are right i'm going to show you how to build a nas yeah. step by step using a raspberry pi and some yeah. spare hard drives everything you need to know is in this so essentially it's almost like a blog post a tutorial but just in video format yeah then you get those who kind of yeah or and that can be also things like yeah here's a here's five tips on how to use a, a, a combination square or how to this is the correct way to use a handsaw mm -hmm. it, it doesn't matter what it is but it, it's very much it is purely educational then on the other extreme well you've that or in between then you've got people going to go i've made this thing watch me yeah and you, might learn some, you might you some learn some things along the way watch yeah make it. Yeah, but she will also it. explain things along the way, or she'll yeah. show certain things so that you kind of go, "Ah, that's a really useful tip." Or like ah, <laughs> having that. Yeah, I was about to say like the glue dry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But, yeah. Was, <laughs> uh, but then you also get those that it's kind of it's it's almost pure entertainment, mm -hmm. and uh, it's kind of almost like there are a few woodworking channels that are. I came across one the other week it was a female maker who as far as i could see was probably an able woodworker but their woodworking abilities were probably over enhanced by the fact that they were doing so in yoga shorts and a sports bra i know with plenty yeah. of cleavage and there was certainly no educational element to it and i suspect a significant portion of the audience were probably watching it for entertainment purposes rather than let's learn how to or follow this project mm. and and then there's those people who just kind of go listen i'm going to do an asmr video i'm going to build this project there's going to be just some nice gentle music or so or just the gentle sound reduce volume or reduce loudness not volume because that's three-dimensional space but <laughs> the <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, sorry, it's a, it's a, it's a that thing. was a twitch there. Yeah. That was like a yeah. <laughs> but you've kind of got yeah, you've got that classic. It's just it's purely entertainment. It, it's it's yeah. it's pure. It's just you stick it on on a big TV. Sounds just nice. It's just yeah. You know, it's well lit. It's just it's the sound of a handsaw going through woods. Anyway. This is what I would love is that if YouTube allowed you to do commentary on your videos. So you could have that really beautiful ASMR video of someone making a table. And then if you wanted to, you could listen to the creator Just telling you about it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So you had the like multi -lay audio layers. But without having to have three, two or three videos. Yeah. Because there's a really nice YouTube uh, channel that I watch where he does a lot of food and he'll do one that a purely beautiful ASMR type video and then he'll do the same video again but he's talking over it and telling you what he's doing so he's like two videos and I mm. kind of think that's kind of cool because he's marketing himself to two different audiences like I always watch the ones that where he's commenting which is hilarious because he is uh, not speaking English and I'm reading subtitles um, <laughs> so, but I actually find the sound of him talking just really like warm it adds to the the feel of it I don't really like ASMR but I like listening to him talk. Um, mm. And uh, so he has the two videos that he produces, but it would be really nice that he could have all of those views on one video because there is an on-off for a commentary. And and you, you've brought that up perfectly, the, saying that the subtitles, you know, you can turn captions on and off, so why can't you turn, you know... Turn the audio, audio narration on, like, yeah. a second audio track on and off yeah, yeah it'd be great because i think like i think i was talking to laura camp about it because like it'd be really nice for laura she does those videos if she could mm. have an audio track which is her talking about what she's doing that you can listen to if you want and then if she wanted to she could do another one in german yeah yeah you know cater to, to a, all the a, audience. a meal the practical engineer he mm. made a decision about three years ago four years ago to stop doing his videos in english and to change over to doing them in his native Dutch. Interesting. And his videos are fantastic. 
but uh, if he had that facility, I, it, yes, it's ex a little bit of extra work. Yeah. But to have that facility to put, I mean, he he took a decision to kind of go. I'm just going to aim for my Dutch audience, and he has mm. done very very well. He produced some great content. Mm. He's I, gone viral so many times. For yeah, I, I wonder would he do even better if he had kept with English? I don't know. Would he do even better if he had English and Dutch to get that sort of twin market? I don't. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not a, a social media expert. But it's yeah. It's, it's it was an interesting decision that he made in order to kind of go. Yeah, I'm. I'm Dutch. I'm. I'm proud to be Dutch. Mm -hmm. It's a lot easier for me to do this in in Dutch and and yeah. to get it done. Um, and then he, he does have English subtitles. But the subtitles the, make it like as long as you've got the subtitles. I think that you yeah. can because I. I all visual media I consume, like all TV and streaming and everything, I consume with the subtitles on, because um, mm. I find it easier to to take in what I'm viewing if there's subtitles. So I find that I have them on anyway. Um, there was uh, there was one YouTuber actually, um, Thomas Ridgewell. I remember he used to use the subtitles to make jokes. So he he'd have a sub to his subtitle track was them like making jives at themselves in the videos like oh what's tom wearing and this nice. sort of thing um and then they got people saying like okay but can you actually also have subtitles because yeah for people like, who want and need to yeah. read, read them yeah. yeah and also they for all for as far as they're concerned that is what they're saying mm. because they didn't know that course, that wasn't yeah. what they were saying they were just making jokes and stuff so that was really interesting of just like <laughs> oh yeah we've really screwed up i'm so sorry we're just gonna put English subtitles in. It's really sad that YouTube got rid of the um, the uh, community uh, contributions where people could contribute subtitles. They could contribute Same. closed captions. So we had, if you go through and look at like earlier Raspberry Pi videos, we have closed captions available in like 12 different languages because people were going through and translating it into Spanish, Italian, like all mm. manner of languages. Um, but now they closed it. They don't have it anymore because they were like, oh, not enough people are using it, so we're going to get rid of it. Um, mm. So now, obviously, you have to add... And I can add English captions, but I can't add German. I can't add French. I mean, I could try, mm. but it would be GCSE German, and I remember, like, three things. Um, so they got rid of it, which is really sad because it was a step back from the accessibility that they were offering. Um, and now you go to paid services. If you want it, you get a rev and everyone, and you have to pay for it. It's not even like they offered a alternative. They just said, if you want it, you, like, you can go here and, and do it. Um, and it was great because if you if you s provided a caption to a video, you got a little mention at the bottom of the description. So it'd be like your username and the language that you submitted. And as a creator, you could go through and you had to approve it so you could make sure that people weren't just going like, buy NFTs, buy NFTs, buy NFTs through the whole thing. Um, <laughs> like you could go through and make sure it, it would give you a translation back again to English based on like Google translation, it'd be like, this is what they, this is the gist of what they're saying. Yeah. It was lovely. It was so good. And they closed it down yeah. about two years ago. Cause yeah, they shame. said like 1% of Typical creators Google, were using it. it. Yeah. They, they said that it was a really small percentage of creators that were using it. So it's not worth our time. And I was just like, but the people that are using it are creating, a lot of them are creating content that needed that accessibility or they yeah. couldn't afford, like the people that were using it couldn't afford to, caption it themselves and mm. yeah it was really sad that they got rid of it because it was such a lovely function um and we just yeah we had so many people and then you'd look and then you can see what people are using what captions and you could see that people were actively using the captions that other people are putting sad times it extends your it extends the audience doesn't it, it yeah. and you, you think youtube would be going to go well Okay, it extends the audience. That means more people are on YouTube and going to watch more videos. Therefore, yeah, you would think that trying to achieve. they could at least offer an alternative, like mm. a more integration with Google Translate. So it's just like, yeah, put your put your titles. Like we will auto generate your English captions and work more on them, producing them in other languages. But it's just captions or no captions. <laughs> It's the uh, it's the it's because they're they're already represented represented with their ears, yeah. <laughs> so they don't need to Control be. Circle. Yeah, it's all about representation and the lack thereof. Mm. But, um, 
Yeah, we are almost at beating Jesse point, I think. But I'm also very aware of the fact that it's very late. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's 20 to 2. It's 20 to 2. Yeah, and Jamie has work in the morning. I have work. And, and a school run as well. Ooh. Yeah, I've got to, I've got to get up and make pack lunches in the morning. I was going to cycle. To should we move office. on? To, should we move on to our attention grabbers then? Yes, let's <laughs> so do that. For, for, for the benefit of those who are perhaps listening for the first time, we, uh, mm-hmm. we kind of ask our guests uh, and ourselves. We also contribute things that have been grabbing our attention lately, whether that's things we have been doing, or whether it's things we're going to do, or whether it's things we've watched or reading, or basically anything. And it can be one thing, it can be multiple things. So okay. Guests first. Unless Guess you, you first. Yeah. on the spot. <laughs> oh my gosh! Just throw oh, we can it do, at me. If, yeah, or I can I, I can go first if you like. Give I, me some of yours. Yeah, give me some. Well, I've got I've got this. three this week, and all kind of related, which they're normally not. Um, You've even written them down. I, I do. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm very well. Yeah, I take notes as well. I take notes through the the kind of I've got a stack of notes from um, this particular episode. Yeah, I I do all the work. Yeah, <laughs> Jim, Jim's just in for the glamour. You're the yeah. male secretary. Yeah, he's the he's the glamour. <laughs> Um, it's, I, I did mention a few weeks ago, uh, Tim Hunkins, Secret Life of Components, season two. Uh, I think it's going to be five, if I remember rightly, it's going to be five episodes. The fourth one came out this last week. So there's one more left to go on that. Very, for anyone that's making things with components of any sort, whether that's electronic components or, or screws or levers or actuators all sorts of different things it's it's such a such an educational thing and it's tim hunking is so easy to listen to as well it's just it's kind of just it's, it's just nice and gentle and it's just that ease and it just makes these amazing things yeah. um so that i just wanted to kind of highlight that again um on a similar note to that I came across him in the past. I come in if I've uh, brought him up some attention. There's a channel with not a huge number of followers called Oliver Pet. That's the, that's the name of the guy, and he's just started a um, automaton build series. And he's basically mm-hmm. taking through his processes of building an automaton, and that's what he builds. He builds mechanical automatons, and it's. Again, just fascinating. It's definitely a rabbit hole, and one I could disappear down. Look, there's so many it's just not rabbit holes of warring of holes I could go down. Yeah. Um, so again, it's kind of that sort of yeah, it's not stop motion, but it's 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 that kind of motion, mechanical motion, and, and kind of making things happen in, in steps. So it's kind of very much related to Tim Hunky. And then third one and last one for this week is a channel, quite a big channel. Uh, I think two and a half million subscribers called uh, Omozoc, O-M-O-Z-O-C. Mm. And it's all stop motion. Mm. The particular one that caught my eye this week is, um, oh, I can't remember the exact title. It's, it's linked already in the in the, sh- the show notes of the video description. But it's basically cooking. Or rather, it's woodworking yep. with cooking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's yep, only yep, a, yep, mi- yep. It's a minute and a half. And it's just yeah, using kind of cooking tools to cut wood and to make these things and join things together. Blows my mind. Not- I don't know how he does it. <laughs> no, I don't. It's blooming marvelous. It yeah, really it is. is. Um, easy watch, and it is just that it's it's kind of like how on earth? How how do you make it? I, I, I can't even begin to think. I, do, I just cannot figure seamless. it out. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it blows my mind. Yeah, because it's so just that's, so that's... like, how how is everything in the exact like? Oh no! Yeah, <laughs> just it is. Too it's much. just I'd love to see it behind the scenes. Yeah, I can imagine it takes hours, as most yeah. of does. <laughs> yeah, um, but I'd like to I'd like to see it. It it's similar. There was a there was um a Lego one that's yeah. not dissimilar. They they have done behind the scenes. Um, yeah, and that's kind of had things like Lego ones. frying and the, yeah, it's like cracking like and break the egg and the Lego comes the out. Clear. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm. I'm trying to. I'm like looking through my phone to see what <laughs> I've like sent at friends, going, "Oh my god, have you seen this? It's so cool." Um, so they, well, but, we can give a couple more minutes if Jamie goes. Yeah. Well, I yeah, think. I, I, yeah, I think a lot of the things I've just talked about 
like um, uh, the guy that does the cool woodwork that we that someone mentioned earlier. What his username yeah. was? Um, yeah, just TikTok. This week, <laughs> <laughs> I would like to spotlight TikTok. The entirety of TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> this week on Alex's TikTok. Yeah, just TikTok. Uh, no, Jamie, you go, and I, I, I think I have some cool stuff that I can possibly. Yeah, I mean, I mean mine has literally just been prep for Maker Central and and prep for other stuff. So mine's been really boring this week. It's just, <laughs> it's just working stuff and doing stuff that's tangential nonsense. Yeah. But you know, people who are going to be at Maker Central next week, they, they might be able to come and find us at Make with Makers and make a lot yeah, of bracelets. I mean, just, or... just I mean, just to highlight, it's not just a case of you're you're deciding what t-shirts to wear or anything. You are no, I've been preparing Manning of yeah. the Make for Makers stand, and you are going to be running some sessions involving some leather work, aren't you? Yes. So and there's going to be some a, other. A, a veg tan shoulder into blanks for stuff and prepping tools and getting it all packed. I managed to get it all packed into a rolling cart and things. So it's been stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but not much in the in the way of like anything of, of any real note. Although we did go to uh see a comedian last night. Um, my wife see? and I. We went to go and see Omid Jalili. Do I know them? He is an actor as well as a comedian. He was in things like The Mummy and Sex and the City. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's Iranian. He is a yeah. British Iranian. Um, I know exactly. Um, I, I don't know why it didn't click in my head, but I'm also horrible with names. He is phenomenal. And he had Boothby Graffo as his support act. Also phenomenal. So wonderful comedians. And we were aching from belly laughs by the time we got out i love it so that that's been the the major highlight of the week in terms of anything that we've seen it was uh, an evening out with my wife oh love has that bought you enough time there Alex? yeah the first thing i would like to point out is this cool t-shirt i found that i want to buy which says the mummy more like the daddy <laughs> <laughs> Which links very well into you mentioning the mummy just there, which is why I wanted to share it. Um, and and sort of links back to stuff we've talked about because the mummy is a fantastic film for all those kind of things. The mummy is um, the best. It's so bisexual. Like you watch the mummy and you are attracted to everyone. Everyone is attractive in the mummy, male, female, Could doesn't not matter. Agree more. Uh, that that uh, has been uh, stated as a as a what's your type? It's, uh, the the mummy. Yeah, the mummy. The, the, the mummy is the like mummy. yeah. What's your sexuality? The mummy. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. I don't think I've ever seen it. <gasps> what? I I have yeah, pop culture in me. Yeah. It, yeah. Not great. We need to, I need to. We need to do that. <laughs> I'll, I will select some particular episode. Add it to, add it to the list of Futurama. Yeah. Yeah. Futurama, yeah. the mummy, <laughs> the mummy Futurama crossover. That Game of Thrones, actually, not seen any of that. Um, a really interesting random anecdote, but I must say, when we were talking earlier about schooling, and I said like I went to private school and then I changed schools and I didn't pay any attention and I didn't really care, and I got to sixth form. Um, and I was going to quit sixth form. I'd been there like three weeks and I hated it. I hated what I was doing. I hated everything. And I was working in picture framers at the time. And this old woman, this old Austrian woman came in and she was framing a picture. And she, we were talking and she's one of those people that just got you talking. And she was like, oh, are you at school? Are you? And I was like, oh, I'm at sixth form, but I think I'm going to quit. I'm just going to come and work here full time. And she kind of told me off and told me that if I wasn't enjoying it, I had to go back on Monday and talk to my head of year find some new courses that I'd rather do, fix it, because education is important. She kind of mm. bullied me into it. I was like, okay, scary, short Austrian lady. Um, and she had this picture, and she was, it was of her daughter, uh, Minnie, and she was like, oh, my other daughter took the picture. She's an actress. And I said, oh, that's cool. Like, have I seen her in anything? This was 2000. Mm. And uh, she said, oh, yes, have you seen The Mummy? And I said, obviously, I've seen The Mummy mummy and she went oh yeah my daughter is uh you know the woman at the beginning the the librarian that falls off the ladder and i said i'm sorry is your 
daughter Rachel Weiss? And she was like, yeah, yeah. And uh, and the way that she described Rachel Weiss, not as the woman from The Mummy, but very specifically the librarian that falls off the ladder at the beginning of The Mummy. Yeah. Like she could have yeah. been the stunt double. In fact, that, that stunt double was actually a man in a wig. But, um, <laughs> and so I was like, okay. And we got talking, she left. And so I went to, school, to sixth form on the Monday following day and I changed all my courses to things I wanted to do and I ended up getting five A-levels like I loved it so much so I wrote I found her address in the phone book and I wrote her a letter and said like hey I followed your suggestion I've changed my courses I'm getting on a lot better with it thank you and didn't think anything of it and I was walking down the road one day and this car came to a screeching halt next to me and it was Edith and again she's this tiny Austrian lady in this car she was like this over the steering wheel she's Alex um, you didn't put a return address on your letter. I really wanted to invite you round for tea. Cut, what you do on Monday, because it was like a bank holiday, what you do on a Monday, come over for tea. So I went over to hers for tea and we sat in her garden, ate cake and drank tea. And for the next two years, I would just, on my lunch breaks, just go over and hang with, oh, with wow. Edith Weiss. Um, and <laughs> I met Rachel. I've met like Darren Aronofsky because she was seeing him at the time. I went to their son's birthday party. Like it was the most bizarre <laughs> thing in the world and it all stems down to the fact that she was this woman who told me her daughter was the librarian who falls off the ladder at the beginning of the mummy so the mummy is a very important movie to me um yeah i went to see the second one and uh and she there's a bit i'm i'm gonna call spoiler on this because it's been out long enough but rachel vice's character like dies and then comes back to life and i said to edith on the phone after i'd seen it like oh what did you think of rachel's death scene and she was like i fell asleep in it i didn't realize she died thank you so much because like, she would, like said like she was calling rachel to talk to her about the movie and she'd like fallen asleep in it and had no idea what any of the movie was about so then Amazing. it became my job to inform her what rachel's movies were about she was like in her like mid eighties and just this, uh, yeah, she was fantastic. Um, so yeah, everyone should watch the mummy. That's my thing for the week. Um, Agreed. yeah. And also just seeds. Now, if you have a garden or you have a windowsill, plant some seeds and grow some stuff. Cause I just built a greenhouse. Um, never build a greenhouse, pay someone yeah. for the love of God to build a greenhouse for you. Uh, but I've been planting seeds and I've been planting different interesting seeds that are imported seeds or kind of cool, weird vegetables. There's an amazing uh, website called The Real Seed Company. Um, and if you are in the UK or I think they, they ship worldwide and you are buying seeds, buy them from The Real Seed Company because they are they promote um saving seeds from the things you grow so the big thing for them mm. is like we've sent you these seeds for these tomatoes we don't expect you to ever buy these seeds from us again because you now have the tomatoes and you can take the seeds yeah. out yourself and that's yeah. a big thing for them which is weird for a company to tell you not to buy things from them anymore um that, that, yeah. that's called being value driven isn't it yeah exactly because i'll go back to them now and i'll buy other seeds i bought yeah. some really interesting seeds that um they look like yin yangs um and we've been calling them the magic beans so i've been growing them and they're doing very well um i don't know how well this will show up mm -hmm. ah yeah. nice yeah so that's the real seed company real seeds um yeah and i'm growing them at the minute to have more magic beans and i of course, didn't even if you manage to do a beanstalk let me know yeah definitely i mean yeah, i didn't have to next. trade any cows no family cows were traded in the in the uh yeah getting these beans but yeah that's a bit i think everyone should grow a plant this year it's really easy to grow something and don't look at it as any means of saving money because growing things will cost you more money like you go buy a pun of strawberries for three pounds or you could spend 60 quid growing three strawberries in your garden this summer but they're oh, like we did best. we we, we grew a, a massive, massive amount of spinach and it was yeah. amazing. It was wonderful. It was delicious. And we couldn't get anywhere near through eating all of it before it went poof and just became inedible. So it's. Yeah. I'm also, but I have house rabbits. So I'm growing spinach and kale for them because I have two rabbits downstairs and that's their breakfast. Um, yeah. I'm surprised actually one of them hasn't come up to see us because she usually comes up to say hi, but she's uh i don't know where she's probably up to no good <laughs> but yeah Sounds so grow right. seeds watch the mummy um i think and subscribe to jesse on youtube 
Solid, yeah. solid advice. Don't subscribe to me because I'm not making any content, but subscribe <laughs> to Jesse. <laughs> Your subscription to my channel is a wasted subscription, but I appreciate it nonetheless. Um, uh, also, like, if you want to go and listen to the podcast episodes of my podcast, like, listen to them just because, like, the people are really cool. Yeah, and worth listening to. The t follow the Tiny Chef on Instagram, the Tiny Chef Show, because they're doing. It's, it was quite things. funny because I I listened to that. And fairly early on in the, the episode, you're talking about kind of the numbers. Yes. And you were talking about how many uh, had been on the account when you'd followed. And then when you were talking to it, the, the number was something like, I can't remember, 60 or 90,000. 90,000, yeah. And then when I went to look, at, I think it's something like 650,000 now. Yeah, it just it wow, blew up. Just, just like huge. Yeah. It's just like, and I, I just found that so funny because I was kind of on my phone listening to it, kind of scrolling through, and then kind of like, oh wow, here. Yeah, because like, it was like five thousand when I started like following Tiny Chef, and then yeah, ninety thousand when we did the podcast, and it's just grown. I mean, Ron Howard found out about Tiny Chef through Kristen Bell, and they like got a deal to do a Nickelodeon show or something, and they've released like some books, and they're doing so much, and it's such a they're just spreading the like the tiny chef is just a wholesome little alien frog thing that vegan alien frog thing that lives in a tree stump and um just loves things and is so loving and there's like people make things like someone made a little wand and then they did a thing where uh, rachel broke it by accident and it was really interesting just the way that like chef was really sad but then also kind of accepted that it happened and that's just such a nice wholesome message like it's just like teaching kids that like you can be upset that this thing happened but it's the person didn't yeah. do it maliciously and they love you and you ex and it's just it's just everything's so wonderful like everything they do it's just a really lovely message it's really lovely to watch um and yeah the tiny chef is one of my all-time favorite favorite accounts it kind of reminded me a bit of um the barbie wood shop I don't know if you've come across that account. Yes. Which is just for those who haven't come across it, just literally the Barbie Woodshop. Or no, just Barbie Woodshop on um, Instagram or Barbie of all trades. And it's just, it's, it's again, really wholesome. It's Barbie in this, the, the person who's created this kind of entire workshop that's Barbie sized with Barbie sized tools and Barbie's making things and Barbie's cutting their hands sometimes and Barbie's being given you know, new tools by, I, I can't remember the name of the character that's used, but essentially Ken. Yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, you want a new plane? And yeah, it's this kind of, it's that kind of entire role reversal in terms of kind of expectation, which is just absolutely amazing. But the craftsmanship that's gone into the manufacture of that, mm. that, that entire account is just amazing. It's just, yeah, I think that the nice thing with like, with accounts like that and with, with, with Tiny Chef is you suspend your belief. Like it's just, mm. there's one point where Tiny Chef had a, a um, Segway and the wheels were bottle caps and everything because Tiny Chef's like this tool. Um, and I honestly was like, oh, where did Tiny Chef get that segue from? But I went, hold on, they obviously, Rachel made it. <laughs> it's not real. <laughs> Nothing here is real. Um, but you lose yourself. Speaking of Barbie, the Barbie TikTok account is actually really good um, for anyone that's watching to go to TikTok, follow Barbie. Um, I don't know what they're doing, like who they've got in there, but the last kind of three videos they've done, it's all kind of stop motion animation. The, with the Barbies, like following trends and dances and stuff, but it's actually really, it's uh, it's actually a really good TikTok account. I found myself scrolling it the other day, going, "Is this how? Why am I still here? Why am I still really enjoying this Barbie account?" I'm a grown woman who never liked Barbie. Um, I was a Sylvanian Families girl, so <laughs> Sylvanian Families and the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles—they were my thing. Um, but yeah, so yeah, yeah that's a bit of a jump. Yeah, oh, I love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. They legitimately were a role model for girls because they they were male turtles, sure, but they weren't human. And mm. April O'Neil was really cool, so she was like my hero. I wanted to be April O'Neil, but there's 
even though the turtles were male, it was easier to have them as heroes as your your role models because they weren't men. They were okay. male turtles. That makes sense, yeah. Yeah, so that's why I think there was loads of kind of stuff like that, like when we were kids that loads of although we didn't have a lot of female characters, there were lots of non human characters, like Bucky O'Hare and all of these characters that you could just mm. love. Gadget Hack Wrench. Who's Gadget Hack? Who's that? From um I mean, it's basically Simone. But, oh, okay. um... <laughs> <laughs> so Simone in the eighties. Yeah, from um, Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Oh yeah! Oh my god, my f oh, I'm so happy. Rob's probably not watching this. My friend Rob would be very angry that I don't remember. The... Yeah, no, <laughs> I 100 percent know who you're talking about. I'm not good with names all the time. They don't always stick in my head. Yeah, I just fair. wanted to be She-Ra and watch the Gummy Bears and the Wazzles, which no one ever remembers, but was one of the best Disney. It was like these animals, and they were like two different animals as one. So there was like Ella Roo that was an elephant. Uh, kangaroo and Bumble Lion was a Bumblebee Lion and Butter Bear was like a butterfly and a bear. This is bringing back weird kind of <laughs> long since forgotten <laughs> memories here. Yeah, you need to look up the Wazzles. That's what it was called. You gave me the lost train. I'm giving you the Wazzles. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that was that was great. But yeah, so I think that's everything. I, I mean, I Follow me on social media if you want, but like you'll get more action if you follow Raspberry Pi, where you see me shit post, <laughs> um, annoying our social media manager because I, yeah, well, yeah, I mean she spends time and effort curating tweets, and then I come along and go blah, and uh, <laughs> and just beat her in in, in uh, impressions, and she gets really annoyed with me, which is why I do it. So, uh, but it also shows people that we're human, which is really important for us on social media to. Absolutely. As a brand, be human. So yeah. I will ask people what they're having for dinner, and I will share a picture of my cup of tea and ask if it's too milky. And I will. I think it it uh, it's a great it's a great brand. I think, and I, I yeah. yeah, I agree. The I've not watched and read everything about Raspberry Pi, I, yeah. I, but oh everything God. that I okay. <laughs> <laughs> read every ha every magpie magazine, read oh. every blog I've written. <laughs> Don't read every book I've got. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've, I don't think I've, I've got every magpie, but I haven't read every magpie. Yeah, Fair yeah. But yeah um, also, everyone should should read the magpie and Hackspace yeah. and Wireframe and Custom PC because they are all free to download on our website. Yeah, Hackspace. Yeah. I, I do like Hackspace magazine. I have to Hackspace admit, I wish good. I'd had some of the Hackspace magazine when I was sort of a teenager. Mm -hmm. I think that might have. If I'd have had it early enough, that would might have changed the, perhaps the direction of where I'd gone slightly. Um, I'd definitely have more skills and knowledge and interest from a younger age if I'd had access yeah. to Hackspace. Um, and yeah, the fact that it's a free download, like there's literally no reason not to read it. Absolutely, it's yeah. Good. It's a good magazine, and occasionally I write things in it. So, and what I'd, I'd, I'd like to highlight because some people will know about this, but maybe not know your connection you wrote the the very good article about our, our our mutual friend sharon who unfortunately didn't make it through yes. covid um yeah. and yeah, he's a dear friend to, to many of us in the sort of the maker community mm -hmm. and so many, and one of the things i really i'm trying to think of a suitable word enjoyed isn't quite the right word but certainly in, in my relationship with Sharon one of the things that I I, I really um a, a mutual thing for us was that we our connections into the maker community weren't in one particular area so yeah, yeah. You'd, you'd see sort of Sharon at kind of you know maker camp in in the, you know, the first maker camp or at workbench con and hanging out with woodworkers, but then you'd also see you hanging around with kind of you, know, Adam Savage, at the um, everyone you Sharon. Smithsonian. Yeah, she was just yeah. completely in all these different parts. Sharon, um, Sha there isn't anyone like Sharon at no, all. No, uh, absolutely. Um, she was as much a fan as she was a creator. Like she wasn't one yeah. or the other; she was both. And uh, and yeah, I she met, was great. Her videos were great. 
I, I, yeah, yeah, her videos just... were so silly and wonderful, and yeah. and she wasn't worrying about the algorithm, and she wasn't worrying about what people were going to say. She was just, this is a thing I want to make. Sharon. I'm going to film it how I want to film it, and yeah. uh, you're going to watch it, or you're not going to watch it, and I really don't care. Like, it was just wonderful. That's why, like, earlier, before we went live, I said I've got this picture of her that sits in my in my workshop here in my office um on my pegboard and like if i'm ever just feeling really low or i feel really kind of like i don't have any like i have no energy to do anything which to be fair i do lack energy because i've got like horrible long covid fatigue but like when you have that kind of brain drain and you just are like i can't do anything yeah. that picture's there and it does genuinely make me kind of get up and do something mm -hmm. um you know she she was great and we whinged at each other about how much we hated having COVID at the same time and it was just devastating uh, to lose her and and it was at a time it was so early on with COVID that we didn't know what it was and we didn't know how to treat it and everyone was panicking and just putting everyone on ventilators and and we didn't really know anything and there was no vaccines and it's so sad um mm. I get really angry actually when people don't take like masks seriously and vaccines yeah. seriously I'm like if you'd met Sharon you'd be wearing a mask you everywhere would. you go yeah yeah so it's really it's Absolutely. really tough it's really tough that we lost her because she i really like to introduce people to people if i meet someone and i know they've got an interest in something i'll be like come and meet this person because i think you really like them and sharon was like that sharon would just go like oh if you met this person come and talk to them and just bring you into the conversation that you that she was yeah. having with someone it might be your most favorite youtuber in the world and she's chatting to them and she'll drag you over to talk to them um yeah so yeah it kind of sucked yeah, but she's she's left a good legacy at least with all the maker community like yeah i think it hit everyone yeah. so Big time. yeah so it's really really sucks yeah. so yeah go subscribe to figments mate yeah on YouTube. Chelsea, I'll yeah that. i'll put yeah. the link in the show notes for that yeah, definitely first, like go time. watch her videos and go watch go read about her go watch anything you can watch that she's in and there's Absolutely. you know yeah she was great but yeah so i think have we beat jesse no no there's still <laughs> 20 minutes or so but i, uh, I won't be able to last that unfortunately <laughs> no no i need to go to uh i need to go to bed so i can we all do. yeah <laughs> what, what we'll, we need to do we'll though before have you back on well, absolutely. Yeah, but we need if you to, want... we need to thank you as well for joining oh. us and to say yes, we will absolutely be having you back on. It was lovely to be here, and the fact that I gave up Will Young for the two of you is it's fine. We very much appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Will, I'll go listen to him instead. Um, but no, it was lovely for you to have me on. I really appreciate it, and I can't even begin to think of the topics that we covered over the last four hours because we have talked about everything um and it's been really nice too so uh that's what we do i feel inspired yeah yeah it's been lovely and it's lovely to have everyone in the the comments and see people write yeah. stuff so yeah thank you very well, much links to your socials will be in the, the show notes so yes. um alex jurassic pretty much alex everywhere jurassic. And, yeah um how the social is the podcast so i'll link yes. that as well so people can go and find yeah, that okay. and uh, obviously they can also come if they Listen to this before next weekend. They can come and say hello at Maker Central. Come and find us at Maker Central. Don't ask me quest technical questions about Raspberry Pi, but I will <laughs> give people stickers. Come and find me and I'll give you a sticker. Um, yeah, that's the. There we go. See how many stickers you can collect. We have that's many. Good. Makers like stickers. Yeah, I have some yes. hacks. I have some shiny stickers as well. So Ooh. shiny hack space stickers. So you Sounds can come good. and get shiny, shiny hack face stickers. Will be good. Well, you have to keep some for us. Yeah, keep some for us. I will. Don't worry. Yeah, you got to collect <laughs> them all. I'll let you have one of each of the magazines. It's very, very special. No one has a one of each. So, uh, yes. That's, that'd be good. That'd be done. There you go. <laughs> right. On that note, we'll, uh, there will be something for the benefit of the, the, the regular listeners. There will be something next week. Although it's Maker Central, it will not be a show uh, directly from Maker it Central. It will not be a live show next sunday um there will be something pre-recorded we don't exactly know what yet um but we'll 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 have a waffle and record it and yeah. there may be some guests and um, you could do might a, find out a bit of the show <laughs> you could just do a, the mummy watch along <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> just 
to watch the mummy or watch the first episode of Futurama. Yeah, um, to, yeah. Just, to, reaction to, video. A, a three sixty p screen of the mummy in the corner with me yeah. and Andy chatting rubbish all over it. There you go. That's what your next video should be. Just the yeah, other mummy watch along. Watch the librarian fall off the ladder at the beginning. <laughs> I know. And we'll get three. We'll get three thumbnails for it. Yeah. 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 That's it. Yep. Yeah. Get your thumbnails. Right. On that note, we'll uh, we'll say goodbye much. to the audience and uh, thank you again. Bye, folks. Bye. Bye.